12. A dozen drivers left to decide the NASCAR Cup Series champion over the next seven weeks. The second round of the playoffs contains two of the biggest wild card races on the NASCAR calendar, Talladega and the Roval. But it all kicks off right here at Texas Motor Speedway. Welcome to Countdown to Green, presented by Sonic from a toasty, warm Texas Motor Speedway as the road to the championship four in Phoenix makes the next stop in the Lone Star State. I tell you what, with temperatures like today, it pretty much feels like we're in Phoenix right now. Man. Peacock Pit Box located right beside Victory Lane, right where all the action will happen today. With the big guy, Brad Darty, Kyle Petty, I'm Marty Snyder. So, Brad, two yeah. or three day shirt for you. Oh, where I come from, this is overalls. <laughs> right it's hot. Uh, Kyle, in all sincerity, though, 96 degrees, yes. temperatures in the car, 120 Ooh. degrees, and a long race, 500 yes. miles. Yes. What does that make for the day behind the wheel for these drivers? Uncomfortable. Okay, and that's <laughs> yeah. it. And listen, at a racetrack like this, uncomfortable. When the driver is uncomfortable, he gets frustrated. His emotions rise yes. to the top. Yes. You see that, and it plays out on the racetrack. And over that radio, we're going to be going to radios a lot today. Well, Brad, we mentioned this kicks off the round of 12. I would assume no other driver happier than that than Chase Elliott, who oh. came in as the number one seed but had a terrible first round. Oh, he had a horrible first round. The points reset. He goes to the top. Christopher Bell was magnificent in the first round. The points reset. He goes to the bottom. So he has to take advantage of Chase Elliott's team has to bear down, eliminate the mistakes, focus, take advantage of this opportunity that he earned during the regular season to be in this position. That reset, nice for that oh, nine team. Not reset. so nice as you yes. mentioned for Christopher Bell. No. So, Kyle, I don't know why everybody's worried about this round. I mean, everybody I no in the idea. garage area, you know, it's only the Roval, yeah. Talladega, oh. and Texas. You know, it seems pretty simple, right? Texas, a racetrack. It does seem simple because Texas is a racetrack with two <laughs> totally separate ends, high speed, low grip. They were going to go to the Roval, unpredictable and surprising. Yep. I don't know what, what they, they know what's coming. And then Talladega should come out with a new T-shirt, okay? And it should say, NASCAR's original wild card since 1969. <laughs> I'm telling you, because that's what it is. Yes. Talladega is just a wild card. Well, if the motto of the playoffs was to survive and advance, Ryan Blaney might be the perfect example of that in 2022. Right now, the winner of the All-Star Race, oddly enough, right here at Texas earlier this year, is with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton at the front of the grid. Jr., I hope you guys have nicely positioned yourself by a very large fan somehow. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely, absolutely miserable out here with the heat and the temperature. Um, I don't know how you guys are going to do it today in the race, but I got to ask you one thing. So th I don't think we appreciate exactly what this team's been through over the last several weeks. Just barely making it through at Daytona. Just barely making it through at Bristol. How difficult was that for you personally to go through that? Have you ever experienced anything like that in racing? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, two out of the last four races were, were really tough on us. Um, but... I've always kind of said that, you know, you know, when you have those issues, it can build character really well. And I think we've had a lot of character building within our team trying to fight through those issues. Um, and I'm proud of that effort by everyone on the 12 group for fighting through all that adversity. But I'd like a break from all the adversity. <laughs> I just want some smooth races. Uh, this team does such a great job. And we had such, you know, we've had fast cars in those races. We've had problems. Uh, it's just about putting everything together. So um, hopefully this race will go smooth for us today. Like you said, it's a hot one out here today, and, and it will be really important for us to try to get a good run in before Talladega next week. Well, as slick and hot as it is, uh, what is it going to take for you guys to have that smooth day? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's multiple things from, okay, what did your car do in practice and how did you adjust for today's race? The temperature was pretty similar yesterday to today, so that'll be nice. Um, but the thing is, we didn't run in the resin at all yesterday in practice. It really wasn't in for our group. So watching the Xfinity race, those guys were up in it. So how is it going to affect your car when we finally do move up, up in it? Because we will get in it at some point today. I'm pretty sure we'll be in it fairly early. Um, so just seeing what your car does in that stuff, what can it do on the bottom? Because that's going to be where you need to pass cars at. So just keeping up with the track, keeping up with the temperature of the racetrack, uh, and just trying to keep track position all day, so I think is going to be pretty big. Looking at this round as a whole, you got three tracks. I think you got to look forward to. Those are great racetracks for you. Talladega is next, and then the Roval. Are you uh, feeling like, even though the position you're in, the points, you've got to be a little more confident than some of these guys? Yeah, you know, I mean, we've obviously run good here this year, winning the All-Star Race. Uh, the conditions are a lot different uh, than the All-Star Race, but I do feel good about it. It's nice to go to these tracks where you've had success at before, but you know, Talladega, you never know what can happen. I mean, you saw what happened to us at Daytona, and you never know where your fate's going to be at. You just try to do the best you can there. And then the Roval, I, I think our road course stuff's been pretty good. So, But, gosh, you got... 12 teams in this round that are confident i feel like every single week they run well enough to be here 
Uh, they're going to be really good at every track. So it's a matter of not making any mistakes, both on pit road and as a driver uh, and on top of the pit box and just having smooth races. And obviously, you got 12 guys really wanting to win this race today because it'll take a lot of pressure off the next two weeks. Hey, I don't. you mind being show and tell for just a minute? So yeah. it's going to be super hot today. How, show the guys how you stay yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, plug this in. This it's, is where uh, the cool vest, but... This all the tubes around him. That's running the cool water around. Yeah, that's that's been magic, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it's called a Rini system, and uh, it's it's been pretty uh, pretty wild actually. I just started using it last year, and it's really good for these hot days. If you know this tube plugs into a separate system that pumps cold water through you all race, and uh, it, it really helps us out as drivers because these cars get super hot, and uh, it's it definitely. I mean, you have to be not only mentally in it but physically in it too. And I feel like this honestly helps both. If you can keep your core cool. Uh, you're going to be just that much better come mile, you know, 350, 400, 500. We appreciate you coming out here. I know it's not comfortable being on pit road, and it won't be comfortable in that car. We're going to hope that thing works for you all race <laughs> yeah, long, buddy. Yeah. Thank I'll you. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming out here. Marty, there it is, man. That's, that's how them guys are going to stay comfortable today in them race cars. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, oddly enough, Brad wants to know where I his cool shirt is. 3XLT. 3XLT. <laughs> Send it on there. I want one of them them. them. Only drivers. Come yeah. on. There you go. So Ryan Blaney talked about it. I mean, Brad, they yeah. have barely survived twice already in the playoffs does that in a way make them a more dangerous team? i don't know how they don't win the championship they survived <laughs> twice in two playoff and two cutoff races i mean they absolutely struggled had horrible races at daytona and bristol no way i i gave them standing 10 counts at both races they're supposed to be done but i'll tell you if they can clean up the mistakes and go forward they have fast race cars every week he has a fast race car it's all about track position but i tell you daytona they were in trouble. They were done. Yeah. They wrecked. They lose tires and wheels, and they still survive, yeah. Kyle. They're still here. They're still here, and I don't know how. Here's the thing. They've been good in segment one, and they've been good in segment two. They've had speed. They can't close. Yeah. They've not been able to close. They've got to close a race or two in this round, I think, to continue and stay alive. So it's crazy they haven't won a race yet this year, yes. Kyle, but if you look at who could be winner oh, yeah. number 20 no in 2022, which is insane, is, no is Ryan Blaney the most likely candidate? Now, today, Ryan Blaney is the most likely candidate because of the all-star race. But I think you got to put Martin Truex in that category, and you got to put yep. Ricky Stenhouse in that category, and you got to put Eric Almirall. I mean, there's so many guys that can go into that category that can still win. So if it's not Ryan, Ryan Blaney, who can be the next new winner in the Cup Series? Well, discuss that next plus here from the man who won last week at bristol christopher busher coming up next from texas the time don't miss the new series quantum leap mondays at 10 9 central on nbc and streaming the next day on peacock The Martin Truex Jr. Foundation is running their third annual Honor a Cancer Hero campaign today. Above the door of each cup car is the name of someone who's either lost their battle with cancer or also some inspiring stories of those who have survived. So far this year, the campaign has raised over $100,000. To learn more, go to martintruexjrfoundation.org. Martin Truex Jr. and his partner Sherry Pollock's always doing good for the community. Today, Truex starts 15th. Right now, he's with Kim Kuhn. Yeah, Martin, you and Sherry have done so much for the cancer community, especially here this afternoon. What's your hope when fans see the names on these cars of these cancer heroes and hear their stories? Well, I think it's just, um, you know, it's inspiring to hear the stories of all the all these people, uh, women, children, you know, moms, dads, you name it, just to hear their stories of what they've been through and the perseverance and their fight, how strong they are. And um, just really, really thankful to NASCAR, the foundation there, and um, all the drivers, all the teams for, for participating in this. Uh, it's a great way to just uh, pay tribute to some special people. And, uh, you know, really cool that, that uh, an anonymous person uh, bought Sherry's name and put it on Austin Dillon's car. So we'll, uh, we'll be pulling for the three car as well today. But uh, just a big day for our foundation and a uh, big day for those heroes. And Sherry will be driving the pace car. She'll have a, a relatively smooth lap. You maybe not so much. We were talking before we went on air and just a lot of unknown. So did you learn anything in practice yesterday that can help you through these 500 miles? Well, we learned what we needed to work on. Um, whether or not we were able to, to correct our issues, I'm not sure. So um, kind of just go out there in a, in a, in a wait-and-see approach. And, um, you know, this is going to be a really tough race, I think. A long race, really hot. Uh, really slick track. How much is the is the sticky stuff going to come into play? How much is the groove going to move around? You know, how how big is track position going to be? So many question marks. Um, 
and it's going to be a slick one too. So uh, our car was a handful yesterday. We'll see if we made the right adjustments. Uh, hopefully, go towards the front. Marty, Martin, and Cherry giving everyone a reason to cheer for every single one of these cars out here on track today. Such a cool cause. You know, Martin Trex Jr., a non-playoff driver. So far, yeah. the non-playoff drivers undefeated in the playoffs. Can they continue the roll? Let's go on the clock and chat about that. Brad, let's uh, talk about Martin Trex Jr., we just heard from. Yeah, and Toyota in general has been, uh, the last six, seven, eight weeks, they've just been building so much momentum. Now, they're coming off of a couple of engine issues, specifically with Kyle Busch last week and before that. So I'm hoping they fix that. If so, Martin Truex is an absolute shot to win this race. He's good at these long-distance races. He doesn't fall out of the seat. He takes the heat well. Yep. Race cars fast. He could win it. All right, I go with Brad K of RFK. Okay, I'm a two-time runner up here at Texas. Uh, but and, and listen, coming off of that first win as an owner last week at Bristol with Chris Buescher, I think he can win anywhere, anytime as we play out because RFK has found speed. I think today he's going to upset somebody. Yeah, and one of those cars who's been fast, surprisingly, all season long has been Michael McDowell and his 3014. For them, it's all about track position. If they can get track position at the end of the day, not have any mistakes on pit road, yes, they can win. No doubt about it. But they have to get that track position, which has been difficult for this team. Eric Almarola. Okay, I'm going to go to him. We, we go to Talladega. Another race in this round. He's a speedway Point. guy, man. He is a guy that can win a race in this round. Now, he's a non-playoff driver, but that's what we're talking about. Upsetting Apple Car. He's been four of the top, four top tens out of the last six races here at this place. Mm. So he can be strong here also. Interesting point. So all of those drivers will be winner number 20 on the season. Brad, do you see 20 winners? I this do year? not. I do not. Big boy's got to step up. It's Ooh. time. Mm. Yeah. Kyle, how about you? Listen, I see 20 winners, but I agree with Brad. Big boys have got to step up and put on their big boy pants at some point in time and take control of this play. What a crazy season. It's been 19 different winners and now entering what many think is the toughest round of the playoffs. Let's head back to the front of the grid. Jeff, let's play a quick game. Which of the three tracks are you worried about in this round? A, Texas, B, Talladega, C, the Roval, or D, all the above? D, Marty, for sure. There's no <laughs> question. You know, listen, I, I, this racetrack, we've talked to the drivers already, talked about how slick it is, so many unknowns. Leave here, go to Talladega. Anything can happen there. We've seen it. Now, I will say this. If you leave here needing something to happen, Talladega may be just what you wanted because some guys that can't compete as well at this track may could win Talladega. Then you go to the Roval. I think the Roval is the second most difficult racetrack on the circuit behind Darlington. So easy to make a mistake. And guys that have to make something happen there, they tend to push too hard, get themselves in trouble. Just a very, very difficult round. Yeah, those two tracks, Talladega and the Roval, a lot of unknowns for all these teams, but there's some unknowns here as well at Texas. Yesterday, we saw, tire, we saw cars try to push their tire runs a little further than normal, a little beyond the fuel run, and actually blow the right front tire. We saw tire issues in the all-star race as well in a much cooler scenario and environment. I think with this hot slick track, we're going to have a lot of sliding around. That is going to abuse the tires. Will the teams push it on air pressure, and will they also go beyond what the tire's capable of wear-wise and create a lot of problems? You know, we talked also a lot about how everybody can make it past the round. Let's talk about some of the guys that we think might not make it beyond this round, Jeff. You picked four guys, so let's see what they are. It's such a tough pick. This round is so difficult. A lot of these guys, I think, are really good race teams and good race car drivers, but somebody's got to make it. Ross Chastain, uh, I got Chastain and Suarez both not making it. I just feel like track house has lost a little bit. Chase Briscoe, man, he's been holding on by a thread. And I had to pick somebody that is going to be an upset not to make it. We got two champions not make this round. I think William Byron and that team, they're capable of going all the way to the homestead, but somebody's not going to make it. And kind of honestly, I kind of picked him out of a hat, to be honest with you, as a guy, <laughs> the, the upset upset. I picked William to win the race today, so I obviously don't agree with that, Jeff, but I do agree with some of your picks in my four. Let's take a look at them here. I got Ross Chastain as well. I think that Ross is going to need that miracle at Dega. He's a super speedway racer. He knows how to do it. But I think that's going to need he's going to need a win there to advance. Cendric, Briscoe, those guys, I just believe they get outpointed. Daniel Suarez, he can go to the Roval and make it happen. But I believe that's the only way he gets in. I don't know if he gets enough points in this round to do it. So there's my four guys. It's going to be interesting to see who's right and who's wrong. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. We're going to listen a little bit more and learn about Ross when we come back here at Texas. This sport. Track house battling for the lead. Daniel Suarez is drawn even with Ross Chastain. It's the ultimate dream is what I'm living right now. 
My only thing is win race and championships, so that one is up to me. Kyle Busch enters the Coca-Cola 600 race week without a contract. Nothing happens. Am I okay just to walk away? Yeah, I am. The local fire is not doing anything. Boy, one of the great things about Race for the Championship is it takes you away from the track with the drivers. For Ross Chastain, being away from the track means continuing the generational family business where peace comes on a tractor in the watermelon field. We can go to the field and you can get on a tractor and you can go all day and not see anybody. And when people think of Florida, they don't think of that. And for me, this is home. We're in Florida, which is agriculture. We've been in the farming business, of course, my whole life, for several generations back. Yeah, I realized when I got into racing, I wanted to be a race car driver. It was gonna be a lot easier life than, than farming. He was always hard to put on a tractor because you had to keep slowing him down. He was, you know, a tractor set to go at a certain speed, and Ross was always in the next gear, going a little too fast. Whether it's running a motor grade or whatever, he wanted to get to the other end faster than the next guy. Ross Chastain is going to get his first NASCAR Cup Series win. I'm where I've always wanted to get to now. It's about staying, and that's what I wake up every day to do. Here in a wild finish. Yeah. Cracker Jacks look good. Yeah, so these are a new variety that we're doing this year. We did about 30 acres just to try them out. Our motto and our, our business name is JDI, and the, the thing is, you just do it. No matter what the job is, what it takes, what it takes to get the job done, you just do it. It's a Cinderella what? story for Track House, the year they're having. Holy cow! They've got him as. Watermelon <laughs> as tradition. My job is to promote watermelons through my racing. It's the most natural promotion that I can do. Like, this is me. Like, I am an eighth generation watermelon farmer and we're proud of it and I want to show you and I'm going to show you when I win. Boy, it's pretty easy to see where the work ethic comes from, but he said something interesting in that feature, Brad. He said, I'm still working to stay here in the Cup Series. Do you really feel like he feels like he needs to prove himself? Uh, I think that's the way he drives himself. I think sometimes with self-depreciation, it almost gives you a little bit of something to hide behind as far as putting it out there. This is who I am. This is what I work through. And also think about this. All these guys racing around him, how many of these guys yeah. are farmers? How many of these guys ever worked at all? Uh -huh. so he, yeah, he's bringing a different mentality yeah. into this, yeah. and he does. He feels like that, that he's not respected because of where he comes from and who he is, and he's trying to prove that that is just as good as anyone else. Yeah, and I like that he feels like he has to prove himself because we're in a sport. you got to prove yourself every Sunday. Yeah. I don't care how good you are, how good you think you are. You've got to prove yourself. He digs. He reaches down. When he looks in the mirror, he may say certain words, when he looks in the mirror, he sees champion. Yeah. He sees champion. You can see that in his eyes. I I'm telling you, he is in a good place right now with, with seven races to go here. Kyle Ross Chastain had an edge to him all year long, yes. but he admitted he kind of tiptoed through the end of the regular season. He was afraid to wreck anyone else. Does he need to rediscover that aggressive side of his driving? No, he doesn't need to rediscover it. He knows where it's at. He just needs to get it out of the box. Uh, <laughs> he, yeah, he didn't lose it. He did not lose it. I talked to him on the tarmac over at the, the airport when we landed. He is ready. I think he learned a lot in this first in the first round. I think he understands how you have to race rounds now. He's not been in that position. Right, right. Now he knows what he needs to do in this round and then the next round to make it to that final race in Phoenix. Yeah, he's got to get back to that. I mean, because I, I, I played for a legendary basketball coach in the NBA, Lenny Wilkins, and mm -hmm. I went to practice one day as a rookie, and I was watching, and these guys were practicing so hard, and there wasn't a game for two weeks. And I asked him why. He says, because if you don't go hard that's all right. the time, you get hurt. And that's what Ross has kind of done to himself. When he goes hard and he's aggressive and he's not giving anybody an inch on that racetrack, Ross Chastain wins races. Yeah. KP, how about his teammate at Trackhouse Racing, Daniel Suarez? He still has playoff yes. life. Yes. How far has his, has his game come this year? Huge, huge. He has grown into a cup driver. I think he was an Xfinity driver trying to be a cup driver. I think this year, what we've seen with him on the racetrack, the way we see him race people, the way he makes moves, 
one thing, and I've said it from the very beginning about Daniel Suarez, he carries a nation on his back. He yes, carries he the entire mm. country of Mexico on his back with Daniel's amigos and everything that comes along with it. But you can't see that kid's heart. You can't see his heart. And he carries that car a lot of the times when they drop the green flag. It may not be good at the beginning, but he works. And they, that team works to make it good at the end. Yeah, the thing I love about Daniel, you know, a lot of times we see guys come from the Xfinity Series, and if they're champions, they come to the Cup Series, and they expect some things. And then they, they, they acquiesce. They back off a little bit to learn. The heck with that. I like the way Daniel approaches it. He comes in, he's aggressive. He pushes, pushes, pushes until he gets his way, and that's what's going to afford him the opportunity to have top fives, top tens, and eventually win more races. Yeah. Daniel Suarez, seven below the cut line. Let's hear from the other three drivers who come into the round of 12 below the cut line, starting with Chase Briscoe, who's with Parker Kligerman. Right, Marty, and this team showed a lot of heart in the round of 16, the 14 team of Chase Briscoe, because you guys didn't quite get the finishes you deserve. So how do you clean everything up going into this round? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, we still need a little bit more speed. You know, we've had good speed, you know, really the last couple of months. We just, like we were talking earlier, we don't finish where we run most of the day. So, yeah, we just need to clean it up. We need to execute from start to finish. And, yeah, just finish that last 25% of the race. You know, we're getting stage points. We're doing all those things. We just need to get the actual finish. So, yeah, see what, see what we got today. You know, we, uh, you know, this round is going to be a race where you can have to use a mulligan really easily, and we just can't make today our mulligan. So, yeah, see what we can do in our dress truck centers forward. Hopefully we can have a good day. Obviously, you're going to have a, a long way to go with our starting position, but felt like in, in our race run, we were actually pretty good. We just over-adjusted for qualifying. So, yeah, see if we can get up there, see if we can use some strategy. You know, we got nothing to lose, so we're, we'll throw everything at it and see what we can do. Well, Kim, I think this is a team that could surprise some people with nothing to lose. Speaking of surprising people, Alex Bowman surprised some people who doubted his ability to get into this round. You proved them wrong. So how do you quiet the naysayers now over the next three races? Uh, just keep performing at a high level. I think, uh, you know, the summer was rough on us, but a little bit of a reset going into the playoffs seemed to be pretty good for our Ally 48 team. So, um, you know, Bristol didn't, we didn't finish how we wanted, but we still got good stage points. I mean, we ran sixth in stage two with no power steering. So I feel like uh, we're firing on all cylinders. We unloaded really fast and just didn't go the right direction for qualifying. Uh, 17th isn't where we need to be at the hardest place to pass on planet Earth. But, um, you know, we'll do our best to get through the field. We have a great pit crew. Uh, Greg's doing a great job on top of the box. Hopefully play some strategy and get some track position back and uh, hopefully stay up front. Parker, Alex Bowman comes into this race six points below that elimination line. And Kim, another team that had some challenges in the round of 12, round of 16 was the two car of Austin Cindric. So how do you guys tackle this round in the round of 12? Our challenges, I mean, we made it. That's all that matters. That's the, that's the way I see it. And it all resets for better, for worse. So um, proud to be here. Proud to still have an opportunity to chase after a championship. So got a lot of work to do today. Uh, stage points are my lifeline to pointing my way into the next round. Um, but a uh, long race today, obviously pretty physical race, something that the track's going to change a lot, trying to keep up with things and uh, stay in the game. Marty, I think a lot of the theme from all of this is cleaning up those mistakes and that today is a very important day. Clean race as you can advance, Parker. So, Brad, everyone dreads this round, right? They yeah. all dread these three racetracks. Mm. Is there an argument to be made, though, that drivers like Austin Sendrick actually look forward to this round? Austin Sendrick is in the perfect position. You know why? He has nothing to lose. We're not expecting him to win a championship this year. If he doesn't advance past this, we're, we're not going to be disappointed. He's had a heck of a season for a rookie. But he has nothing to lose. He'll be decent at this racetrack. He'll be great next week, and he'll be even better the week after. Watch out for Austin Sendrick. We keep saying how difficult this round is. We hear certain drivers talk about how difficult this round is. But there are drivers, just like the two we just talked about, Daniel, Ross Chastain, Joey Logano, Austin Sendrick. They see opportunity. Yes. They do not see adversity. They see opportunity. If you go in, Marty, and you don't like this round and I like it, I've already got you beat by a step. Yes, by a step. You might can catch up, but I've got you beat a little bit. Well, guys, one piece of news from the track this weekend. DJ Vanderlei, an engineer for Stuart Haas Racing, was injured in a sprint car accident on the dirt track here at Texas Motor Speedway on Thursday night. Friday, he had surgery on several fractured vertebrae. Our thoughts are with DJ and his wife, Jordan, as we pray for a full recovery. For 12 NASCAR Cup Series drivers, there are just seven weeks to determine a champion. The playoffs have been ruthless, knocking Ooh, out former oh champs Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch in bye the bye. first round. Who can survive and advance? <laughs> Time to kick off the second round of the Cup Series playoffs in what has been one of the most unpredictable seasons in the 74-year history of NASCAR. Holy cow. 
Austin Sindrick screamed those words on the radio after he won the Daytona 500. Holy cow! And started this NASCAR season on a special journey. 19 different winners this year ties the most all time in NASCAR history. Just a year ago, Kyle Larson dominated, winning 10 times and a championship to boot. But with the dawn of the next gen car, the playing field has been undoubtedly leveled. Who could have imagined, in a season where the car number was moved forward, that the biggest number was that of winners? Six drivers have ended a winless streak of 40 or more races. Five drivers have won for the first time. Three straight playoff races have been won by non-playoff drivers. Two drivers have even won with the same car number. Let's go! Joey Logano recently said, what a crazy year. Yeah! There's no better way to describe this season, and we still have seven more races to go. When Steve explains it like that, maybe it's not mm. if, but when there will be a 20th winner uh, this year. You never know, right? Right, so correct. Here's what's on the menu presented by Sonic. As we have mentioned, today's Texas race kicks off the round of 12. Next up, Talladega and then the Robo EG. I wonder why everybody's worried about Ooh, this round, right? Locks, As uh, Steve talked about, 19 different winners, ties a record through 29 races. Do we hear 20? coming up. Maybe seven races left in the season, and the round of 12 starts with Chase Briscoe, Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, and Austin Sindrick below the cut line. Kyle, I know one driver who's happy there was a reset here in the round of 12, Chase Elliott. Yes, Chase Elliott once again is number one in our hearts, people. <laughs> uh, with the reset, he goes straight to the top, but look how close this is. Mm. 30,000 or 3,040, and he's only six. Uh, uh, Cindric's only got six. So you look at it, it's 32 points when you start looking at things. That is incredible. That, that's one race of the bottom half finishing in stage points and the top half not, and now these guys are tied. It's incredibly close going into this round. Well, let's hear from the driver who is once again the number one C Chase, Chase Elliott's with Kim Coon. Thanks, Marty. And Chase, they were just talking about reseated. You are at the top again of the board. I know that doesn't give you much comfort, but offer any kind of breathing room headed into this round? You hope so. You know, I, I think you always, regardless of, of where the points show that you are, you want to try to get off, uh, you know, with a good start at, at that first race. So, you know, this round is certainly going to be tough. Texas has uh, not been one of my uh, more favorable places to come visit. So. Uh, with that being said, though, I, I felt like our Napa Chevy was pretty good yesterday in, in, uh, in qualifying. You know, six, about 20 spots better than I've been doing the past month on Saturday. So take those small victories and, and hope that we can uh, turn, a, you know, turn a good qualifying effort uh, and, a, and a good pit selection in to a good run today is, is what we're hoping for. So we'll see. You know, we want to get through today, and then obviously you know, next week is going to be a toss-up. So it would be nice to get out of here with a win and uh, not, uh, not have to worry about it. With as hot as it is today, how much will the track change? And I know you guys didn't really get in the resin yesterday. Expectations for that? Yeah, it's hot. That's for sure. It's cer certainly warm. Uh, wish we were under the lights for the sake of all the people here watching. But yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how much the track will change as far as the lane that we were running in yesterday. But I certainly think that uh, as the pace slows down, it's going to be more favorable to move around and potentially get up into the into the resin and, and try to find some pace somewhere else. Uh, and with the way these cars are in traffic, you know, you're always hunting some, some fresh air. So I'm sure we're going to move around and hopefully hopefully our car suits both lanes well and we can uh, yeah, stay up front and just try to be around there at the end of 500 miles. Parker, Chase rolls off in the sixth position. Well, Kim, it's so hot that Joe Logano and I have decided to stay here and sit down in the shade, smart between us. So a lot of people throughout this garage said the 22 car is the fastest car from yesterday. Did it feel that way? That's good to hear. I actually think the AAA Mustang is pretty good, and uh, hopefully it stays that way. Obviously, it's pretty warm out today, and uh, the track's going to change a lot from practice. Uh, the, the resin wasn't quite in yet up top, the traction compound, and uh, obviously it came in during the Xfinity race. So that'll change some things a little bit, but uh, hey, we're starting up towards the front. we got a good pit stall. It's all about executing this first r uh, race of the second round here. And, and, uh, it's a getting a minimum of 40 points. I think that's that's a good goal today. If we can win, that <laughs> makes life way better. Uh, but if not, we got to maximize what we got to set ourselves up for the next two weeks. And when you look at the last round, you and I were talking about this earlier today, it was chaos. Now we have Talladega and the Roval. I mean, how much importance did that put on today? A lot. <laughs> it's the most important race so far in the playoffs to have a good run because uh, you just don't know what Talladega brings. And the Roval is not as much of a wild card, but it can be. We've seen some crazy things happen there before. So uh, this is the one that you, you you can control the most of and you need to maximize that the most.
Marty, keep your eye on this 22 car. He says it's fast. Yeah, a lot of people in the garage area agree with you, Parker. So Chase Elliott, Brad, yeah. and Joey Logano get the rare chance to call a timeout, oh, that's lucky. take a reset after yep. a rough first round. How do they get their momentum back? Hey, I've, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, I've been around a long time. And over the years, you've watched these race teams, these big race teams especially, utilize their resources to stay up front and race up there all day long. Well, thank goodness for NASCAR because this new car has reset that. It's no longer this guy's a great driver or this guy's a great driver. This is a great team. Yeah. It is equal. It is actually leveled this playing field. But these massive teams, though, like Hendrick Motorsports, like Penske, they have to not make mistakes. They're making a lot of common mistakes as a team that keeps them from winning races. They've got to clean that up. And if they don't, the Chris Bushers and the Bubba Wallaces and those guys are going to beat them because they're just as good a race car drivers. Yes. I know it's going to hurt some feelings, but they are. <laughs> they are. They hey, are. Kyle, are you surprised the playoffs are now moving to the second round and no driver who we thought would step up in the playoffs yes. has really stepped up and said, hey, this championship is mine. you got to go through me to get it. So a few years ago, we had the year of the big three. Yeah. Now we have the year of who's it going to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> because right. no one has stepped up. Nope. And that has been a, Chris, uh, a, a Christopher Bale has been the one guy who has been consistent in this first round but that's not a step up because he doesn't have a w he he's not it. dominating right. he's not leading the, all these races we need someone out of this group to step up and say come chase me come chase me yeah. all the way to phoenix and you're going to have to go through me right now we don't have that one guy no, and don't. it's going to be interesting to see as we come out of this round who that one person don't is. take your eye off tv folks because you just don't yeah. know <laughs> yes maybe the playoff driver should start by winning a race in the playoffs. that would help that, that would, would be help. a good start right uh, when we come back time for trend reports with steve who's looking up and whose stock is headed down as the nascar cup series kicks off the round of 12 at texas motor speedway Elevate your taste buds with a new Sonic Chop House cheeseburger layered with crispy onion strings and a creamy Chop House aioli all over an all-beef patty with two slices of American cheese and served on a toasted brioche bun for a limited time only at Sonic. Time to represent your favorite driver and take advantage of all the amazing deals at the NASCAR shop. Check out the greatest selection of t-shirts, hats, die casts, and more by visiting nascar.com slash shop. You know, Christopher Bell was a standout driver in the first round of the playoffs, being the only driver who advanced before last week's cutoff at Bristol. The Oklahoma native considers Texas his home racetrack. And as our Rutledge Wood found out, Bell gets away from racing by racing a little more. It's not every day you get an invite to hang with a cup driver. Can I get a tour? Absolutely. Come on in. If I have an off day, typically you can see me floating around here tinkering on something. This is how I reset. Are you tight over there? Yeah, the axle needs to go this way? That feels right. Micro sprints is what I grew up running as a kid, so I've always had a passion for it. So that's one thing that I love, Rut, about these things is you have what I call professional micro sprint racers, and then you have 12-year-old kids that are racing against them. You think you can fit in it, right? Ooh. I, I don't. I don't think I can fit in it. Yeah, it's just that literally the entire left side of the car is blocked by the engine. Well, this is it. That's all you got? This is great. Look at us. <laughs> 20 team right now is the best team at Joe Gibbs Racing. You're in the running for a championship. Points for Christopher Bell is what he was looking for. Does any of that stuff ever kind of click for you to think like, dude, this happened real fast? It has happened fast, and I heard this line the other day, and it made complete sense. The days go by slow, but the years go by fast. And whenever I look at my NASCAR career, it's been a heck of a ride for sure. Excellent work, thank you so much. We'll see if Christopher Bell can continue the momentum. I want to welcome in our crew chief, Steve Latart. Steve, I've gone full sleeve roll up. I hope you're taking advantage of the AC <laughs> up there in the booth. Time for trend reports. So we talked about how Chase Elliott loved this reset, right? He got to be the number one seed again. How about Christopher Bell? He all of a sudden lost all these points. How does his stock look heading into this round? Well, how could Christopher Bell not be trending up? You mentioned that the first driver locked in. He did it without a win. He did it with three top fives in the round of 16. That is the consistency that will move you all the way into to Phoenix, but we look specifically here at Texas, back-to-back -back third place finishes. So I don't see why his trend is gonna cool off anytime soon. How about the reigning champ, Kyle Larson? An eighth place average finish may not sound great, but that's trending up for Kyle Larson because that's all he needed to advance. He won this race a year ago. I look at Kyle Larson as the driver looking for some momentum 
trending up. He'd like to keep it trending up from here to the end of the playoffs. His teammate William Byron seems to have found a completely different gear here in the playoffs. Steve, how is he trending? Trending up in high gear. One top 10 in the 18 weeks leading up to the playoffs was a very ho-hum start to the summer. But how about this? Then he backs it up with three top 10s in the last round. He found that extra gear. He was a runner-up at Texas last year. I think that trend is going to continue in the upward direction. Man, Steve, you're being generous today. Uh, Denny Hamlin is next. Are you going to go four for four? Maybe it's the heat, but why not? Let's go four for four. <laughs> I like it. Hamlin, I like it. <laughs> two seconds last round. And more importantly, what's it got this week? A brand new pick crew. He got himself Kyle Busch's pick crew. That is probably the second best overall pick crew when you look at Pitt Road. I think Denny Hamlin, the three-time Texas winner, trending up and going to look good again today. Well, Steve, speaking of Denny Hamlin, Texas has been kind to him in the playoffs. In fact, it was a crazy Texas race in 2010 that nearly propelled Hamlin to a championship. And here's how it happened. Happy race day, everybody. Ready to go here at Texas. This is a pretty pivotal race in this championship battle. Jimmy Johnson's pit crew just being a little bit suspect. Go, go, go. Jimmy was just kind of fighting and hanging on. I think they actually replaced their pit crew in the middle of this race. But in this instance here, we're we're in the closing laps of the race. Me and Matt Kenseth. He's, he's going to make the pass, get into one here. Kenseth. Can he get him through? He got it. He's got it. Yeah, I remember, you know, in the middle of one and two there, I noticed he throttled up super early. Kenseth ran out of room off of two. And I really questioned whether he was going to be able to make that corner. And when he had to lift on the exit, it allowed me to switch him back over and do the crossover on him and get, regain the lead. But, you know, I, I remember if I could win this race, we kind of would put our throats on the 48 team. Jimmy Johnson's all the way back at 10th. Kenny Hamlin is going to make a statement saying, if the drive for five is alive, you're going to have to come through me. You know, I just remember getting this win was so gratifying because it kind of cemented our spot as the championship favorite at the time. Steve, it's funny how Hamlin mentions the pit crew swap between Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon that you were a part of back in 2010, because guess what happened this week? Kyle Busch eliminated from the playoffs after Bristol, so Joe Gibbs Racing decides to swap the 11 and 18 pit crews for the rest of the year. That'll give Hamlin a nice boost, but how do these swaps normally go over internally? Well, back in 2010, it was really a bit of a whim, right? As I checked in with Chad, we were out of the race. We kind of made the decision. He felt like that was the weak point on the 48 that day and really the weak point for the year, right? So as the 24 out of the race, our pit crew is very solid. We let the 48 borrow oh, them. Oh, burden in a fight there, Steve. I know. That you saw my <laughs> head shaking right there. Uh, so, you know, that pit crew swap was a little bit more kind of in the heat of the moment. Now, the Joe Gibbs pit crew, that's racing in 2022. This is a big organization with four cars, and I think every driver and every team knows once you're out of the playoffs, anything is on the table. Your cars, your pit crew, your crew chief, your spotter, anything to help the other team for a chance to win a championship. All right, Steve, these rounds are like many seasons, right? Four more eliminated in three weeks. Who do you think will have a tough time making it to the round of eight? Well, it's tough to pick, especially after we saw Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick go out. But I have all of Team Trackhouse. I know that's unfortunate, but Ross Chastain Daniels was a great second year for Trackhouse, but I'm not sure it continues. Chase Briscoe, I thought, could move through because of the Roval. I just don't see the speed out of the 14. And then Alex Bowman. I don't know. I know he showed up in the first round, but it was a long stretch over the summer. Hope he proves me wrong and does it again. It's hard to pick four, but these are my first four out. All right, Stevie, good stuff. We'll see you for the call of the race. When we come back, some heavy hitters eliminated in round one. Could one of those drivers still win a race this year? We're talking about Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch next. Countdown to Green is brought to you by the all-new Sonic Chop House Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only at Sonic. Noah Gregson won the Xfinity Series race here at Texas yesterday, but also in town, uh, Cole Swindell, by the way, who played a concert here last night. Guess who was there? And the trophy was there, Kyle. And the greatest trophy in racing has just become. <laughs> awesome. that, that is a, Woo, an amazing beautiful. trophy by Andy's custard. Beautiful. Kyle wishes that was real ice cream right you now. You got that right, right now. Right. I'll take it. Uh, by the way, I wonder how much no, sleep Noah got last night. Not, Not much, much, I'm guessing. Not much. Had a good time. <laughs> an hour for every time 100 for, miles. Time for buy, sell, hold. <laughs> will this driver, eliminated from the playoffs, win one of the final seven races? Brad, we'll start with you and Kyle Busch. Well, you know, they gave him a raggedy motor last week. This week, they took his pit crew from him. 
We don't ever see Kyle Busch smile anyway. You think he's happy now? <laughs> Let me tell you something. You dang up right this boy can win a race. He can win any race yes. from here to the house. They better watch out for this. is a dangerous man. Yep, yep, Kyle, yep. how about My Kevin man. Harvick, who, by the way, blew up your championship bye, bye, four? Bye, 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 bye. Listen, I buy Kevin Harvick when he goes to the grocery store. That's the way it is. <laughs> that man has something to prove. He had something to prove rolling into the racetrack this morning, and there's seven more times he's going to roll into a racetrack before the end of the year and have something to prove to everybody. He wins right. before the end of the year. I'll take Tyler Reddick, and I have one word for you. Ooh. Roval. Yes. Reddick has won two road yes. courses this year. The Roval, a little bit like the Indy Road Course, where he was dominant. I'm buying Tyler Reddick wins another one on the way out the door at RCR. I mean, come on, Brad. No right, shot he, he's there next year, right? No right, shot he, he's he, at RCR. No way. He got seven races left, and he's out the door at RCR. <laughs> That's old. Gosh, over. man, you guys That's are brutal. Uh, okay, brutal. Guys, That's so keeping it real. Time for us to go on the record with our four who will not make the round of eight. I, I agree with what the guys have said. This is a tough round to pick. Brad, you're first up. It ain't tough. I got Cendric, Briscoe, Suarez, and Bowman, unless one of them win today. Wow. That's pretty wow. quick. Uh, I've got my four out that I picked Wednesday. Suarez, Briscoe, that. Bowman, and Byron. After seeing how quick they are today, though, at Texas, I kind of wish I wouldn't have actually picked these four because I think yeah. three of those four are going to be pretty good today here at Texas. Kyle, we saved you for last because this got you in trouble. I know. This guy, it always ago. gets me. It got me in trouble the first round. I'm going to go Cendric, Briscoe, Blaney Ooh. and Hamlin. Oh and Hamlin. I'm Hamlin. leaving Trackhouse in. Trackhouse is going all the way look, to the man. final four for me. The heat I'm is taking affecting it. you. Look, Blaney, he's got a penalty hanging over his head. Hamlin. He just barely made Hamlin. it into the playoffs, just barely made it out of round one. Hamlin, got to clean up those mistakes. We heard Joey Logano say, they got a few. execute, execute, they execute. They got a few. They got a few. They don't move forward if they don't execute, dude. Wow, Denny Hamlin wow. just texted me. He wants to meet you in the garage. Just talking like Dover. I'm there. Talking There's about air conditioning Willis? in the garage. I'm headed there. <laughs> just like Dover a few years ago. Kyle making friends. When we come back, time for our race-winning predictions for Texas and the start of round two for the Cup Series playoffs. Countdown to Green is brought to you by the all-new Sonic Chop House Cheeseburger for a limited time only at Sonic. The 12 for the Cup Series playoffs on a 96-degree day. Steve, I love, I love what Steve Brad told yeah. Kyle yesterday. Hey, that heat's your problem. That ain't my problem. Oh, yeah. That's your problem in the car. Steve bailed out real quick. Yeah, them boys did. up in the booth, man, they got it made. We, <laughs> we want to be down here in the middle of the race fans and the racers. We getting That's after it, it down here. They have the AC worried about their hair. Seriously, though, Kyle, I mean, I don't think drivers are used to this 96 degree. No, heat. Listen, this is going to no. be a factor today. Nobody's used to this night, this, this heat in these race Smoke. cars under these conditions. Nobody. Smoke. Brad, let's check the odds for the Texas race today. What we got here? What we got here? Who's oh, the favorite? Kenny Hamlin. Plus 1,300. Kyle Busch. Hey, wow. I'm calling my brother right now. Send me some money. We're going to bet on that. <laughs> William I, Byron plus 1,100 and Tyler Reddick at plus 1,000. You better be putting some money today on the day, boy. Wow, man. You. Wow. Well down there, Ross Ooh. Chastain. I mean, there's some good underdogs wow. today. There's Absolutely. Some I think the heat's got to these people. Yeah. Put some money. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with Hamlin and Larson, but my goodness, uh, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch. That's a good bet. I like that. Ooh. So, Ooh. Uh, Time to get our race-winning picks. I think you'll see some of our guys, our, our underdogs on there, that would be good yep. bets today. Uh, Dell Jr. goes with William Byron. Jeff goes Denny Hamlin like that. Steve went with Joey Logano. Brad, who did you go with? To well, win I was going to go with Denny Hamlin until Kyle started talking that craziness. He might know something. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to go with Tyler Reddick. That's my backup. I think Tyler Reddick will shock yep, people. Like that. Today. Like that. As long as the tires hold together for Tyler Reddick, yes, I mean, they've shown certainly a lot of speed. Kyle, who did you wind up going I'm with? I'm going today? with a guy that can get back to back wins. Brad K. Oh, wow. Ba oh. Last week, he got a win as an owner. This week, he gets a win as a driver. Ooh. Listen, these guys have found some speed. Yes, this has been a good place for him. I'm going with Brad K. Got Roush, Fenway, Keslowski race. According to Kyle, going back to back, I agree with Steve. I'm going with Joey Logano. I think they have had a terrific run, and I think they find that momentum. Brad, remember we were talking yeah. about where do they find it again? Came into the playoffs with all this momentum. I think they find it today at a <laughs> racetrack agree. where they can get to victory lane, no doubt about it. And, and so speaking of the tires, we just mentioned, Brad, you were going through the garage area yeah. early. Is there a lot of concern there? There is a lot of concern, right front tires. We saw it in the all-star race. We saw yeah. a little bit. Guys get a little bit over the air pressure. Suggestions here for speed. And it blows that right front tire. It's hot today. They've got nine sets of tires, eight sets, and then one scuff. It is going to be a long day. They're going to have to manage those tires and watch for tire issues we get throughout the day. Yeah, it's hot today. It's going to be slick. The resin strip is coming in. We heard Joey talk about it. He yeah. felt like it had come in. So many factors are going to play in the abuse this tire takes today. And I think that heat certainly makes it no, worse, yes, it does. doesn't it? Doesn't I, I think it's no. even a little bit warmer than the engineers yes. plan for and the crew chiefs plan for today. Warmer than it, I plan for. It's hot, <laughs> you don't, and you don't use a lot of brake, but it is hot. So that beat gets hot. It's going to get hot. Don't the, and that's only going to add to the chaos yes, of this sir. round. I love it. 
Mr. Degan, sure. the Roval coming up. I so certainly it. a lot to look forward to here from the Texas Motor Speedway today. Time for today's pre-race ceremonies on a warm afternoon here in the Lone Star State. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the 1st Cavalry Division Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Brett Schisler from Texas Alliance Raceway Ministries offers our invocation. Would you please pray with me? Most loving and gracious God, we come to you today and we thank you for this beautiful weather. You could turn the heat down just a little. Lord, as we come to you today, we thank you for the men and women all over the world that helped to keep us safe. And Lord, we ask today for that same safety for all the drivers, all the crews, all of the safety workers, and for our world. And Lord, finally, as we come to you today, there are so many that hurt and so many that need your healing. You know all about each and every one of them, but we ask you today to be with them, to heal them, and to be with them every step of their way. It's in the strong and beautiful name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come here this afternoon and we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome First Cavalry Division Band. On the other side, Rick Allen, Jeff Burton, Steve Letarte, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Time to kick off round number two of the Cup Series playoffs from Texas next. Till the work was done. It just put me under to the bottom of the well. Keep your motor running till that victory bell. One for the money to another show. Please start your engines now and rock and roll. It's NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Texas. The Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500. It's Texas Motor Speedway home to the last 500 mile race of the season and the start of the round of 12, which could be the hardest three race stretch of the entire playoffs alongside our crew chief Steve Letard as well as our drivers Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton Rick Allen with you. All right, let's take a look at the playoff standings presented by Xfinity. Four have been eliminated, Rick, with 16 drivers. Now it's down to 12, and you see so tightly compressed. Four names already in red. Everybody has been reset, plus their playoff points. 
four drivers, Jeff, will be eliminated at the end of this round. Yeah, and who's going to take control of this playoff? So far, no playoff driver has found a way to win a race. You win a race and you're into the next round. Who is going to be the guy that finds a way to get tough and start winning these races? Get tough. Well, the day's going to be tough. It's hot out there and it's slick. This track is going to push the tires and the drivers to the limit today. Rick, stage points. We don't talk about them enough. You want to score points? Not just the end of the race. The end of each stage, points are awarded for the top ten. That could be the difference between the end of your playoff hopes or continuing on. So much pressure, and as Junior mentioned, hot. It's the hottest Texas race ever, and we're experiencing it at the start of the round of 12. It's time to get the engines fired. Let's go trackside for the command. And now, here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome... Stars of the movie Top Gun Maverick, Jay Ellis and Lewis Pullman. Jay, you feeling okay, buddy? No, man, I, I, I feel a little off. Oh, seriously? Yeah, what's, just, what's wrong? I don't know, man. I feel, I feel the need. The, what, the, need, the need for what? The need for speed! Fired up and you're ready. Well done. The co-grand marshals, stars of Top Gun Maverick, Lewis Pullman, a.k.a. Bob, Jay Ellis, call sign Payback, and of course the honorary starter, Danny Ramirez, is going to be with us, his call sign fanboy. NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company, Coca-Cola, and by Ford, built Ford proud. Everyone knows what it takes to win. Certainly the foundation is hard work. You must perform at a really high level with a lot of stress and focus being put on you. We need to stay grounded, stay in the moment. When preparation meets opportunity, that's when it kind of comes together. A championship's always been the goal. I absolutely want the trophy next to my name that calls me and the 11 team a champion. It's one thing to say our goal is to win, we have a desire to win, but are we committed as a team and as a company to do what it takes to win? What will you do to get to victory lane in this, the second round of the playoffs? And that would solidify a spot in the next round. If you take a look at the starting grid. A guy up front here, Brad Keselowski, hasn't won yet this year. There's already been 19 different winners. That's a record. Could we see 20? Another driver back there, Michael McDowell, could visit victory lane. Yeah, we look back. Back in row seven, last week's winner became the 19th winner of 2022. Chris Busher next to him, Ryan Blaney. The last time we were in Texas was the All-Star Race. Bl Ryan Blaney was the winner, trying to repeat that. How about Truex? 700 laps led at Texas, never been to victory lane. Stenhouse Jr. and Bell making up row 11. Harvick eliminated from the playoffs after the last round. Row 15, the birthday board, Corey LaJoy turns 31 today. He'll start next to Chase Briscoe. Starting next to Chase Briscoe, as you mentioned. Let's see if we can dial him up. We're going to ride along with him on the Northern Tool and Equipment on board. But Junior, see if we can get him on the radio. Chase Briscoe, Dale Junior, and the boys in the booth. You got us? I got you, boys. Man, I know you'd like to qualify better, but I always kind of like starting in the back. Got all them cars to pass. How you going to do it today? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it gives us a great opportunity to pass a lot of cars and kind of do some different strategy stuff. But yeah, I mean, Definitely a tough racetrack to pass. You know, I felt like our car was actually pretty good in race runs. We just kind of overdusted for qualifying. So the groove is going to be a lot wider than it was yesterday for us. So be able to move around. It's going to be hot and slick. Guys are going to be struggling. So yeah, I think we should be good in our racetrack center sports. It's got to uh, you know, execute all day. It's going to be the name of the game. It's not, you know, eliminating yourself in this first race with the next two races coming up. So that's what we're trying to do today. Well, we know it's hot and miserable. Probably the hottest race ever at Texas and it'll be about 140, 150 degrees inside the car. But tell the fans why you why you prefer that. Yeah, I mean, for a race car driver, I think it's a lot more fun for a lot. I mean, 
for me, for sure, but I think a lot of us would agree. The hotter it is, the slicker it is, you're slipping and sliding around. You feel like, as a race car driver, you make more of a difference. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's better than being 40 degrees. I mean, it's obviously unfortunate for the fans sitting in the stands making, but it's pretty awesome to see how many guys and girls are going to you know, endure that today for a race. But, yeah, I think for me, the more slipping and sliding around we're doing reminds me a lot of dirt racing. So I've always enjoyed that part of it, and hopefully we can move around a little bit and try to find some speed. All right, bud, we'll be pulling for you. Thanks for talking to us today. I yeah, appreciate it. Guys. Have a good one. Let's hear a little bit more about some playoff drivers. We'll go to pit road. Kim Kuhn has a little more on the five car. That's right. Kyle Larson won this race last year, but only made 36 laps in the all-star race here earlier this season before a DNF crash. So I asked crew chief Cliff Daniels if he thinks that's a setback, not having more notes on this car this year at this track. And he told me no. He said the temperature is so much hotter. The gear stack is different. It's a different tire, a longer race. He doesn't feel like the all-star race gave anyone much information or an advantage. So it's almost like being at this track for the first time this season. Kyle was a little bit too loose in practice than he wanted to be, but the team says they feel like they made the right adjustments, Parker, for the race. Well, Kim, it may be hot, 140 degree track temp, but the team that's bringing the heat is this 22 car of Joe Logano. There was an organizational test this past week in NASCAR for the Cup Series. Tuesday and Wednesday, the fastest team, Team Penske. Then they unloaded that 22 car here yesterday in practice. They said it was the fastest they'd unloaded at a 1.5 mile track all year. Then he narrowly missed down the pole, starts on the front row. Can they take that speed and use it over 500 miles, Marty, and get in victory lane? Boy, Parker, the points coming into the round of 12 are so tight. In fact, Ross Chastain is just plus 11 above the cut line. Talking to his crew chief, Phil Surgeon, this morning, he told me, I think this round intimidates everybody, and they feel like, especially here at Texas, they have to make something happen. In his meeting with Chastain Tuesday, he said, I think the exact opposite. If we have a smooth, simple round, no Hail Marys, don't force anything, we'll be fine, and we'll advance to the round of eight. Thanks, Marty. All right, Steve, let's break down this race. Give us the numbers. Well, we've said it a few times, 500 miles. The last 500-mile test of the season, previously it was the Southern 500, 334 laps. Three stages, all very lengthy. 105 laps for both the first and the second stage. The final stage, 124 laps of fuel window. Somewhere in the mid-60s is what we expect. Teams have about eight sets of tires on pit road. Uh, you lose grip. You know, the track still is pretty poor. You lose a little bit of tip, uh, tr you know, grip with those Goodyear tires, but it is going to be a grind in this heat to run this distance. We have the Coca-Cola pace car cam leading the field. That'll give us a unique view of this field. Kevin Harvick has the Hunt Brothers pizza on board, a 360 camera to go all the way around. You see the 48 of Alex Bowman, playoff driver, has the Xfinity mobile camera. Daniel Suarez, another playoff driver, that Coca-Cola cam. I could use a nice cold Coke on a hot day. That sounds pretty tasty. <laughs> it actually is. Yes. As we get ready for the green flag, these drivers have set up weeks in advance to be prepared for this. And now as the drivers making their way onto pit road to check pit road speed. All right, boys, got a great race car here. Got something we can win with today. Let's maximize our day, get every point we can, set ourselves up best for this round. We'll be smart and stay up here. Little pep talk there for the 22 team. Be smart and stay up here. You mentioned the heat. Let, I'm going to just give all the drivers credit. They've been working all summer long, as you were alluding to. They're in great shape. They're hydrated. They're going to be fine. I don't think the physical test, like, they'll be able to physically drive the car. It's how it wears on you mentally, right? As it takes more energy and effort, and you're uncomfortable, and it doesn't distract you, right? Does it force you into a mental mistake? That's really the question I have. Uh, you know, these guys are so good. And engines. We've seen engine right. failures. More this year than I remember in recent history, that 500-mile challenge, and now in hot conditions, everything under the hood will be hotter. Uh, you know, it's going to be test man and machine. Let's check back in on pit road with Kim. 
Well, with the playoff teams reseeded, rookie Austin Cindric is the last driver in the standings, 12th in points. But Austin sees that as an advantage. He told me he feels like he's on offense from here on out. And he said the challenges this team faced in the first round and specifically at Bristol last weekend actually helped them. It made them realize that despite setbacks, they can power through difficult situations. It reinforced a can't give up attitude in them. And he thinks that will propel them into the next round. Parker, Austin starts in the 11th position. Well, Kim, for a car starting right near him, the 99 of Daniel Suarez, it's a similar situation from the round of 16. They said, as a team and as a speed in our cars, we are a top 10 car, but we did not execute like a top 10 car. We all made mistakes. That means the crew, the driver, the setup of the cars at one point in that round, we're lucky to be in the round of 12, but if we can clean those up and get use that top 10 speed, that can propel us into the next round. So that's the focus for the 99, Marty. Ah, uh, life around the cut line. Ryan Blaney knows it all too well. Just plus four coming in to the round of 12. They barely made it through Daytona into the playoffs. Barely made it through Bristol to the round of 12, but here they are. In fact, Blaney said earlier today, I always say adversity builds character. We've had plenty of adversity in the last month, and I love building character, but I'm ready for a break, to be honest. Hey, Steve, we've talked about it all playoffs long. All they want is a smooth race today on the 12 car. If you can have a smooth round, that really advances your shot to make it to the next round in the round of eight. Yeah, smooth races, though, it's kind of like track position. It's four-leaf clover, Rick. Everybody's looking for it, and it's pretty hard to find. You never go into a race thinking you're going to have mistakes. It's how quickly you adapt, how quickly you adjust, and how prepared are you for the potential mistakes you have. And are they forced or unforced errors? Right. Like it's one thing if you get into a wreck, certain things happen in racing, but speeding on pit road, uncontrolled tires, we've seen a, kind of a rash of those types of mistakes. I'll remind you once again, there are 36 cars out there, 36 drivers that are fighting to win this race, but only 12 still have the opportunity of a championship. And those 12 names and numbers are on the left side of the screen with their points entering this, the round of 12. At the end of the round, which includes Talladega and the Roval, the bottom four in points get eliminated. So every position on the track, every stage point gained is important. And that's why these drivers and teams will be fighting for every position they can garner. Kozlowski and Logano, a couple fours, the Blue Ovals making up row number one as we get ready to kick off the round of 12 from Texas Motor Speedway on this sweltering hot fall day. Up through the gears they go. Keslowski, Logano, we're underway racing in Texas. Still side by side up front. Logano really wide here. Look, Brad Kozlowski trying to get away from the side draft. Now he's going to try to go back up there and slow the 22 down. Remember, this is the first time these cars have been on the racetrack in traffic. It was a race yesterday. The conditions are completely different than it was the last time, and they're giving the air taken off of them by the cars around them. And the front three broke away here. William Byron trying to decide who to help. He has to back off a little bit for some clean air. Brad Kozlowski takes the lead. It's Kozlowski, Logano, William Byron, Michael McDowell, and Denny Hamlin all in the top five. Reddick, Elliott, Suarez, Dylan Larson, and Sindrick down there, all playoff drivers. Right now, everybody right around the bottom of the racetrack. Only seeing a few cars running that middle groove because they're kind of forced to be there too wide. You don't oh. trust that middle groove right now. It's yeah. dirty up there. You're afraid of it. Yeah, that, when you go up there, it takes you a few laps to really understand just how hard you can push the car. So the first couple of corners there won't be that quick. But eventually, somebody figures it out. And then you watch everybody migrate up into the find that speed as well. Suarez trying to battle here on the outside. Oh, Dylan. Dylan fighting back. See what Suarez does down here in turn one and two as he's learned a little bit about this outside groove. Still not quite enough speed there, and they did not treat that outside groove. They've been putting resin on, resin on the racetrack. They have not added any overnight. We saw that wear away a little bit in yesterday's Xfinity race. Watch Daniel Suarez. What he's trying to do is just find as much clean air as he can following Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon had a good car yesterday in practice. So what Suarez wants to do, and he will eventually be able to do, as this track wears in, is move up 
and be actually on the outside of that three car to get clean air, but right now the track's just not allowing him to do it. We heard Suarez way out of the gas in one and two, but through three and four, still almost all the way through wide open. As hot as it is today, they won't be quite wide open, but to your point, Rick, there's a lot more throttle down in three and four. This is the slower end of the track. So if your car's not working here, it really hurts the entire lap. You kind of want this corner, if you can, to be the better corner of the two. Right now, everybody right on the bottom of the track. I think we might see these guys move up a little bit, but early in the race, everybody being pretty conservative with their line. Bottom left of your screen, you see track temperature 138 degrees. This will be an interesting situation here, Rick, to see how the faster car, I believe, of Denny Hamlin gets around McDowell. Hamlin's a little bit quicker, a little more pace. So he's got to figure out, he's one of the first guys to try to figure out, okay, how do I make the pass today on this track as slick as it is? Marty, what are you hearing out of the 11 early in this one? Rick, I think everybody being very cautious right now. Denny Hamlin sitting in the fifth position to Junior's point, trying to find a way around Michael McDowell. Jeff, right here going into turns one and two, his fighter Chris Lambert is saying no one is getting all the way up into the sticky stuff, but you can put your right sides on it, and that will work. It's crazy how precise you have to be. And here at Texas, the vision into turn one is so difficult. Why is that? And the reason it's difficult, Marty, is because the track is so wide. When they reconfigured this racetrack, they kept the wall where it is, but they moved the white line, the bottom of the racetrack, lower to the center of the racetrack. So if you're Hamlin right now, look how wide that track is entering turn one. There's so many places to go, but if you miss the groove where you're supposed to be, the car makes no grip. So it tells you it's a mile and a half. Visually, it's a mile and a half high grip corner, but it's not. It's a very low banking corner with very low grip, and you have to drive accordingly. I did watch the last lap, the 18 of Kyle Busch run the high side down here in three and four to be able to set up the pass you just saw. He's able to create momentum off of turn four to get under the 48 of Bowman in one and two. So we are seeing one car at least make a little time in the high side of three and four. Unfortunately, Kyle Busch, a two-time champion, eliminated after the first round of the playoffs. And the news about the driver of the 18, he'll race for RCR next year. One, yeah, I'm sorry, just going to jump in there. Junior, talk about Christopher Bell in the 20. You guys talk about setting up passes. Still 22nd. Not a great qualifying run for the 20. Junior, and definitely either being patient or waiting for his car to drive a little better for the 20 car. Trying to work underneath 23 here. Making the pass on the bottom was really, really tough yesterday in the Xfinity race. I think it'll be tough again today, especially as more confidence is built in this higher line that these guys are going to eventually have to run. Kim, what are we hearing out of the 20 team early? Well, to Steve's point about qualifying, when I checked in with the team this morning, they said they just really missed the mark in qualifying in terms of their setup. They feel like they didn't make good adjustments for the race, but they acknowledge the fact that this first stage, at least, is going to be very hard in terms of track position with as difficult as it is to pass. So they're looking to gain spots possibly on pit road with good stops, Parker, but a long road ahead for Christopher Bell, who runs in the 20. Position. Right, Kim. The same for Chase Briscoe's all the way back right now in 31st position. Started back in 30th, was just way too tight in qualifying, and that has carried over the race. The team told me they made as many adjustments as they could to try and get this car to handle, but it just not been able to find it for Chase, and now he's trying to move his way forward. And he's one of those drivers that's really looking for that outside groove to come in because he's getting very arrow affected by the cars in front of him, just searching to try and find another groove to get some clean air on the front of that race car, be able to make some, uh, make some lap time and make some passes right now, but stuck back in 31st is not a good start for the 14. This car is so dependent on the air getting underneath it to be able to work that underbody and create downforce. So following another car, it really takes a lot of that grip and a lot of that downforce away. So yes, we do want this track to widen out. The drivers cannot wait for this track to start producing some speed on the higher grooves. We're already seeing a lot of fall off in just 10 laps of racing. We've had almost three quarters of a second of fall off. So I think tires are going to be critical. You're going to want tires, Steve, as much as possible, every opportunity. But do we, you know, are we going to have times when you're not able to put tires on these cars because of how many sets they're available? Yeah, if you see a rash of yellows, for sure, with eight sets in the pits and 
500 miles to run. You know, we have long green flag runs, simple decisions for the crew chiefs. But if we start getting a cycle with a bunch of yellows, Rick, you are going to have to stay out on some of those. Do you pick the right one will be the all-important decision. Brad Keselowski out in front. The pageantry now behind us and racing here at the track. It was Danny Ramirez, call sign fanboy, gave us the green flag to get this one underway. Cup Series races from inside the cockpit of any car they choose. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app. Flying around this racetrack, want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap. Brad Keselowski has posted it. It was the second lap run at 29.217 seconds. Now his last lap was 30.12, so a little bit of fall off happening early in this race. Let's get a few updates. We start with Parker. Well, Rick, I'm not surprised to see that fastest lap from Brad Keselowski because as I listen to the field and all these drivers fighting handling conditions, one car is really happy with their car, saying the balance is pretty good, and that is the number six of Brad Keselowski, your pole sitter and current leader, now having led 21 laps. The team has been instructing him about other drivers using that higher lane, but telling him it's not worth it this time. There's nothing to gain there, Kim. Michael McDowell qualified in the fifth position and is currently running in the fourth. And when I found him this morning to give him a good job on that qualifying effort, he said he finally feels like he's showing people what he's got. The opportunity this season that he's had to always believe what he could do. And that's qualify well, race in the top five, and be there throughout the entirety of the race. So he said that it should not surprise anyone. Right now, though, that car free on both ends, the back. Hardy just out of the racetrack. Jim Bubba Wallace is last and already down a lap. He came down pit road, Steve, and he said the steering felt heavy. They had a steering issue last week at Bristol, but I don't think anybody expected that, as you also see the 38 car saw on the racetrack as well. So I don't know what the steering issue would be. They did come down pit road, changed all four Goodyear tires. Those were fine, but Bubba's saying it feels like there's a steering issue in the 45. Keep in mind, Steve, he is in the owner's playoffs as well at advanced to the round of 12, so we'll see what happens with the 45. Yeah, the radio said he, that he felt the steering was heavy. That tells me that, you know, this is a hydraulic system. Something is amiss whether maybe the fluid's too hot on this 96 degree day not being cooled enough if that fluid gets too hot uh, it almost starts to aerate a little bit almost thinking about like boiling water it's not boiling but that's what happens it doesn't have the same sort of assistance so we'll have to keep an eye on that 45 to see if this issue is just what he's going to feel all day long or if it will continue to degrade as far as the steering and the effects it has for Bubba. Steve, why is it one car? I mean, there's 36 cars out there and they're supposed to be all similar. Why does one car have this issue? Well, similar. They all have the same rack system. You're allowed to rebuild it to your own specifications. You're allowed to cool it however you so choose. Uh, the power steering pump isn't the similar. You know, so similar is not the same. Uh, it is the same steering component, but how it's applied, how it's serviced, and how you decide to cool it, it does have a bit of variety throughout the field, so we'll just have to see. Plus your front end settings. You know, if you put a lot of caster things, you're, you're going to ask the steering assist to be much higher. You could set a car up where it doesn't need a whole lot of assist, but they not that might not be exactly what you need for handling. Great racing right here between teammates. Saw Busher get around the two. Cindric struggling a bit. Going to get passed on the outside here by Kyle Busch. And look back there, guys. The 20 of Christopher Bell finally making a little headway. Running some really, really quick laps compared to the rest of the field. The top five fastest lap times the last several times. Yeah, last lap, he was the fourth quickest lap at a 30-10 for Christopher Bell, currently running in that 17 spot. We ride along with Bowman and look forward as Bell is moving that direction, moving toward the front of the pack. Marty. So Rick Bell is able to make passes, but it's difficult out there. Good example, Ryan Blaney started 14th right now, running 14th. What's going on with the 12? Listen on the radio a moment ago. Loose in, shattered the front in the middle, and then lead exit, and I get loose. That's zero grip. Thing is not very good. Loosen all the bad spots, tighten all the bad spots. So, Jeff, unpack that for me. Loosen all the bad spots, tighten all the bad spots here at Texas. Yeah, what he's saying is that, you know, you can manage a bad handling car, but that it needs to handle bad at the right places, right? you got to be able to drive into the corner with a lot of speed. He's too loose, so he got to sacrifice corner entry speed. Then he tries to go back to the throttle in the middle of the corner. Now he's way too tight. Chatters the front tires. Front tires actually bouncing across the racetrack. And then when he goes to the throttle, now he's loose right here. So when you have that many problems at that many different points of the racetrack, that's very difficult for a driver to manage and make lap time and 
be in the middle of this race right here. Well, this is a hornet's nest right here. The 23 of Ty Gibbs has a big gap out front. That tells me his car is not driving the way he wants. He's kind of holding this group up behind. Look at the 41 of Cole Custer, the 16 of Noah Gregson, 43 of Eric Jones, 21 of Harrison Burton, right behind Harrison Burton, Justin Haley. Corey LaJoy, Ty Dillon, and then behind him, Briscoe. Why does that matter? Because a half a straightaway back is the leader. Brad Keselowski and all these guys know it. 29 laps into a 105 lap stage is no guaranteed stop until way out in the future. They know they have got to find their way by this 23 before the leader gets there. Great battle right here of teammates. Larson getting that run on the high side. May have figured out this top. Gets around Chase. Chase is going to have to learn how to get up there and find a little pace the five car has. They were both running down uh, Reddick, but since Reddick has driven away from the nine, I think Chase needs to move around a little bit, maybe find some pace. Junior, how do you know when you've got to move up the racetrack? Because we're starting to see more cars move up into that second and even third group. Yeah, you're going to get some information from your spotter. Guys, you know, when they're watching lap times as well from all the other cars, they're going to tell you somebody's maybe found a couple tents up there. But also, obviously, just like now, when you get passed by somebody up there, you're, it's like a bowl of candy. You're going to go get some candy, man. That candy looks pretty good up there. So he's going to go up there and try to run some laps on the high side, see if his pace is there. Marty, how about Chase Elliott? Well, for the record, he has not reached into that bowl of candy yet. Junior to go up to that second groove. What's going on with the nine cars? Lost two spots in the last five laps. Listen. All right, rear here. It's just still, 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 still that way. It's really sharp around that corner. My front head's not green, though. So it's like when I do turn, I'm relying on that. But it's also the reason I'm hesitant at times, too. So that's what Chase Elliott thought, Brad Kozlowski losing a spot there to William Byron as well. So, Steve, this is around the magic number, lap 30 to 35. That's when teams are a little concerned about tire wear. So anything in what Chase Elliott say concern you there? Uh, you know, it sounds more of a just a handling issue, something you want to take away. We see now here, uh, you know, make some adjustments on the pit stop. Byron passes the six, but that's the, you know, that's two spots for the six of Brad Kozlowski. I'm not sure what happened. He had a, a lap that was almost two seconds, two and a half seconds off. He was passed by Logano and Byron. I don't yeah, see anything on the grill. That's getting freer as I run here. 10 four. Free and getting freer. Must have just had a big moment because it takes two and a half seconds off the pace of the six car drivers. Let's take a look. Off into turn one. You can see a car. He just stare, He is scared. We don't see visually the car get loose, but he is scared to turn left. The back end's trying to come around, and he never really can turn the wheel, so he just drives the car up the track, and he's all throttle. And that's why you see the slow lap time. But he's got the lap time back. The last, the last lap on the racetrack at 30.27, just, a, you know, that right there, 30 flat. That's right on top of the guys around him, in front of him, and behind. Right now, William Byron, a, a 29.73 is absolutely flying compared to the rest of the field. 35 laps complete on lap 36 here. 70 still to go in stage one from Texas. Oh, okay. car's moving around a lot. The car just steps around there's on a, him. There's a bump right over the tunnel there, Jeff, in three and four. It looked like the car just hopping a little bit. So clearly he was, you know, we heard Brad Keselowski say, I'm building loose. The longer he ran, the looser he got. You'd have to wonder if that's not what was happening with Truex. See, he stays in the gas, trying to keep from making contact with the wall, just brushes it. You guys mentioned the bump, the left rear tire. You can watch it go over the bump. I can't tell if it's before or after he spins out. Right, oh, right there. Yeah. You saw the back of the car hop. Probably already loose, right, Junior? Then the back goes over the bump, and now already a little loose turns into really loose. Yeah, and it's, I think, Steve, don't you believe that the way they have to get the back of these cars down to be able to take advantage of the downforce the undercarriage creates. They have these cars pretty stiff, spring-wise spring in the back. Absolutely, especially between the flat and the banked end of the racetrack. You can't have a lot of movement. Uh, but the unfortunate spin for the 19 is relief for everyone else in the field who now bring their car onto pit road. Kim. And Kyle Larson in that top left. Crew Chief Cliff Daniel said, do you need anything? Kyle said, no, I think I'm pretty good. It's tight in the resin, but freer 
Uh, it also, at the top of the resin, I feel good. Make no changes on this. Four tires, no good fuel, Marty. Kim, for the record, the guys had it exactly right. Martin Truck Jr. said, I should have slowed down. I knew it was just going looser and looser and looser. Same for his teammate, Denny Hamlin. Way too free, Parker. And Marty, consistent theme down here. Building free for the 24 car and the 22, Joe Logano. It looks like the 24, William Byron, win the race off pit road. With this caution, that puts them just inside their window as far as fuel to make it all the way to the end of stage one. Nice cold coke and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on USA. All smiles for Daniel Suarez as he got his first career win earlier this year at Sonoma to put him into the playoffs. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico as we look down at that Texas sized pool. Here just outside of turn two at Texas Motor Speedway. Brad Kozlowski coming back to pit road had a speeding penalty so all that track position that he had gained and the pole position that he had won he yeah. lost all of that. So basically this is just, just trying to continue to call a good race for this six car right. They know that. They're going to be very close on fuel so Matt McCall brings them down, down back down pit road you have to start at the back anyway give them a splash of fuel with 62 to go we expect everyone to be able to make it but it's going to be right on their number so. In case you do the math wrong or just don't exactly know what kind of mileage you're going to get. A couple little strategy calls. We saw the race off pit road. Kevin Harvick took two tires. Uh, it was a good move for the two or for the four car. He moved all the way up and now the he was 19th, right? He came off pit road and he's, now he's going to restart inside the top 10. We'll see how those two tires hold up. You see on the left side, everybody that took four versus him. And for the 18, a lot was made about pit crew swap between yeah. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch, well, the old Denny Hammond crew on the 18, they wanted to prove a point. They were about a half a second faster than the 11 crew, did a nice job for Kyle Busch. Yeah, there's some people working to say, hey, let's not move us around so much. But it ended up happening for the better. We'll see if it works out for Denny Hamlin. Field approaching the Geico restart zone as we get back underway. 61 laps to go in stage one. Logano on the outside, William Byron on the inside. They stay door to door through one and two. Logano almost cleared. Logano didn't quite do it. William Byron, I meant to say. William on the bottom, still trying to make that work. Logano trying to stay in the gas. Look at Logano's car bottoming out through those bumps. Still wait for the tire pressure to build up. So maybe just a little bit more, even though these are low profile tires. Yeah, that's going to help a little bit and just pace. I mean, right there, they're probably wide open on brand new tires with clean air. And that's the move right there, Steve. When the 24 is clear, his spotter's going to let him know that information. He needs to drive up the racetrack, get in front of the other car so he can take away that downforce. We're going to see that time and time again. Four championships represented right there on your screen. Two for the 18, one for the five, and one for the nine as those three fighting four positions around the racetrack. Chase had a little track position for this restart, but I don't think he has quite the pace they, they want to have in that car. Looking at the first run there before the caution to drop him back just a little bit, and he continues to do so here. The car just doesn't seem quite comfortable as he'd like. Definitely looking out in front and seeing his teammate car do something better. Uh, it can be frustrating. And the touch base real quick on that two-tire call for Kevin Harvick. He's, uh, what, just a couple spots behind the nine. He had a pretty good restart, got a little bit cleaner air, but now we'll see if those two tires are good enough to hold off the cars behind them, go on board. Look at the work Kevin Harvick's doing behind the wheel. Steve, every crew chief. Up and down pit roads watching this four car right now to see how these two tires are going to work. You are absolutely right, Jeff, because, you know, I'll admit with, the, with all the information, I just would have never thought about two tires. I love this move by Kevin Hart. We've seen his whole career. He takes his right hand off, sets it on his leg down the straightaway. It, it, I don't know if it's a conscious thing or a subconscious thing he does. Uh, yeah, he used to hand. put it on the shifter. Yeah. Now he puts it on his leg. Side by side here as we see the eight move right on by Chase Elliott. And so Tyler Reddick taking a spot away. Whoa, and he goes down. The 18 of Kyle Busch is into the wall. It was the eight of Reddick that was going down to avoid it. 
Here I am. But Kyle Busch running fourth gets into the wall coming out of turn four. It's killed, right? I can't see those. I mean, left rear, yeah. It's the tires down, but I don't know if it got into the tire or not. I can't tell. He's got his window net down. Kim. Yeah, it looks pretty bad from here. It fails all and smashed in. Kyle Busch came on the radio right before you guys heard him, and he showed his displeasure with this car, and it was actually free that first run. And I checked in with the team after the stop to see if they made changes, and they did not. So that car free to begin with, no changes. And then you see what that freeness did to Kyle Busch and his chances here today. So 18's going to take the pit road to see if it can be repaired. Let's take a look, guys. Already sideways right there. Really, really hard impact into the wall with the left rear. And you see everybody coming off. The 12 of Blaney, my goodness, he hopes that thing stays kind of in the middle. One thing we noticed with the car was the left rear tire flat. I don't know if that happened before or during the spin, but. I had the same question, Junior. Would be, yeah, I mean, we usually don't, when we're having tire issues, it's usually low air pressure. It happens late in the run, lap 40 or so, lap 50, but haven't had these type of issues early in the run, so. I don't know really exactly how this happened. We'll Oops. love to get a better look to be able to see if the bump or anything happened earlier in the corner. That means done, right, Steve? Yeah, basically brought it to pit road, or I thought he was coming to pit road, but once he goes to the garage because of an accident, that will retire this 18 from the race. And this postseason, really this whole season, contract discussions, that was answered. Then he ends up in the playoffs. A couple down, engines kinda. eliminate the 18 from the playoffs. And now a wreck in Texas. So where were they? Just snapped on him there in the juice. I think they're talking about the left rear tire. I don't know if we have a look of it earlier, but I don't know if the left rear being flat is the cause or the effect of this situation. Uh, you were talking about it, Steve. It's, you know, the frustration coming from Kyle Busch. This is a guy that expects to contend for championships, not to make the next, this round with a chance to win a championship and then have the pit crew swap, break two motors in the, la in the last round and then wreck early in this. There's nothing that Kyle Busch can be happy about in regard to all that right now. With this caution, I believe the 45 of Bubba Wallace is going to get the free pass. But remember, three Toyota issues already. Bubba Wallace had the steering issue. We saw Martin Truex Jr. spin. And then this, Kyle Busch into the wall in turn four and out of the race. Our on USA is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Toyota, let's go places. And by Northern Tool and Equipment. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. NASCAR Cup Series playoffs from Texas, the Auto Trader Auto Echo Park Automotive 500. Marty. Chase Elliott's in six right now, Rick, but had his hands full on that last restart, just like Kyle Busch, who was right around him. Listen to what Chase had to say after Kyle Busch's wreck. The back of the car is so damn sketchy, two, three, and four. I mean, I, I mean, exactly what happened to the 18 is why I had to bail off the top. Not alone, the 11s complain about the bumps down here pretty bad also. To Eddie DeHaan's point, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch's teammate, said, man, the bumps are just so sketchy through there, Jeff. 141 track temperature right now, Jeff. So are the drivers kind of managing these runs maybe and just backing it down a little bit just to keep their car under them? Well, Marty, I don't know that it's a lot different than every other race where the track temp's 140. You know, you're going to have cars that are slipping and sliding. And then when you're doing that and you hit the bumps, that makes the car very difficult to drive. If it was... 70 degrees here today, no YB complaining about the bumps. The bumps, or you hit those bumps when you're already having a handling issue, and that magnifies it, Kim. Yeah, we saw Austin Cindric, a playoff contender, one of the few cars to come down during that caution, and Austin was reporting a really bad vibration. The team said everything was tight. Austin said it was not impacting the balance as much as it did in Nashville. It says the car was doing funky things, so just as insurance, brought him down, changed four tires. So... It's easy to say back it down and survive, Rick, and tell the guy in front of you goes fast. You know, right, this is the we talk about a 500 mile test. That's really the, the, the truth, right? As a crew chief, I'm trying to give my driver information to understand, you know, where we stack up. Am I looking for you to be 10% more conservative or not? But we definitely need to try to finish to score points. Byron on the inside, Logano on the outside once again for the restart. Now, 51 laps remaining. 
51 until we get to the end of stage one. Christopher Bell making it three wide into one. Harvick in the middle. See, Bell made it work. That's something you're going to see more and more of, Jeff, because I believe restarts are a rare opportunity to pass a car. So everybody's starting to understand how, more, how difficult it is to get around each other and taking advantage of that opportunity on restarts, putting guys in bad situations, going three wide. We saw it yesterday in the Xfinity race a lot. We'll see it today. Busher trying to get by. See Bell now. Oh, and sliding across the grass. The 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. brings the caution out. Two more. Okay, here we go. All right. We're all good here. That was through the quad oval here at Texas. Oh, racetrack slick today, guys. A lot of action. You said it, Junior. Pushing hard on restarts. Trying to make lap time. Trying to get the track position. It's right here, three wide. Just some contact with Ty Dillon right there. Ty comes up the racetrack. 47 comes down the racetrack. I'd say that we're fortunate that there weren't more cars involved in that wreck. Everyone going through the pictures thinking the same thing as you. It's kind of, I mean, I know the front stretch here could be a little awkward, yeah. but I don't think Ty thought he was out there, to be honest with you. Okay. Didn't get, maybe get the information. Just chattered the right rear tire. Uh, looks like exactly what happened to the 19. Like you can see is chatter marks where he got loose and that's what mine did so he's talking about maybe an, a moment that he had in turn three and four before this guys that got him up the racetrack and three wide and so he's being passed by those cars on the inside and ty maybe thought at that point he's clear judging by the speed that he was going by the 47. so three cautions already with still 49 to go in stage one this one brought out by the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now those drivers that came in under that first caution, Steve, there was about 63 to 64 laps with all these caution laps. Help them on that fuel to make it to the end of the stage? Yeah, I don't believe fuel to make it to the end of the stage is, is the issue. And as much as you want to come down and make adjustments, I don't think you can afford to just keep throwing sets of tires on it. You know, we talked about eight for 500 miles. So now with our third caution, the first caution, everybody put some tires on. Heck, Harvick only took two at that point. Uh, and now, even with all of these yellows, back half of the field, you could talk about coming in and make adjustments, but I just don't think you're going to have enough tires to continue to put them on. Kim. And Kyle Busch has been released from the infill care center. A lot of drivers complaining of loose conditions. Your incident, what happened? I uh, just was getting a little closer to the 11 and knew if I tracked him and followed him in the lower groove that I would lose ground. So I went to the high groove where I was making time and the spray and the sticky stuff. and. It's not so sticky, apparently, sometimes. So, um, crashed, just um, trying to go, you know, trying to race, but um, banana peels out there, too many too many conditions that you've got to be around and or go around or figure out and be smarter about. I guess I wasn't very smart. This continues a string of bad luck for you and this team. What needs to happen to flip the script? <laughs> 2023. Already looking ahead to next year it's his third dnf in the last four races but his first dnf here at texas so a difficult ending for the 18 team and kyle bush out front still byron and logano we'll see how they restart when we come back as the 47 slides through the grass Elevate your performance in the totally reimagined 2023 Toyota Sequoia. It's ready to take on any adventure from the campground to the racetrack. Visit NASCAR.com slash Toyota Playoffs to enter for your chance to win one. Parker. Well, Rick, we talk about how hot it is on track for these drivers, 140 degree track temps, but how about the pit crews who have to sit here in these Nomex fire suits ready at a moment's notice to jump over the wall of a car has a tire issue, it comes down pit road for a green flag stop. So how do they stay cool? They sit there with these fans blowing on them as you see Joey Logano's crew right here getting some cooling refreshment from those fans right now, but still hot and they have to stay in those suits this whole time. Steve, you've been a crew member. That's a really tough thing to do and stay mentally in it. It is. It's the toughest thing, right? We're expecting to see seven or eight pit stops. So, I mean, look, 97 degrees, trying to stay in the shade, stay in the cool, stay hydrated. Hottest Texas race ever. As we get ready for the restart, again, William Byron on the inside, Logano on the outside. 
Pagano with a really good launch right here. A nose ahead of William Byron. So much for that. William Byron taking control. Here comes the 11, Denny Hamlin now challenging for that second spot. Right up against the left rear quarter panel of Logano, that side drafting. Will it work for him through three and four? Logano's going to try to hang on this outside if he can. Not able to do it. Now the five of Larson down there on the inside. Not able to pull alongside the 22 of Logano. They single file off into turn one. Christopher Bell in the 20 on the inside of the five nine of Chase Elliott. Oh, Larson had a little, little issue down there trying to follow the 22. Has to get out of the gas. Loses a lot of momentum. Trying to do a little blocking. Trying to, trying to survive here. Not lose more positions. Reddick went around. Now his teammate Chase Elliott tries to pass. Won't even be able to make that happen. Man, it's got to be so frustrating for these guys. The dirty air is really affecting these cars. You see them having to try to go in different lanes. And you got a guess getting into the corner. Where's the guy in front of you going to go? You got to anticipate that move before you can make your move. See the five of Larson went to the bottom. Didn't know where Reddick was going. Reddick goes down to the bottom. Larson loses a couple car lengths. Reddick now to the inside of Logano. Logano going the wrong direction now as he's fallen all the way back to fourth after restarting on the front row. Hard to make this pass on the inside, Rick. Side draft a little bit down the back straight away. Try to slingshot off into the corner. It's going to clear this 22 right here. Looks like those guys are struggling in that higher line, especially on the, on the newer tire. I think as we age this tire, get further into the run, maybe they will gravitate back to the top like we saw in run number one. Here comes Larson trying to do the same move. Gets to the inside of the 22 of Logano. And Larson trying to take that fourth spot away. Parker. As we see Joe Logano start to drop back here on this short run. You saw how good he was on the first long run. He actually took the lead on that run. So Paul Wolf made an air pressure adjustment in these cars. We talk about how finicky they are, how much they're on edge. He made a small air pressure adjustment to the right rear. It bottomed out on the last restart and has just not been able to fire off. They may have to go back on that adjustment, Marty. Boy, Parker, this has been a chaotic race, and there's only 65 laps in the books. Chase Elliott seems like he's been parked in the sixth spot for about 40 laps here, and now he's talking about maybe smoke in the car? Listen. Smoke, go away, still there? No, it's like really intermittent. Like every now and again, I'll just stare you know, kind of out of the corner of my eye, I'll see it's like a little bit of haze being sucked out the, right by the window now. But I can't see anything, I don't really smell anything weird. Huh, smoke, Steve. How about that intermittent smoke for Chase Elliott? Alan Gustafson, the 19, don't look panicked at all, but would you be worried by that radio transmission? Well, in normal years, I would say, oh, it's no big deal. Maybe a little bit of, you know, rubber on the exhaust or something. But this year, rubber on the exhaust has turned into some pretty big fires in these cars. There's been some rule changes, and they seem to have been okay. We'll just have to keep an eye on it to see if it turns into a bigger issue. But, yeah, anytime the driver has an odd smell or sees smoke, you just have to ask yourself where it is coming from and will it get worse. Blaney and Bowman fighting for the 11th spot. Bowman has it. Blaney to the inside trying to take it away as we ride along on the Xfinity Mobile onboard camera of Bowman right there on the front bumper. Oh, man. You can, and that right there, Rick, shows you how frustrated Ryan Blaney is that he made that pass, almost had it made. Loses that momentum down the back straightaway. He drives right across the back bumper of Bowman. We saw him get really frustrated in the All-Star race with a couple drivers trying to make passes, feeling like that they were taking advantage of his line, taking his air away. Right behind these two is the 43. I mean, this is a car that spun out in practice. Because of that, didn't have the best qualifying effort, but now he's up 14 positions on the day, just having a nice recovery up to 13th. We talk about how difficult it is to pass. Well, Eric Jones, efficient. Efficient on the racetrack, efficient on pit road, and here's Larson, puts some pressure on Logano. Logano not dropping back far, but not quite the speed he had earlier. We've seen that a little bit with this team. They've been a little inconsistent throughout the races. Still sitting here running four, so not in bad shape, but... They're looking to make a little better change this next stop. See, Larson's able to run that bottom, but this is where it gets really tough to make this pass. 
Larson's got to try to find a way to carry more speed into one on the bottom. See that little side draft right in the middle of the front straightaway? Now he drives up and takes the line away. Forces the 22 to have to come off the throttle just a little bit there. So he won't be able to allow to create another run. This presents an opportunity for his teammate, Chase Elliott. A little bit of momentum on that 22. In the top 10 right now, only two non-playoff drivers. Reddick running third and Christopher Busher in the seventh, or excuse me, the ninth position right now in that 17. And Larson again just took the spot away from Logano Kim. And while lots of drivers are complaining about the balance of their race cars, Kyle has been relatively quiet on the radio the side of a happy driver. Really the only information he's offered his team during this second stage is that it's pretty neutral in the resin and really not bad out of it either. He has maneuverability. It's just a matter of putting himself in position. Kyle Larson currently running in the fourth position. One car that's running some really, really good laps right now in third place, Tyler Reddick. Closing in on this 11 car. Tyler was just the second fastest lap on the racetrack that last time by. Ryan Mullaney with the quickest, but look at this line he's running. He is the one that's gonna get up in that higher groove first. He is the one that's gonna go up there and take that risk and really push, and he runs it better than anybody. Where a lot of guys might make time up there, he's gonna be blazing quick every time he goes up the racetrack and runs that higher line. How can he be faster than other drivers, Junior? It's that dirt track experience. I think that him, Larson, some of those guys that know how to run a cushion on a dirt track, they've developed the ability and understand the throttle and everything that you're trying to do. When you run the high side, you're basically trying to make the next straightaway longer. You're trying to be in the gas sooner. You're trying to carry more speed right here. And this speed carries all the way down the front straightaway against the car that runs the bottom. And so they learn those things, I believe, running the dirt tracks on that higher line. Marty, it looks like the 11 might be the next car that Tyler Reddick's going to try to battle for position with. Then he's going to try to hold him off for the second position there. We have talked about how the heat, Rick, is wreaking havoc on everyone. The pit crew members down here, certainly the drivers behind the wheel as well. Even the spotters on the, sp on the uh, spotter stand have lost timing and scoring. Denny's lost timing and scoring inside the car. He intermittently has electrical issues inside the car as well with all this heat going on. But losing that timing and scoring on your dash, Jeff, you didn't have it for years, but do drivers rely on it now? Well, especially on a day like today, Marty, where it's all about being precise. We keep talking about how slick this racetrack is. That means Denny Hamlin's got to be very precise in his actions. And a tenth of a second of loss of speed or gain of speed is a lot. So to be able to compare one lap to the next, you need that taut timing to know if you did it well that lap. The thing did you that you tried, did it work? Did it not work? Not having that time and scoring can be a disadvantage. And look right here, Denny sees the eight car catching. Denny says, you know what, I'm gonna try that line. Now the eight car has to move. He has to go run somewhere else or try to run the bottom if it's possible. And Denny looks out the window and says, all right, I lost ground to Denny running the bottom. Now I'm gonna go back to the top. Even if I don't catch him, I'm at least gonna run the better lap up here. Look how much he gains. When, the, when Denny runs the bottom in three and four, look how much more speed the eight car has down this front straightaway. Literally cut that distance in half, just half a lap. But down here in one and two, with them both running the same line, he is not able to make any advantage because of the arrow disadvantage to the eight car. That's why you have to have so much trust in your spotters telling you what the line should be. Oh boy. Caution has come out again, and the 20 slow on the track. Yeah, flat right rear tire on the 20. I don't see any damage. Bring it to me now. Bring it to me now. Bring it to me now. 41 oh, now 41. is also around. This is pretty late, though. That's contact so. with the right front on the 41, guys. Now the Toyota having an issue. Flat right rear on the 20, and then the 41 sliding down the racetrack, I believe, are separate incidents. Flat right yep. rear, but some damage front and back on the 41. A lot going on, Rick. Welcome to the playoffs. Nothing <laughs> seems to be calm. Bring it right now because you see the right rear tire gone, the rim in the air, which basically means you're dragging on other stuff that's very important. That diffuser, that underbody, the aerodynamics at Texas, vital for performance. The team's going to go to work, get rid of the flat tire, put some fresh tires on it. The penalty's just tail end of the longest line for pitting too soon, so that's understanding the penalty. Let's see what happened to the 41, guys. I'm really curious as to how this car crashes into the wall. But off into turn one, flat right front tire. There's a tire failure into the corner. And I believe the yellow was out. 
because when he went by the yellow light into yeah. turn one, I thought I saw it flashing, Junior. Wow. I, yeah, I thought I thought it was flashing as well. And this was because of the caution, or I think it's the caution possible. was up for this one. Hey, it's possible that maybe there's some debris from the 20 car that he may have run over. We won't speculate that both tires just failed because of low air or what have you, but well, that's far through a caution. Yeah. Well, to your like point, for, Junior, uh, they were both going into turn one, right, Jeff? So the yeah. 20 gets a flat going into one for whatever reason. Then under yellow, the 41's tire goes down, so it could absolutely be a piece of debris down there, Dale. Yeah, there'd been no reason to throw a caution just for a tire down on Bell's car, so maybe NASCAR saw some debris. Did you feel yourself run anything over? No, I did not. He was hoping, he was hoping he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kim. Yeah, you just heard Christopher say he doesn't think he ran over anything, but when I talked to crew chief Adam Stevens this morning, tire failures is something they had highlighted on their list of concerns after what they saw in the all-star race. And he said, granted, this is a different tire, but we really didn't do any long runs during practice, so we don't know what these tires are going to do over long green flag runs, which is what we've seen here today. I'll, uh, the, the tires this year, even not having the car to worry about, they're giving me a headache because there are tracks, Dale and Jeff, that we've had this in-depth conversation about how worried we are about tires. Pocono comes to mind. No issues. And then coming back, I'm like, well, they had issues here, but, you know, tires changed, and we haven't seen it. And now we're seeing flats. Last week at Bristol, you know, I'm having a hard time putting my finger on what tracks we should worry about, what tracks we shouldn't. So for that reason, I guess I'm going to be worried to every track we go to that oh that you can abuse them. Dan. I want to say that it's two weeks in a row that's been a big break for Bell. Two flat tires, two cautions. It saved this race team a lot of issues. He stays on the lead lap with everything that's went on in this pit cycle. And I think we're going to have a split decision here. I don't know where it will come, but somebody in this field is going to decide this is where we're going to come get some tires. 26 to go in the stage. Try to do something to gain some track position and make some very important adjustments. Yeah, it was Blaney here came to pit road from the 11th spot marty and you also saw kevin harvick coming behind him junior said a moment ago you can see how frustrated ryan blaney is you can hear it as well on the radio he said this thing is undrivable i am so loose parker name for chase briscoe just way too tight in his car also just complained that he cannot get clean air to the front he just can't get the thing to turn in traffic a big problem for him four tires for chase briscoe so again, the 12 was 11th when he came onto pit road. So split decision, as you mentioned, Steve. And the 41, tire going down, and up the racetrack he goes and into the wall. Last fall's number one show, La Brea returns, and the mystery goes even deeper. La Brea premieres Tuesday, 9, 8 central on NBC and streaming next day on Peacock. Tom Cruise stars in the biggest movie of the year. Watch Top Gun Maverick on digital now. I'll admit I've watched it three times already. Once on a plane, which is ironic, but then uh, I've watched it in the theater and I've also watched it at home. I got a rule. I don't watch movies that have planes potentially crashing while I'm on a plane. You don't watch movies hardly ever. Junior keeps telling you to watch all these uh, I'm not a movie big time guy. movies. My attention to uh, a race can keep it, but a movie, not a chance. Oh, <laughs> uh, Parker. Well, Rick, I watched Top Gun on a plane as well, yeah. so we got that going for us. But hey, speaking of Joe Legato in the 22 car, we talked about how they've made a small air pressure adjustment, and he fell back to the fifth position. Well, he came on the radio and said, I can't run the top, and Paul Wolf reminded him, I only took a half pound of air pressure out of the right rear. It's just those tiny adjustments that took that car from the lead to fifth, Kim. And on the Christopher Bell machine after that tire failure, a little more clarity. Christopher got on the radio and told his team, I felt it vibrate on the front stretch and then it blew out in the dog leg. So maybe an alarm going off for other teams if their driver's reporting a little vibration. All right, crew chief. Whatever you think is acceptable on tire pressure, I'd go about a half a pound higher than that. That's <laughs> usually uh, uh, the best case scenario. We'll see how Denny Hamlin does on the outside of row one against William Byron. Look at that one car down there making it three wide on Chase Elliott. Pagano on the outside. How's this gonna work out? Chastain being aggressive here on restarts. That's what you're gonna have to do. Still not sorted out down here in the turn three. 
Logano stays in the gas, as does the nine of Chase Elliott, and the one of Ross Chastain can't complete the pass. Larson looking to the inside of Reddick in the eight. Reddick was about the fastest car on the track before that yellow. Back to the top of the racetrack, see if he can find that pace again. Look at how William Byron just pulled away already from Denny Hamlin. Four tenths of a second to gap. What a turnaround William Byron has had since the start of the playoffs. The eight car back to the bottom of the racetrack. Not going to be able to pull up alongside Denny, but down, the, down this back straightaway, he's thinking, man, I want to stay close enough. If I can get just a little closer right there off of two, this move right here might work. Look how much speed he's going to carry around the top. Maybe be able to at least get to the outside or get a run down the front straightaway to pull low here and make a pass on the bottom of one and two. Here he goes. I don't think he makes the pass down here. That car's just Ooh. a little bit too quick. Yeah, a lot of moving around right there, Rick. He really had to catch that. Oh, the 24 oh. out of the gas. He was way out of the groove, had to get out of the gas. Denny Hamlin passes him. And that momentum that the 24 had built up, now he's fallen all the way back to third. And under fire for that position. Here comes Larson looking for third. But Reddick also on the move now, as he was trying to get by Hamlin earlier for that second spot. Now he's fighting for the lead up here. William Byron is probably just trying to get his heart rate back down. To be that slow, that far out of gas must have been a really scary moment for him. Back in turn one and two, the lap before. And a car with so much pace now is sitting in fourth place. And look at this eight car back trying to fight for the lead. He's got great momentum. He's going to be out of clear. Denny's going to slide up in front of him. Denny doesn't want him to let him do it. <laughs> Denny says not so fast there, Jim. Well, Denny, look at this five car. Yeah, so much momentum lost by the eight. Here comes Kyle Larson. Oh, Larson go to the top. I think Denny was actually probably, you know, prone to go to the bottom there. That's where he's been running. Larson sent Denny into the corner so fast, he's really uncomfortable in the throttle running the middle of the racetrack. That's going to give up the lead. What a series of events right there. Five car knife through there from third to first. Larson up front. Hamlin now under fire from the eight. Byron has dropped back to the fourth spot and running in that fifth position, Joey Logano. Yeah, Joey working on the outside of Chase here might have made, you know, Cycle might have helped this car. Look at this tight racing here. Battle for second. Still going on between these two guys. I think the eight car now is in the better groove, but actually misses the corner. That's a little sketchy for the eight car, Reddick track is just so slick junior when you try to step up your aggression just a little bit drive the car a little bit harder the track just doesn't let the car stick once again the momentum on the outside for Logano he's able to stay in front of Chase Elliott you see Eric Jones in the 43 on the bottom of the screen chasing after Suarez yes yeah, Suarez in 10th place right now and look at Cindric Cindric remember he pitted earlier had a Vibration pitted, put on four tires, did not pit that time, and now he's gotten himself all the way back up to 12. Playoff drivers with the yellow line under their name. Larson and Hamlin running one and two. Byron is fourth, Logano fifth, Elliott, Chastain, Bowman. All in the top eight. Suarez, as you mentioned, broken into the top ten. Looking off the Coca-Cola camera of Daniel Suarez back to Eric Jones. Parker. Well, guys, we saw William Byron there go from the lead to fall all the way back down to fourth place, down in turns one and two, had that little issue. As we look at the replay here, he's in the lead, goes that higher groove, and as he gets to the exit here of turn two, he's going to get real slow. Well, he came on the radio about three or four laps later, as you alluded to, Junior, he got his heart rate down a bit, I guess, and said, my bad, guys, I just got really loose, as you see in a couple cars. Remember, we saw Brad Keselowski do that earlier when he was leading, so some of these cars, even when they're the leaders, fighting handling conditions of getting loose out in the front. We like that. We love the we love the drivers to be challenged. And I think these high temperatures 
absolutely are, are tough on the drivers and the handling of the car. Did you just hear what Junior said? We love for the drivers to be challenged. Yeah. He I mean, says that as a broadcaster, right? I've been broadcasting for a few years. <laughs> Listen, in all seriousness, Rick, we would love to be out there when it's very slick and you're out of the gas and you got to drive the car because that's when you feel like you make a difference. That's when it feels like you and your team can beat everyone else. So drivers love it when the cars are hard to drive. Just heard Kevin Harvick shift there. Yeah, I think if he doesn't, it's going to be at the other end of the racetrack. Let's ride on board here for a half a lap or so at least and see in traffic if he goes down here and downshifts into turn one. This will be the end of the racetrack. It's a slower corner. There you go, downshift into fourth. Picks up the gas right away. Probably in the mid 8,000s, so you're gonna be looking for fifth gear, 82, 83, there you go, about 8,400, reaches down, puts it in high gear, runs high gear at this end. It's so much fun watching how different he drives both ends of the racetrack. You know, we talk about how slick it is. Well, the corner he's approaching now is the slickest. Listen, when he gets out of the gas, he's way out of the gas, still not back in it, still not back in it. Just now starting to go back to some throttle. Down in three, listen to how far he can drive down in the corner before he has to leave the gas. Oh, the 48 car is crashing into the wall. Bowman. Alex Arf. Bowman. And you see the right side damage for Bowman. Okay, bro, hang on a sec here. And it happens in three uh, and four. I can't drive the rest of it. On the razor's edge, these drivers and maybe just stepped over that edge for Alex Bowman. He was running in the eighth position. Come on, nobody else coming, coming to you guys. Watch right here. Car just comes around very fast. You have to imagine there had to have been a tire issue. Is the right rear tires down right there? But the way that car come around so quickly here, we'll ride home. I don't know if it's the bump. It looked like the bump upset the car. But man, turn three and four. One way or another, it's been difficult on these cars. I think the bumps are upsetting the cars and the guys are wrecking, but I also think the tire issues are being created through these bumps. Series of bumps through three and four. I couldn't tell if it was a tire or the spin first, even on the onboard. Kim. And just checked in with the team after listening to the radio, hearing no feedback from Alex in terms of tire or any issue with a tire losing it. So the team told me they just think that it got too loose, snapped out from under him. That's the report they're giving me currently on the 48. Well, as the repairs continue, remember 10 minutes, so with six minutes most of the year, they're allowed 10 minutes now in the damage vehicle policy to try to make repairs. They're gonna go under the hood and look at the suspension. Steve, in years past, there wouldn't even be a consideration looking at this car. It would have been destroyed. This car hits the wall and less gets damaged, although this may be the end of their day, it would have been no question with last year's car. Yeah, I mean, the durability is definitely there. You wonder if it's too durable, right? Should a guy be out of the race after contact like that? Now with seven to go, stage points or no stage points? The decision is here. Reddick turns left, brings Chase Elliott on pit road. A wave of cars stay out, and that's purely because we have seven laps until the points are paid at the end of stage one. Larson Hamlin stay out. Byron Logano, Chastain, Suarez, and Cindric all playoff drivers staying out. Marty. What a debate, Rick, for these playoff teams. Chase Elliott coming down pit road. Alan Gutson making that call saying, hey, we might be buried in traffic here, but I think this is the right call for late in the race. Tight race off pit road. Ryan Blaney saying the car still really struggling with the front tires chattering, Parker. And Chase Briscoe also coming down pit road was not able to make any headway in that last run. You see that adjustment in the left rear. They've been constantly adjusting on this race car, just trying to find any sort of speed and have not been able to even break into the top 20 yet. Five cautions already have come out here at Texas Motor Speedway. The first race of the round of 12. Playoff drivers involved. Alex Bowman backs it into the wall in turns three and four. In your app store, you can download and start a free trial. We're continuing on the 48 car of Alex Bowman. You see just under four and a half minutes as they're getting ready to close the hood. And Steve, that clock would reset if they hit the minimum speed for a lap here at Texas. Yeah, it's about a mid-32 second lap today. 
at speed is a 30 second lap so we're going to see what kind of repair they have uh the key is how they want to go out because if they go out here with three laps to go they're only going to get three consecutive laps to make it we'll see how nascar kind of officiates that i think they have more than enough time it's just a question of how are the repairs i mean we can't tell about the damage you see the damage from the hood so important too for alex bowman and this team in the playoffs marty Denny Hamlin, the debate on the radio was Chris Gabe, Hart called him to pit road, Hamlin vetoed. So, Steve, the playoff drivers who pitted, highest among them, Chase Elliott restarting 12th. Who made the right call, you think? I'm taking points. It's chaos. Flat tires, wrecks, this. Take them when you can get them. Stage points have made all the difference. We'll see if it works out for Larson and Hamlin. Larson Hamlin making up row one, fighting for potentially a stage win, but more importantly, stage points. Three wide here. Could be four wide. Oh, the one in the back of the 24 moves him up the racetrack. Chastain moving to the inside, getting aggressive once again. Logano running in that third spot, but still for the lead. Larson surging ahead now. Larson taking the lead away from Hamlin. Suarez side by side with his teammate back there for fourth, Rick. Logano a nose in front of the 11. Can Logano battle back after falling back the last restart? Can he fight back and get a second spot? Falls behind the 11 now as Suarez up to fourth. Ross Chastain, the two teammates from Trackhouse Racing, fighting for position. Rick, I've been wondering where Ross Chastain went. Well, he went to Texas, because he looks like the Ross Chastain from earlier in the year today, pushing the issue, making passes. He's on the block right now, trying to stop that 24 car from being able to get around him. One more time around for stage one. And once again, here comes the 11 as he fights. Oh. There's contact made. Five, seven. Hamlin. Into the back of the five, the five still straight. This is how important a stage win is. Larson out of four. Larson's gonna win stage one. A little contact right here, Denny's like, I didn't appreciate it. Just letting you know. He just came on the radio, Junior said, tell him I'm not lifting on the next one. Yeah, I think Denny, Denny probably earned that right right there. That was, I don't know how they didn't wreck off of turn two. Smoke coming off of both cars. Let's take a look at it. Denny up the racetrack into the back of the left rear. They both save it and carry on. Day two coming up after the break. The next generation of Wi-Fi is here with supercharged speeds faster than a gig. Unbeatable internet made to do anything so you can do anything. Xfinity, proud premier partner of NASCAR. All right, everybody, take a breath. That was the end of stage one. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good listen. Survival, 500 miles. <laughs> Alex, that was about 150 of them. Alex Bowman, eight laps down, uh, but he is still on the DVP, which means he has to somehow reset, so he can't really come to pit road. He only has a minute left on his clock as the cars are making their way onto pit road. Kim. And with the varying strategies, Crufty Cliff Daniels told Kyle, what are you going to need in traffic? Because that's where we're going to be. Kyle said, I just need to be a little bit freer. They made an air pressure adjustment for tires to no go fuel, Marty. Denny Hamlin's veto vote won them nine stage points. He said the migration much better. I need a little more oil than we did last time. And he reminded his pit crew that came over from Kyle Busch, Parker, it's all about track position. Help us out. No doubt. Joey Logano there went back on that adjustment that took him out of the racetrack for the 99 of Daniel Suarez. They wanted to just give him a little little bit more front grip and not tighten him up as he will come out last of the cars that came on pit road. See a six position change for Keselowski. A two tire stop is what we're seeing there of the cars that came to pit road.
Well, welcome back to Texas and what just felt like stage seven of the race today <laughs> because that first stage was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Look at these stage points. We heard Steve say those guys yesterday gained Steve's stage points, right. still had trouble at the end, but the stage points were the most important thing. Yeah, that was absolutely smart. I mean, yesterday we were watching it and Steve was like, no, let's you know come down pit road, go for the win. That was smart by Denny Hamlin. Kyle Larson obviously going to win the stage, but Denny was smart to stay out, get all the points you can get. We just finished the first stage and we're seeing massive attrition. So that does, that's not going away. So you want to put yourself in good position. But I like what I see from Ross Chastain. He's back yes. being aggressive, sticking his nose into the pile. That's not good for everyone else racing around him. But I like what I'm seeing from him. Hey, listen, it's hot and slick. We know Denny got some points, but we heard him say now we're going to be buried. Yeah. What's it look like in this stage, guys? And we've seen and heard you guys, you analysts all say, where has Ross Chastain been? After the wins that we saw at Coda, Talladega, it seemed almost like there was a different Ross. Well, I think we're seeing that Ross that started the season off, that got those two wins showing up here at Texas. He's been aggressive, and he's going to need to be aggressive where he's at now, starting outside the top 20. You see on the last pit, a variety of pit stops. A little bit of a head scratcher on the 47, though. He was last on pit road to lap 57. Field going through the Geico restart zone as we get underway with stage two. Again, some different faces and names up front here as it's three wide. Harrison Burton in the 21 falling back just a bit. For the lead up front, Stenhouse Jr. and Michael McDowell. Tyler Reddick already oh, up Michael, there on that high line. Michael, the four, all those guys, big moments right there, Rick. The four car way up the racetrack. Michael got really sideways. It's becoming a common theme in turn four, it seems like today. There's a there's a bump over the tunnel, then there's another bump about the three-quarter mark of the turn. Now the big dial went to the bottom of the racetrack, maybe not comfortable up there in that upper groove. Reddick's going to take advantage of McDowell going down low, and Reddick will take second away. And Harrison jumping to the outside, trying to pin McDowell on the bottom. You know, you think Reddick's going to run this 47 of Stenhouse down quickly. Just a little housekeeping on that 48. Multiple laps down, but did meet minimum speed, so no longer on the clock. But eight laps behind the leaders. Trying to score some points, stay out on the racetrack. Wondering if it'll be an attrition race like we saw a week ago at Bristol. Also, two cars that we've had issues. Truex in the top 10 after a spin. Christopher Bell as well in the top 10 after a flat right rear tire. Both those cars seemed uh, undamaged by those two issues and back up to speed here and competing. Yeah, pretty interesting. Um, the four of Harvick, he's all the way back to 15th. McDowell back to 6th. The 21 of Harrison, they're all on the same strategy on tires. The other guys seem to be having trouble. The 21 is working pretty well. Four cars going to go up the racetrack right here. See that loose moment right there, late in the corner? Saw that as well from the McDowell car just in front of him. And that little twitch right there was massive inside the car. He felt like he probably almost wrecked it. Marty, what you got on this eight? Well, a moment ago, challenging and stalking for the lead, but Tyler Reddick's going to come to pit road right here. Said he has a vibration. He rode it out for about half a lap, and he said, nope, this is not going to work. It's getting way worse. So Tyler Reddick, who worked and pitted early there, Steve, to get that track position now, going to give all of that up, and really no one's one lap down. That was Randall Burnett's point. Let's play it smart here. Yeah, without with, with really no one being one lap down, as you put him in the free pass position, we'll have to just see him, and the tires look okay, so... I'm going to assume it was a wheel, but we'll have to have Marty double check after they take the wheels. Oh, the jack brakes on the left side. That always makes it a little bit tougher, so a long stop on the eight. We mentioned at the beginning of the show these playoff drivers with such a difficult round, you don't want to start in a hole. You don't want to have an issue here at Texas and have to fight out of it when you go to Talladega or you go to the Roval to end this round. As we see now, the 21 stalking at 47. Right only one, one lap down. Just be smart. 
I think that's the radio to the eight. The concern for the eight is this 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was last on pit road at lap 57. Uh, so he's got to be within maybe 10 or 15 laps of coming to pit road, I would assume, for fuel. Maybe they can get a little bit bigger fuel tank than we think, Kim. Is there a strategy call here in the 47? Well, they're a non-playoff driver, so they can kind of throw strategy out the door and try different things. There were a couple of different things they wanted to accomplish being out front, seeing what that car would do in clean air, which they're seeing that right now. Two, the number of cautions we're seeing so far in this race, they thought they would likely get one early in stage two, be able to take advantage of that stop. In addition to the number of stops we've seen, also a cause for concern in terms of the tire allotment. So this gives them an additional set of tires depending on how the cautions fall. Yeah, so if they have to come to pit road, the, it wouldn't hurt as bad as if you can get to the stage end from that pit stop. I'm not sure if they could quite connect that. That would be very impressive, but I see what they're doing. Sometimes you just need some morale boost. Lead the lab, <laughs> 21 run a second. Like you can only ride around for so long, you know, mired back in the pack without proving to yourself you belong near the front. Now the, the challenge is to get around this 47. I think that all the cars right there in the, in the screen behind him are quicker, but how do they get around? The bottom of the racetrack here for the 21 of Harrison Burton. He's going to pull up alongside, possibly not quite able to get there. Great battles back here in the back of the pack here. Bell and Austin Dillon battling for eighth position. Looking at Bell's lap times after the flat right rear tires, still really good if compared to the rest of the field. Sinaus had trouble off turn two right there, got up the racetrack. That allowed the 21 to close in on him. Harrison that time trying to the outside. Chase Elliott looking at it, looking for that clean air on the bottom. Stenhouse, base, Stenhouse is basically looking at his mirror and driving wherever the 21 goes. You can see it getting into turn three. He was waiting on the 21 to figure out what he was going to do into the corner. Those two go high. Chase Elliott stays low. But guys, this proves what tires are worth or perhaps what they're not worth. I mean, the 47 has the oldest tires in the field and he is controlling the race. You know, being able to between the dirty air and using that mirror as you just talked about, he's able to hold these guys off. Oh, oh he had a big issue right there. Almost hit the wall off of turn four, had to lift off the throttle. That loss of momentum is going to give the lead to Harrison Burton. And now the nine of Chase Elliott dives to the bottom of the racetrack. Chase is going to almost clear the 47 right here. Spotter clears him up the racetrack into second place. Harrison Burton out in front of the field at Texas Motor Speedway. Now Chase Elliott trying that lower line. Jeff, remind me, where did your first Cup Series win come from? Yeah, that's a good point, Rick. That was here, but it's a long way to go. So we're gonna, <laughs> I think the guy sitting next to me, he might have had a ex uh, similar experience. He also has a, a first win that came at this racetrack as well, as we see Eric Jones running that lower line and gets by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. also. Yeah, those old tires now as he's starting to feel the effects of the dirty air of those cars in front of him, it's going to be harder and harder to maintain his track position. Parker, what have you got on Harrison? Well, guys, the team just told Harrison as he took the lead there, hey, it's just like all those Xfinity races you won. Focus forward and drive away. But what a great job by this young rookie driver to be the leader of all these cars that pitted at lap 99. And for this team, they really struggle with a tight condition in practice. They told me, you know, when we look at today, days like today, we just want to methodically improve that race car through the race and maybe use some other strategies to get that track position and put him up front so he can experience that clean air and the difference for, that the race car will drive when you get that Cleaner, and I think this is just tremendous experience and great execution by this rookie driver and Harrison Burton, Marty. So nice to see Harrison Burton and the Wood Brothers up front here at Texas. Chase Elliott right behind them. So, Steve, here was that fork in the road we talked about. Chase Elliott, Alan Gustin pitted before the end of stage one, and this is all the track position they gained. Denny Hamlin stayed out, got those nine stage points, but he's back in 17th. Restarted 23rd, went back to almost 30th, and now he's worked his way back to 17th. So who had the right strategy? There's still a long way to go in the race. Well, with that, with 208 laps to go, while the nine's feeling good at this point, I do like those stage points that Larson, Hamlin, Logano, Suarez, Chastain, even William Byron, all playoff guys scored points. So now kind of regardless of what happens in the rest of this race, they can't lose those points. They can't take them back away. Gap staying about the same three to four car links between Harrison Burton and Chase Elliott. 
Other playoff drivers that are inside the top 10. Christopher Bell, Ryan Blaney running 7th and 8th, and Larson in the 10th position. But it's Eric Jones, Martin Trex Jr., Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Bubba Wallace, all inside the top 10 non-playoff drivers, as well as Noah Gregson, who won this race yesterday in the Xfinity Series. But it's Harrison Burton out front of Texas. For the first time, NASCAR fans can view every lap of NASCAR Cup Series races from inside the cockpit of any car they choose. Live in-car camera streams for the entire field are available for free as part of NASCAR Drive. Visit nascar.com slash drive, or you can download the NASCAR mobile app. I want to take a look at the Toyota driver update as we see Martin Truex Jr., Pretty incredible what he's been able to do after backing that car into the wall. Any other year, that'd be the end of the race. Not a car driving back up into the top five. Interesting how drivers that have had issues today have made their way up into the top ten. You got the 19, he spun, he's running fourth. The 47 spun, he's running fifth. Steering issue for the 45, he's sixth. And the 20 had a flat tire, he's now running seventh. It's a little bit slow. Oh, there we got another spin. Another one. Overturn. Yeah. Just mentioned a flat tire in the right rear down for Christopher Bell. We backed it in. Same exact area of the racetrack as the 48. Possibly a different issue, though, because this car's had a flat right rear tire earlier today. So damage to the right front yeah right rear is down right rear. Yeah, right rear corner it's pushed forward i don't know about the left side it's coming to you at the line now let's take a look 30 green flag laps the bump doesn't that look like a bump to you not a right rear tire issue i don't know i couldn't when, <laughs> i'd like to get another shot and see that again we can see the right rear He's down right there, but it's made contact. But we'll get another shot of that. Stop it. Uh, so hard to tell. Yeah. But we know how loose some cars are. So right here, the bump comes up. Boom. The car looks like it's starting to go sideways right there. I think with the low profile tire, how twitchy and edgy these cars are, once it's going to break traction like that, it's really, really difficult for them to save it. Then he goes into an uncontrolled spin. And then Christopher Bell, playoff guy, gets a right front into the wall. Wonder how much damage is on that right front. Looks like the toe link might have been bit on the right rear from that contact as well. And you can see this car not really. Oh yeah. A lot of issues. Yeah, there's going to be some mechanical repairs needed for that one to continue. Yeah, what a crazy day, right, guys? I mean, 73 laps to go in this stage. Pits are open. Big break for the 47. Stayed out because of all of the cautions, and here he gets the caution he needs before he needed fuel, Kim. And let's watch the 43 stop of Eric Jones. Earlier in this race, he was just too tight. They made adjustments early. So far, he hasn't really said anything, just Fired off pretty good. Bottom just won't go. Four tires, Sunoco fuel, no major changes, Marty, for Eric Jones. The guys in the booth commented about Martin Truex Jr. and his rally. He said, we've gotten so much better, two turns, three and four, but we're still two, three through there. Chase Elliott said, we are really good. I just get so tight behind the 21, I can't make any progress, Parker. And a slow stop here for Harrison Burton, who led 16 laps. He didn't want any adjustments. They had an issue on the right rear, so he'll lose a host of positions from the lead. Russ Chastain. Two tire strategy gaining 15 spots and oh my fire right there on the 21 on pit road, right where they put fuel Drop in. Drop it down, roll forward. Drop it down, roll forward. Drop it down, roll. The wheel not on that left rear, but the fire. They had to move him out of the way. There's no luck on the left rear back end. What, what a smart call, Steve to have them just drop the car and get it out of the fire, then come back and fix this problem. Yeah, they had a little bit of a slow right rear, but it wouldn't have mattered because this issue on the left rear luckily didn't end up any more serious. That fire was very big. 
Steve, you saw the 21 was having an issue even when they first got onto pit road. Yeah, well, the right rear was slow. They had to jack the right rear back up and tighten the wheel. Uh, now they're going to see what kind of damage there was for the fire. Look at this fire right here. The tire changer is trying to get his job done. Uh, gosh. So, see, I think before the fire didn't come off, we'll have to see another replay, but looks like maybe some sparks between the gun and the lug nut. Rear tire doesn't get installed correctly. Jack gets dropped. So now, now the timing's off. Look at the fuel man. The car is full. You start to see a little bit of fuel on the ground. Pretty normal. Left rear tires come off. It's when he goes to put the left rear on, something sparks. And watch how quick this happens right here. You see him struggle. So something is struggling with the with the socket, and instantly sparks hit that puddle of fuel. A big fire on the left side, and then there's some damage to the wheel. This took quite a bit of time to resolve ended up costing the 21 car a lap but uh scary situation he pulls forward so they can put the fire out comes back and installs a left rear tire luckily it's only a lap for the 21 and we haven't heard of any injuries but a scary situation steve the guy goes back in when everything is on fire trying to get that wheel tight don't you want to be a picture member man as we get very, back underway very courageous guys aggressive restart here a lot of guys making it three wide Chastain on the outside. Elliott on the inside. Elliott, half a car length lead, and now the momentum coming back for Ross Chastain on the outside. Blaney and Truex, little contact down the back straightaway, side by side. Blaney's cleared them. Now Elliott has cleared Ross Chastain as well. Chase Elliott leading at Texas. We also found out a little information from that 20. We heard some communication that it, I think it's tires that are causing the 20, not the bump. They were asked if it's the same thing. Christopher said it was. So we'll have to see if it's something they were able to resolve the damage on that 20 pretty severe. Mary Jones to the inside of the one, trying to take the spot away from Chastain. Chastain fighting back on the outside. Sixty seven laps to go in stage two. Well, Blaney right there. Think of playing about his car. Well, I'm going to tell you, he trusted it right there. He drove it into one throttle up to get on the outside of Eric Jones. Tons of confidence in his car to make that kind of move. Bubba Wallace into the picture right there. In the 45 car. Closing in on Eric. Eric to the top of the racetrack. Bubba's going to try to offset just a little bit to the left, drive to the bottom of the corner. Eric way up the track, trying to get a huge run off of turn two. He does. He's got to close in on the back of this 12 car. 12 pulling away as he goes to the bottom of the racetrack with the momentum on Eric Jones' side. We'll see if he can fight back. Now the 45 of Wallace gets to his inside. And again, to catch you up on Bubba Wallace, why he's in the 45. That was Kurt Busch driving it to start the year. He got a win in it, got it into the playoffs, had an accident at Pocono. That has kept him out of the car. They made the move at 23-11 to put Bubba Wallace behind the wheel of the 45 because the owner's championship is still up for grabs for that team. They wanted the best person behind the wheel, and they felt that was Bubba Wallace. That's why he is behind the wheel of the 45 here at Texas. Party. When you see that win at Kansas for Bubba Wallace a few weeks ago, that advanced them in the owner's playoffs, as you mentioned, Rick, to the round of 12. Martin Truex Jr. trying to get by him right here. But what a rally for this 45 team. The steering issue very early in the race. They got their back on the lead lap. They got their lap back. And then since then, Bubba's been flying. So we've seen the speed out of the Toyotas before. Use a little pit strategy as well. Bubba Wallace now in the top five. To Toyota's fighting for position as Martin Trex Jr. looks to the inside. You're starting to see this 45 car Bubba Wallace on a consistent basis be one of the best Toyotas. That's, that's what you want to do. You want to be the guy that your manufacturer can lean on, can trust, to go out and make lap time. This 45 team, they've been able to do that recently. Look at Larson. Forward progress for these guys. Yeah, Larson trying to chase that three car up the racetrack in the tri-oval. 
to side draft and then make the pass down in turn one and two. This is another great battle developing right here between the 12 of Blaney as he closes in on the one of Chastain. Blaney's got a fast race car. You got to give these guys a lot of credit, Steve. They made the adjustments to make this car more comfortable. Rarely do you see that this day and age with the next gen car during the race. You know, these guys are getting better and better at trying to find what they need, and they need to with so much racing left to go in this race. Unfortunately for the 20 on the bottom of the screen, trying to make repairs, but I believe their damaged vehicle clock is running out. So the 20 of Christopher Bell, such a great got nine seconds, guys. first Just get it where round. We can load it. There you go. Just get it where we can load, load it. it. Such yeah. a great first round for Christopher Bell. Now has vanished. The second round has started off on the wrong foot. He's going to finish 34th on the day. Yeah, Christopher Bell came in four points above the cut line. And now Christopher Bell, after his issues, already 24 points below the cut line. And right now, that's Suarez, who's in that eighth spot. Party. Rick, remember how we talked about Ryan Blaney, very unhappy with his car? That is no longer the case. Jonathan Hassler, a couple of good adjustments. Blaney saying it's still chattering the tires in the middle of the corner. And Hassler told me earlier this morning, this is a racetrack where Blaney just has the feel, knows what he wants, and that's what they've given him here this afternoon in front of him. Ross Chastain, Steve, I would love to say it's quickly turning into a track position race. Chastain almost interrupted Phil Surgeon and saying, hey, I don't care about the handling. All I want is track position. They went with right side tires. Tires not going to be a huge deal here at Texas today. Well, I would love to say there's a magical adjustment to make your car handle, but the best thing is get towards the front of the field. Uh, it just gives you more options. It's also a little bit calmer. While you think the hardest racing would be for the lead, it seems like sometimes the hardest racing is back there in the middle of the pack. Everyone is frustrated. Everyone's patience are short. You mentioned it, Dale, about Bellini earlier, how frustrated he was when he couldn't make a pass. Right here in third, going for second, I think he's going to be a little more patient. Everything is right in front of him, uh, plus liking his car a whole lot better. Well, I don't know. This guy right here, he's a good friend of mine, but he, I think he's got the shortest fuse out there <laughs> in that 12 car. It doesn't take much to get him lit up. And I think sometimes that really works for him. And they're running down Chase. Chase ain't really going nowhere right out in front of these two guys as they try to battle for second. Once they sort this out, they're right there with the nine car. Looks like Chase, the last couple of laps, is struggling just a little bit with his car. All three were on pit road at lap 138. As a matter of fact, the entire top 19 or 20 came to pit road on lap 138. And the gap continues to close between the 12 and the 1. Bottom of the screen, you see Larson out in front of Bubba Wallace. Parker. Well, guys, we talk about the importance of track position in these races. I don't think there's any more visible example of that than that 22 car of Joe Logano. Remember, started on the front row, led 14 laps so far in this race, had a bit of an issue there where they made an adjustment and fell back on a restart. And through the cycles here and all the pit strategy, he now finds himself in 17th place and just unable to make much headway. They have speed in that race car. He feels like towards the, towards the long run, it sort of comes his way. But right now, just not able to make much headway and even losing position here to Austin. Cindric, his teammate. So we talk about that importance, but you see it here where you take a car that qualified on the front row, could lead laps, put it back outside the top 15, and right now he's falling back. Another thing we have going on is this pit stop and restart was right outside the fuel window. So I think some pit stops that look longer than others, perhaps, is how much fuel the crew chiefs wanted to put on board, and even the pace on the racetrack. There may be drivers that are trying to extend this fuel run. Look at Chase Elliott. He's kind of backing up to the one. Now, maybe it's mishandling. I don't know this, but it might be Chase and Allen trying to run these last 54 laps, or excuse me, I guess 52 laps of this stage. Uh, you know, to try to get all the way to the finish. 54 to go in this stage. They can run 65. This would be like a 69 lap run. So you got to find four laps somewhere, right? You got to find that six miles. I think it's possible to save that much fuel, but you're going to have to do it for the majority of the run. That may be what we're seeing on some of these cars. Yeah, when you look on the racetrack, opti optically, the whole field, the whole top 10 there is in the same corner. I think at this point in the run, we would see these cars are spread out a little bit more, but it looks like everybody's sort of trying to get some track position, but also trying to save a little fuel and trying to stretch this run like you say steve it's interesting to me because i thought for a minute there that chase might be struggling dropping back to the one car but now he's trying to control this distance between first and second chase elliott's out front on the hottest day 
that they have ever raced in the Cup Series in Texas. It got even hotter for the 21 team in that fire. Sunday Night Football on NBC and Peacock. Debo Samuel and the 49ers are going to visit Russell Wilson. The Broncos coverage begins with Football Night in America at 7 p.m. Eastern. And our own Dale Earnhardt Jr., a huge football fan. This was a big moment for him. Hall of Famers Daryl Green, Drew Pearson were hanging out in the infield. They're actually here uh, with the Uvalde families. But Jr. got an opportunity to hang out with Couple Hall of Famers, a Hall was, of Famer himself. What the heck, man? You yeah. didn't ask me to come over and say hi. Hey, I got a tip to meet him, <laughs> to meet him somewhere. So I, I've been wanting to tell Daryl Green for a long time how much uh, I admired him, his his work on and off the track for so many years. As a young fan of Washington, he was with my, one of my favorite players, but also somebody that impacted my life. So it was cool to be able to finally tell him that face to face today. Very cool for them to be here as well. And we see now things heating up for the 12 of Ryan Blaney. He's got Larson right there. But Blaney continuing to look strong. Chastain running up in that second spot. His top five, Eric Jones just behind these two. Blaney holding off Larson in that attempt. Still 44 laps to go here in stage two. Marty. Rick Ryan Blaney blackened, backing down just a little bit, sitting in third right now. But Jonathan Hassler told him a moment ago on the radio, we talked how tight everybody is on fuel, right? He said, I'm going to need more than what you're doing for me right now. So Blaney knows he's got to save more fuel to make it to the end. Look at Kyle Larson there, Rick. Almost lost it. How about that? Yeah, it has been a very difficult oh, race. Oh, we got a crash, Rick, in turn four. Another one in turn four. And so more issues this time. It's Cody Ware, the 51. Look out on pit road. And that is a very difficult situation as Cody Ware was not able to control that car. Thankfully, no one was over the wall or on the wall at the time as he was coming in. He almost impacted the end of pit wall with that opening to the garage area. Cody had a spin in practice this weekend. Was able to fix that car, start this race. You see Cody climbing out of the car now. That's a great sign. Yes. In front of that car is about as destroyed as I've seen any car this, this year. Maybe AMR safety crew right there attending to Cody. You could see the concern on the crew members that were right there looking into the car. He's had some hard impacts this year. And the front end of that car, so much damage. Junior, you saw it. But that car shortened up quite a bit. Our safety crew travels not only emergency personnel but also doctors that are the first ones to get to these drivers to ascertain what has happened and put a plan in place. A lot of training goes into that AM AMR team to understand exactly specifically what drivers need from medical care, what they're exposed to get to them as quickly as they can. More officials making their way over here to attend to Cody. Very scary crash. We've seen a few in turn four. This one carried all the way onto pit road. 
about a third of the way on the pit road and junior you mentioned there's an opening just behind the red truck and that car almost caught the edge of that wall it he, hit just past it yeah he impacts that wall rick only about four feet beyond that or past that opening you can see the mark on the wall right there where the impact was and so so lucky uh, that that was the case unfortunate for him to have another impact late in the crash but just terrifying how quickly that car was coming down toward pit road unable to slow it down officials continuing to attend to cody where he is out of the car behind the wall uh, we'll be right back And you're seeing the safety crew. They're going to put Cody Ware in the back of the ambulance. The protocol would be to take him to the infield care center unless they feel uh, that a local hospital would be better suitable for whatever Cody Ware would need at this moment. And so that crew continues to take care of Cody Ware. And we'll be back with more updates right after this. Cody Ware on his way to the infield care center. Want to take a look at what happened in turn four. See sideways, back of the car around like he's spinning out right here in this shot. And then, you know, don't know why he was sideways, having a mechanical issue, tired out, don't know. And then got turned to the right and head on into the wall. Carried a lot of speed onto pit road. And NASCAR has just told us that he is headed to the infield care center. So that's where the AMR safety crew is taking him. But that was the second contact there. The first contact, as you mentioned, uh, Jeff was in turn four. Uh, but then he came back on the pit road, impacted that inside pit wall. And then the car came to rest there in front of the 78 team. As the field continuing around and we get ready for the restart. So it's a tough decision right here. I believe all these cars can stretch this fuel tank now with the yellow all the way to the end of this stage. That would be a great strategy and probably get you the best finish in stage two. But with 161 laps to go in the race, if you kind of pit here, uh, you could probably do the whole thing on only two more stops. So the question is, how quickly do you start looking to the finish of the race instead of the finish of this stage? I think that's going to be the decision for these crew chiefs. You know, Chase Elliott, Chastain, Blaney, Larson, they have this all-important track position, and I'm sure if they stayed out, they could probably keep it through the end of the stage and score some more points. But if cars do come to pit road, as you see the crews all warming up and sitting in some 100-degree heat and getting stretched out, ready to go, time to jump into action. You know, the cars that pit here might kind of flip you. You might lose some strategy because you're going to need a lot of fuel at the end of this stage if you don't pit now. So it may be a split decision may be very popular. Let's see what everybody does. Chase Elliott's going to stay out, as will Ryan Blaney. But others, like Ross Chastain, Kyle Larson, they have made the left turn onto pit road. Kim. And it sounded like they used a code word on the five car of Kyle Larson. Grayson, it sounded like. We'll watch what they do. But Kyle said when he gets closer to the front, he gets just a little bit loose, so he could be snug up just a little bit. He's going to go in the jack. So that was a two-tire call, that code, Marty. Ross Chastain pits from the second position. Interesting, because Chase Elliott, as you saw, the leader, stayed out. Denny Hamlin also coming down pit road. Both crew chiefs, to your point, Steve, said if we pit here, we do not have to wait so long under the last end of the stage. So they really making this decision, Parker, based on two stops down the road. Ty Dillon, a fuel only stop, gained 10 spots. Larson and Chastain swapping positions on pit road. Up series playoffs on USA, the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500 and Kemp, five on pit road. Yeah, they came back down. They wanted to check the right front tire, unsure if maybe it was too loose, and then put on left side tires. They said there's nothing to lose. They were going to start from the back of the field anyway, just wanted to play it safe. Yeah, they only took two under the pit stop. So to Kim's point, once you have to tighten the right, put those fresh lefts on. But all, you know, we use track positions. That's the magic word. And that right there is exactly how you now have zero track position. So Larson won stage one and got the 10 points for winning stage one. But because of this move, may be giving up 
all of the opportunity of possibly getting up into the top 10 to get more stage points. Yeah, I mean, 34 laps to go, it, it would be an impressive run. I'm not going to rule anything out in this crazy race. And I doubt that the guy is behind the wheel of that five car, but the task just got more difficult because also he doesn't get the pass while we only have a couple lap cars. He has to start all the way at the back because he pitted a second time. Lights are off the pace car. Meaning we're going green. It is Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney making up row one. We look forward from Daniel Suarez is number 99. He's back in the third row as we get ready to get back underway with 33 laps to go in stage two. A little bit higher run there. 43 of Eric Jones running in the third spot. A little side drafting for the lead. Here comes Chase Elliott. Trying to make the pass on Ryan Blaney. Take it, take it, take it. Spotter Eddie DeHaan letting him know, take it. Now the top two pulling away just a bit as Eric Jones has settled into third. Suarez fighting for that fourth spot now with Bubba Wallace. Oh, almost, Contact. yeah. Boy, Suarez looked like he got a little bit loose there on the inside. Way up the racetrack is the 45 of Bubba Wallace. Has to get out of the gas. Suarez completes the pass. Here comes Suarez now, fighting for that third position. Suarez on the move. Likes this car right now. Able to make some good passes right there. Feeling good. Two tires for Suarez. Parker, what do you have on those guys? Well, Jeff, I just think this 99 team has masterfully played out this race of all these different strategies. He was able to get to fourth in stage one. And Travis Mack told me, you know, this team was a top 10 team in round 16, but they just made tons of mistakes. They didn't execute at a high level. And this race, to me, is the race they've been looking for. They've executed such a high level as we got the 45 out of the groove and slow, guys. Out of the groove and slow, and that pulls down off the pace into traffic. They're going by him on both sides. I couldn't tell if it's just a handling issue. I don't see a tire down, and he looks like he's working his way back up to speed. Let's take a look here in the middle of one and two, guys, what exactly happened. Goes off in the corner right there, right behind the one car, turns sideways. Great save, to be honest with you. Absolutely. That could have been the end of the day for the 45. So he'll wait for the heart rate to come down, give it a couple laps. Now he's very... Very bad arrow situation with this traffic, but we'll try to regroup, try not to lose too many positions here. Back there with Kyle Larson. We saw Larson just trying to get by him as Ross Chastain and Eric Jones continue to fight for real estate. Me and Jeff Burton picked track out to miss the first dip, to miss this round, to be cut. They're saying not so fast. Daniel ran fifth in the all-star race. Both of them showing a lot of speed here. I think that Ross might have actually won the all-star race had he not crashed out early. Oh, oh and into the nice. wall, the nine of Chase Elliott. Yeah. Out of yeah, turn right four, here. Chase Elliott into the wall. You see the fire coming out the right side. And he comes right back in yeah, front of the field. Fire on the right side here. Yeah, this thing is heavily damaged. Goodness. He came over the radio talking about a right rear tire issue. What to see. Climbs out of the race car, but the fire still burning on that right side. Leading the race, Chase Elliott into the wall out of turn four. And now out of the race. Coming in. He was the playoff leader.
Oh, looks like something broke. I mean, he had a moment where he got a little loose or either something on the car failed, like a right rear tire or something, but just a wiggle right there. There are a lot of, a lot of bumps over there in that corner, and it's just really hard for us to tell. 34 green flag laps on that set, right around the 30 to 40 lap window is when we are seeing some tires fail when these teams try to push it with settings and, and air pressures and so forth. Another big hit. And this one by Chase Elliott. Another playoff driver. There's the right Bell, rear. Alex yeah. Bowman, Chase Elliott. I was going to say, Steve, he said over the radio he thought the right rear tire, or, 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 mentioned the right rear tire or something, but when we see it, it looks like it's holding air. So Yeah, it's hard to tell down in the grass, to your point, but it's not off the wheel or anything like that. So I would agree with you, Junior. It looks like it's holding air in, in this location. Marty. And that's what I was looking at. He did indeed come on the radio and talk about the right rear, and it had been building. He had mentioned that a couple of times throughout the race today. So, Chase Elliott, think about their first round, Rick. I mean, Darlington, he got into the wall there. This is why you work so hard in the regular season. They stacked up all of those points. And here again, round 12, round of 12, first race, Chase Elliott's going to be out of it. To your point, Junior, you know, it's hard for us to analyze over those bumps exactly what's happening, but that is just how on edge these drivers are as well. I mean, you know, if they were locked down, we would say, well, absolutely something wrong with the car because we haven't seen a car wiggle, but it's been anything but that. We have seen so many great saves, just a handful of laps. It was Bubba Wallace into turn one. That was one of the best saves we've seen. Now it's the exit of turn four, and just the car goes up the track and real estate runs out of real estate and it's a big hit for this nine car remember he didn't score any stage points at all today so this car is going to finish 32nd uh, on the grid so when he falls to 32nd it's going to be a major major setback in the points i know he came in as the the leader with those 40 playoff points with the reset rick but this is not the start anyone's looking for and, and steve on countdown to green we all discussed about the next races talladega the Roval, two exceptionally difficult races to get through, not just run well, but to even get through. And now you got a guy like Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell, Bowen, all those guys, they now are challenged with those upcoming races, their playoffs and opportunity to win a championship have just got tougher. Yeah, and the other drivers that are still on the racetrack, you have to step on these guys while they're down. I mean, that's part of it, right? You can't you can't give points up now, right? Blaney, Suarez, Chastain running one, two, three, Byron in fifth, Cindric, a great recovery in ninth. You know, those playoff drivers, they want this to hurt for the nine. And the way that happens is the other playoff guys have to have great days. Well, one playoff driver who had a worse day is Christopher Bell. He finishes 34th in this race, and Kim's with him. And Christopher Bell out of the Enfield Care Center after what looked like two incidents with tires. What kind of feedback was the car giving you to indicate it was a tire failure? Uh, I would get a slight vibration just seconds before the tire went. Fortunately, the first time it happened on the straightaway, and I was able to get slowed down before turn one, and then the second one happened right in the middle of the corner. So um, very disappointing weekend, and you know, I was feeling optimistic whenever they dropped the green flag. Had a pretty poor Saturday, and then I uh, felt like we had a lot of speed in our Reem Camry to you know, make, a, make a day out of it, and uh, unfortunately, tires didn't work our way. After the day you've had looking at Talladega and then the Roval, how does this change your decisions you make at those racetracks? Yeah, I mean, we were hoping to get out of here with a, a, a good points day and uh, be able to ride around at Talladega and just survive the race and collect, you know, our, our small amount of points there. But now uh, it looks like we're going to go there and try and race. That's the position that drivers are going to be in now, knowing that the bottom four and points get eliminated after the Roval. We see Eric Jones coming to pit road and pit road was closed. So I'm not exactly sure why he was on pit road, but it had to be some sort of emergency service. He was running fourth and we saw him change tires, Kip. Absolutely emergency service towards the end of that run before the caution came out. Eric came on the radio and said this thing is so hard to drive. It is wandering all over the place. Wondered if it was a loose wheel, but he said could not even happen that late in a run. After the caution came out, he again reiterated it wants to wreck itself under caution. Something is broke. There's no way this thing is right. So we'll need to check in with the team to figure out if they were able to diagnose what the issue was. Such a great recovery. Remember, this is a team that spun out in practice, started near the back, had driven up into the top five, running fourth. So great update by Kim. We'll have to just see if 
they have found whatever the issue is and now we see a few cars also join on pit road but what a heavy Damage nine for Chase Elliott going behind the wall. Yeah, he could lose one more point, by the way. He's currently being scored 31st. Once Bowman goes by him, he's nine laps down. He will take that spot away, and Elliott will finish 32nd. But a hard, hard hit by the former champion, Chase Elliott. See this Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern on NASCAR Radio Channel 90. It's NBC Sports on Sirius XM. You get to hang out with Keith Pistone and the Bagman. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll probably talk a little Texas, but a lot of Vegas. A Vega. It's going to be fun next week. <laughs> Looking forward to that and take a look down at this mile and a half behemoth of Texas Motor Speedway aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. And the most recent out of this race, Chase Elliott standing by with Marty. Yeah, you had mentioned right before that chase the right rear, but was it the right rear tire or was it the bumps in three and four that maybe sent you around? Uh, no, the tire pulled apart is why I, why I crashed. Okay, because it looked like it was up in the in the replay to us, but so it was a tire. Yeah, something came apart. You know, I could hear it flapping in the right rear uh, in the fender well. So yeah, I don't I don't know, but uh, if it if it wasn't down, it was certainly coming apart. Okay. One, one of the two. So you guys have relied on points all year long, Chase. As it sits now, just plus six above the cut line. How do you now view Talladega and the Roval? Uh, well, it's not a not a great position to be in for sure, but you know it is what it is now. So we, uh, yeah, I hate it. You know, we're actually decent here for once, so that was that was nice while it lasted. But uh, yeah, we'll you know go to Talladega and, and uh, you know try to survive over there, try to get a win next week, and and uh, going down the road. As we come green, are you getting worried about tires for everybody else in the field, too? Uh, I just hope nobody gets hurt, but outside that, I really don't care. There you go. Chase Elliott, some firm words, but just now, plus six above the cut line as we go back green, Rick. Yeah, we see the racing continue. Great update by Chase. We were looking for a tire to be flat. If he heard it coming apart, then I have no doubt. Perhaps it's something on the tread, something we can't see as we see Truex go three wide on the 34 of McDowell and continue to push forward. And then you saw the car stop with all the fire. That was all just a result from the wreck. Big, heavy impact. Obviously, big damage in the right front, but glad to see Chase okay. There's Suarez fighting for the lead now with Ryan Blaney up front. Blaney down at the bottom of the racetrack. And Trackhouse Racing trying to flex their muscles here as they're in the top five. Chastain getting a push down the front straightaway. I think William Byron's a little frustrated with this one car. Up a little higher through one and two is Ross Chastain. Will that momentum carry him past the 99? He looks to the inside of Suarez. Yeah, I don't think Byron was intending to help, but it certainly gave him this opportunity to make the pass on his teammate. And a big run right now for Ross Chastain as he tries to reel in the 12. And we saw Suarez block the 24. Byron said he'd had enough of blocking today. Fights for that position, goes down into turn one and two and takes it away. Now Byron closing the gap on the one of Ross Chastain. He peeks to the inside. And that Brad Keselowski in that blue car. You see 24, he's cleared Chastain. Keselowski, remember he had to pit early in the race with the penalties, he fought himself back up. Oh, a little bit of contact. Reddick got into the right rear. Oh, no, way up the racetrack. Reddick catches it before he gets into the wall. I wondered if it cut the left front or something, but he keeps moving along. It has been crazy what we have seen out of these drivers today. Reddick, he's back up to speed as now we see Austin Sindrick. And Martin Truex Jr. side by side, maybe even trading a little paint here. Wow, Cindric not giving Martin a lot of room down there on the front straightaway. It's a battle for the lead, heating up. Blaney now has a mirror full of William Byron. Remember how fast this 24 car was at the start of the race. We lost him a little bit because of the track position, but he's gained it back. Got a spin on the front straightaway, Rick. 17 cars around. Chris Busher this time spins and the caution comes out. That's number 10. Can't believe he just spun across the grass and rejoined the racetrack perfectly straight and didn't collect anyone. Very fortunate running in the 10th position.
with 14 laps to go in stage two. And a lot of bumping and banging, no giving anymore. Everybody's taking. Gets loose right here on the outside of the 22 car, spins off a of turn four, down into the grass. The grass kind of saves the tires here a little bit. So he'd be able to get around the racetrack and change those tires without a lot of damage. It's just amazing how how on edge everybody is today. I mean, we just, what'd you say, Rick? Ten cautions? Ten cautions already. I mean, already. you know, it's a mile and a half racetrack, and it, you know, it acts like it's Martinsville or something. I mean, it's just crazy how hard it is for these guys to get their cars to make grip. Parker. And Jeff, to add on to that, that edginess, then you deal with dirty air, and that's act exactly what Chris Buescher said on the radio. He said just dirty air there, meaning you know, you don't know exactly how that car's going to react when you're in that air. And the other thing, too, is more cautions lengthen the time of this race. This is around the time when the drivers are starting to realize how uncomfortable it is, how hot it is in them cars, how long. They're going to look at the scoreboard and go, are you kidding me? We're only 198 laps into this thing? That's when the temperatures... Temperatures rising in the helmet as well. The temp those guys are going to start losing their cool, start getting impatient with each other. We ain't seen the last of the cautions, I don't believe. 137 laps still remaining from here in Texas. I wish you and I would have spoke more when we were racing. I would have stayed away from you. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> thankfully, the shadows cast across this front straightaway has put these fans in the shadows and cooled them down a little bit. But I know them drivers aren't comfortable. Quite a few cars on pit road now. Kim. And Kyle Larson didn't have any stage points to gain there, so Cliff Daniels brought him in. It's going to be uh, four tires should be the call. We'll see if they stick to that because they have taken two tires earlier. It is going to be four tires and fuel. Kyle, just a little bit free, Marty. Kim, we've talked about what a crazy day it's been. It's been an adventurous day for Tyler Reddick. 12 to go here in the stage. They did recover after that wheel they thought was loose. It was actually not loose, but he has not had a vibration issue since then. So pitting here, again, not in the playoffs. They can take a chance here. They'll stay out at the end of the stage. Remember, Rick, everybody just wanted to have a smooth day. And everything's been unpredictable. That's the craziness of the day. Ty Gibbs in the 23 coming off pit road. Again, the 17 was just in front of him, and the 17 was the reason for the caution after sliding out of turn four and through the grass. So now Ryan Blaney, who in the first stage didn't gain any playoff or stage points, up front looking to potentially win the stage, but he's got a very hungry William Byron right behind him. Byron was sixth in the first stage. Ten cautions, only have eight sets of tires. I mean, this is this is just makes what makes 500 mile racing so difficult. It's not just attrition, but you know, all your dis decisions kind of get magnified. You see the current points, right? Bowman and Bell, who are out of the race, down yeah, there. Chase Elliott only plus seven came in, all the way up at about you know he was 30 above the cut line, or even a little more than that. So this has been a big shift for really two Hendrick cars, 20 for sure, 14. Hasn't had any issues. He just has not had a great day. Currently running in the 24th position. And again, Blaney as the leader, as the top of the list. Today's race recap is built by Northern Tool and Equipment. Truex getting loose right here in the middle of three and four. Pounds the fence, but he's still running, guys, out there in the top ten. Kyle Busch gets loose, hits left side really hard. Ended his day. Christopher Bell, right rear tire flat. He would have another one. Right around the same time, the 41 of Cole Custer had a flat tire as well, hit the wall. Alex Bowman. Feel like a tire went down on that car. He makes contact with the wall. He's still riding around, multiple laps down. Mitch and Bell's second flat tire. Here's a look at that. Contact has damaged that car. He's out of the race. Fire on pit road. Sparks from the gun, causes the fire. Cody Ware with a massive impact to the turn four wall, head on in. Comes down pit road at a high rate of speed, makes contact with the inside wall. He gets out of the car, goes to the infield care center, and then Chase Elliott, most recent accident, thinks that he had a, a failure of some kind on that car. 
putting him into the fence as well. Here's the 48 of Alex Bowman. Eight laps down out there in 31st. And that repair work, Junior has gained him four points, right? I know he's eight laps down, but Bell, Ware, Elliott, Custer all had issues, and he's been able to pass them even at eight laps down. You mentioned the issues there, the playoff drivers uh, that have been involved in accidents, crashes. Marty. And just remember those four points Alex Bowman got, they're worth fighting for. There were a couple of drivers eliminated by single digits after the first round of the playoffs. Uh, Steve, I did check in with Alan Gustafson and did confirm it was a right rear tire for Chase Elliott that did have a failure, so it was the right rear indeed. Looked like it was up on our shot, but the right rear did fail on the nine car. Yeah, it's so unfortunate. Chase explained that in his interview. Dale mentioned it right during the wreck. It's just over the bumps, a lot going on. It's just hard for us to say, but it was very clear to Chase what he felt. Alan confirmed it. We appreciate the time from Alan. I know he's disappointed, but to stop and talk to you, Marty, to give the fans the information is good. Chase is a very popular driver. The fans want to know what happened, and it's unfortunate. He was having a good run. I mean, of all times, leading is when you never want that to happen. With those tire failures, think about this. The 12, the 3, and the 2, they all have 40 green flat laps in their tires, and 99 has 66 on his left side tires and 40 on the right. Back up through the gears they go. Now just nine laps remain in stage two. Oh, a lot of contact back there, guys, checking up the back half of the field here. Tyler Reddick had to get way out of the gas. He has fallen way back as the 12 of Blaney surges ahead. Byron running second. Then it's the one of Ross Chastain. And his teammate Daniel Suarez behind him, but maybe not for long as Austin Dillon, a big run in the three, had to get out of the gas. Yeah, Brad Keselowski takes a spot from McDowell. Now he's fighting to take another one away from Austin Dillon. Going to move that six car into fifth place. Set on the pole here, led early in the race, lost some track position, fighting back. RFK showing some strength. Look at this here. Yeah, I told you the tempers were going to flare. Byron has had enough of this one car. He's trying to side draft a little bit. Going to fight him hard on the outside here, Rick. Byron. Maybe tired of everyone taking positions away from him like we saw out of Ryan Blaney at the All-Star race. He got very frustrated. He backs off right there, tries to do a crossover move, drive back underneath him off the corner here. Can't quite make it happen. The one goes down to block the 24 and take his air away. Ross is really smart about where to go and how to use this air. You mentioned it, Keselowski. Look at this move. Past Suarez, and now he has the momentum as he tries to catch up to William Byron. It's good to see that bottom groove work that well for Brad Keselowski. A lot of guys running the top. He was able to wrap that white line and get that pass done. Under six laps remain in stage two. Blaney has a seven-tenth of a second lead. But will he be able to hang on to it? William Byron chasing after the one of Ross Chastain. Those two third and second. Let's listen in on the 24 radio. When he cleared himself off four, it should have on the left. Yeah, I was good thinking. Both of them jokers are, uh, but it's all good. You worked around them. <laughs> well, there you have it. And as you mentioned earlier, as you guys were saying, saying, 129 laps still to go in this race, and it's a hot one. And it's the small things, like he was talking about when he cleared himself off four. To your point, Junior, right, there are a thousand moments through the course of this race that you can't even show them all, but other drivers have an opinion, like right there. What does McDowell think about what Cindric's doing? Logano's trying to get some spots. So many things add up to this frustration. Yeah, McDowell's going to be angry because he's going to lose a position because the two slides up the track in front of him. Cindric thinks he's, he's, not, he's not even knowing that's going on behind him. He's just driving his race car. But he's ticked somebody off and didn't even know it. <laughs> Cindric Logano fighting for that seventh position. Cindric has it. Under three laps to go in stage two. Cindric running seventh will score some stage points if he can stay here for these final two and a quarter laps. He was able to grab some in stage one as well. Finished ninth there. Yeah, for a driver that came in 
you know, last on the grid, yeah. seven points down, every point. Well, just think about it right now. The nine car is three points to the good above the cut line. The two car is the one below the cut line at night, only three points back. So every every position he might be able to get right now, they're, you know, they might not be giving him that exact information, but he sure is racing like he knows it. He's, he got no stage points in round one. So starting out today, getting stage points potentially in both stages, a, a step forward for this two team. Teammate Joe Logano dives to the bottom of the racetrack right there to try to make a pass on the two car. Blaney lengthening his lead as he comes through three and four for the final time here in stage two. It'll be the fifth stage win at Texas, which is tied for the most for Ryan Blaney. Coming to a good track for him. Chastain, William Byron, Brad Keselowski swore as the top five, all gaining stage points, as is Dylan Sindrick, Logano, Martin Trex Jr., and Michael McDowell. Two stages complete from Texas, but it has been an eventful two stages. Hard into the wall, fire, and champions out of the race. We'll be back for the beginning of stage three. Elevate your taste buds with the new Sonic Chop House cheeseburger, decadently layered with crispy onion strings, a creamy chop house aioli over an all-beef patty, two slices of American cheese served on a toasted brioche bun. For a limited time at Sonic. You like a good aioli, don't you, Rick? I'm hungry. I know that I wasn't. It I wasn't so until you just good. described that. My goodness. I know there's a couple guys that are probably hungry down on the Peacock pit box. We're gonna we're gonna check them out here in just a little bit. And that's because I just watched Brad go down. I think he's going to Sonic. He climbed <laughs> off the box. <laughs> hey, as much as Nick ate last night, I can't imagine how he's hungry. <laughs> that's just not true. As the field now coming on to pit road, getting ready for pit stops before we start the third stage, Kim. And stage points were on the checklist for the two of Austin Cendrick. Stage points they got in both one and two, as you see him at the top left. They asked him, what do you need? He said, the car is good, man. Just give me fresh tires. They said again, are you sure you don't need anything to make a turn? He said, no, it is good. Four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel, Marty. So Ryan Blaney won the stage, but they're going to pay the price here by waiting on fuel. They have to put much more fuel in than everybody else. He said, I need a little bit more turn, but make a bigger adjustment than you think, because I think the track is changing. All right, you see Russ Chastain gone. They needed very little fuel. He said the car was great, Parker. And William Byron, similar position, just a little too tight there, scoring the second most stage points here today. And Larson grabbing 10 spots, not changing tires. Two tire stop for Logano, gains him six positions. All right, now. Those guys probably are still hungry, but let's go to the Peacock Pit Box with Brad and KP. Still starving, I will let's say eat. that. Let's eat. Uh, so, hey, Brad, yeah. if you're in the playoffs and you're a playoff driver, Ooh. you're going to have trouble today. Walk us yeah. through some of these issues. Oh, that man, these this guys has been shocking. Uh, the playoff guys have taken some dives today, and it started out immediately with Christopher Bell coming off. Everybody's having trouble, obviously, coming off turn four. But we see Christopher go up. He has a tire go down, gets into the fence. A little few laps later, look up Alex Bowman. Cruising along, tooling along, making good pace. All of a sudden, boom, he has a prior entire issue. Goes into the fence. We come back, Christopher Bell makes up some laps, makes up some spots. Again, into the fence. Those two guys have had a terrible day, even though Alex Bowman is still running. And then late, Chase Elliott, who's been terrible at Texas, leading the race, has a right rear tire issue. Tire goes down, he goes into the wall, car catches on fire, Chase is going home, and who knows what's coming next. Yeah, and we talk about this all the time. We talk about these guys having to execute, and here's the stage points wow. so far today. Look at Suarez, wow. look at Chastain. The big points winners this year, or, or today, are Trackhouse. Yeah, Trackhouse is doing a great job. Everybody said, where's Trackhouse at? Well, they're up front. They're doing a great job protecting, staying up front, track position, track position, track position. They have put themselves in a position that no matter what happens in this third stage, yes. they have gained some points. It's been a great day for Trackhouse. Let's see who in this last, in this last segment yeah. can survive it. Rick? Yeah, KP and Brad, I don't want to bring up any kind of negatives, but if I remember correctly, almost everyone to a man said that Trackhouse Racing might be a part of their first four out of this round. And we're seeing a lot of points gained by, and KP, can I take you off that list? 
Take me off that list, dude. I got them. <laughs> okay. I got them going. I got them going, baby. All right. So Remember, <laughs> they, Trackhouse Racing has shown up here at the beginning of the round of 12. Parker. Well, Rick, the 24 car, William Byron, has also showed up. But we've talked about how the heat can make you frustrated, how other people race you makes you frustrated. Well, how about when you're having radio issues? Well, that has been the case for William Byron throughout this race, so much so that they end up switching to Channel 2. That has not fixed it. His team let him know that multiple cars are having radio issues throughout the field. I'm hearing it across a couple cars here. They're just having a lot of interference. And for the 24, the situation is that he gets under green. The, the volume goes down for his radio, so he can't hear his spotter as well we'll see how this plays out kim as we get later in this race well a different set of issues for leader michael mcdowell he came on the radio and said i'm not sure what to do i no longer have fourth gear i just tried it it's gone crew chief blake harris told him you're gonna have to double shift from third to fifth so steve a little precarious situation for our leader well two things the double shift on the restart so basically he's going to say accelerate in second pull back into third and when you want to pull back into fourth pull back twice skip right over fourth that's going to hurt your acceleration. But remember earlier in the day, we were riding along with Kevin Harvick. We saw him using fourth gear in turns one and two. So I don't know how much McDowell has been using it. If he lost it, I would guess probably more than we think. So it might actually take a tool away from the driver that would help it probably drive a little better and accelerate off turn two. So let's watch this 34 on the restart, guys. It's going to be real interesting with no fourth gear. Yeah, that's my concern. Does Tyler Reddick know this? Does Tyler Reddick know that there's no fourth gear when McDowell takes off? That's information that the 34 spotter needs to be relaying to everyone. You don't want to give that information because you don't want to show weakness, but at the same time, you don't need to get wrecked on the front straightaway. Final stage of the race from Texas. This is the first race of the round of 12. Eric Jones, Michael McDowell making up row one. Riding along the Hunt Brothers Pizza on board with Kevin Harvick. He's up here in the third row, and we're seeing the lights come back on the pace car, meaning NASCAR has added a lap. They'll go around again. So McDowell not having fourth gear obviously will be an issue once he gets to turn one. Reddick behind him. Busher behind Reddick. As we look back on the field, it's become an overcast day here at Texas. Don't you dare say it, Rick. <laughs> I'll stop at overcast. We let Jeff Burton handle all the weather issues. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Let's listen in on Daniel Suarez's radio. I swear they're talking about rain right now. Yeah, I'm having a few drops, but nothing major. This is beautiful compared to Daytona. I didn't say it. I'm not even going to talk about it. Well, just add, just add it to the list of the day. <laughs> That's right. And you know, this what is, else? I mean, seriously, this is uh, this is something NASCAR has decided to do, and since Daytona is, hey, if there's weather in the immediate area, wait it out just a little bit. See where it's going. Don't wait until it starts raining on the track to throw the caution. So with weather immediately here, NASCAR is just holding it, waiting to see what it's going to do. Yeah, light's still on the pace car. You saw a little bit of moisture there on the camera for Daniel Suarez. So we're going to take a look at the radar, and there is just looks like just a light cloud cover that's passing over the area right now. Think about this, guys. Junior talked about the length of the race and how drivers start getting heated as the race goes on. We all, If you think about it like this, five races would have already been over by now that we run this year. This race has gone so long with so many issues with still 117 laps to go. This is turning into an endurance test for the drivers, for the equipment. They're going to have to use this caution to refocus, right? You can't take a break. You can't say, hey, we're riding around on a caution. You gotta keep your mind in this game. You gotta stay focused. They've been in these race cars for a long time with a long time left to go. That's the that's the hardest part though. When you when you're racing, you're busy. Your mind's busy. And when the caution comes out, you wonder about all kinds of things. And if it's really obvious that you're uncomfortable, that's the first thing that comes to your mind is I hate this. This is miserable. Uh, I'm hot. And I think to your point, Jeff, you got to remember, everyone else is too. 
right? There's a lot of guys out there that aren't comfortable and aren't going to do well with this kind of condition. And so, you know, try to, uh, these really good drivers, really great drivers use that to their advantage. They think, man, I'm, I'm tougher than they are. That's kind of what you have to remind yourself in these situations is, is you're not the only one out there feeling this way. And some of these, you know, some of these guys might end up, you know, not being mentally sharp at the very end of the race. Steve mentioned that at the very top of the show. This type of heat is going to take a toll on them, not so much physically, but really mentally from this moment on. See, Hamlin's got his hand out the window. He's just, just dumping air into that car. Although it's 95 degrees outside, it's a lot cooler than the air is inside of that car, Marty. That's a good point, Jeff. Denny Hamlin finished 11th in stage two. We talked about the pit crew swap, and they were one of those teams that was positioned, in essence, to do a short fill and gain a lot of track positions. But they had trouble on the left rear on the stop. Hamlin went from 11th all the way back to 26 to start stage three here. Long way to go, 116. But, Steve, you do not want a bad stop here in stage three in a playoff race. Well, the problem is, is now everyone has seen that, you know, used Goodyear tires can keep that track position. So everybody's going to be clamoring for it. And I think that's what the issue is. Not only is there only a short time, 116 laps left to go in the race, but everyone in front of this 11 knows that, you know, you're not going to come in, put four tires on and make some magic adjustment that's going to put your car in the front. You have to cycle it there with some great strategy calls. Pretty good now. I never would have thought we were going to get rain today. <laughs> that is like the last thing I expected. Let's listen to what Joe Logano's guys are talking about. Where's the rain coming from? Fairly, fairly raining. I believe they call it cumulus clouds. I was ready for that smart answer where they come from. I thought that after I said it. Coleman Presley providing com comedic relief today. Yep. And that's, you know, it's it's uh, things like that that can take the, <laughs> take the miserable conditions off the driver's mind. If you got a, a spotter or crew chief that it's, it's, can crack a joke or keep you kind of positive, maybe tell you that your favorite football team had a great day or whatever, right? Um, I was always, a, being a Washington fan, I said, tell me if they won. If they didn't, don't say anything. So they didn't talk much. <laughs> oh, wow. no, not in the Steve, not in the 90s. <laughs> Steve, on a serious note, <laughs> yeah. you know, with this race being so long, now the track changing is becoming even more of an issue. So if we keeps going longer and longer, the track temp's going to start coming down. And so guys that had good handling cars earlier may not have them anymore. So this race, this length of this race is going to change the way the crew chiefs and the drivers have to approach it. Yeah, you're absolutely going to have to stay ahead on your adjustments. Like turn one and two is almost, well, at least turn one and halfway through the middle of the corner, totally in the shade. Uh, when, when I look on top of the big screen on the back stretch, the, the wind is definitely picking up, looking at the flags. That's going to change how these cars are driving. There's some rain on the camera here. And while they're circling the track here, let's check in on pit road. Kim. And it's been a race of survival, and that's what the team of the 10 car and Eric Amarola told me this morning. They felt like it was going to be a race of attrition, and if they could just hang on, they could put themselves in condition. They started 25th and now have worked their way up to the seventh position, but they've been battling handling issues all day long. If they want to win, they're going to have to figure something else out. Too loose in the corners is what Eric is telling the team, Parker. He says it feels like he's on the edge of having a big moment like we've seen from other drivers. Well, Kim, i got to give the comeback of the race award to the 20th. 21 car of Harrison Burton. He led 15 laps early in the race through some pitch strategy, did an excellent job of putting himself in that position. But then they came down pit road, had a disastrous stop, even lit on fire, went a lap down, and now have come all the way back to be on the lead lap and currently are sitting in the third position. We'll be restarting the outside there, but an amazing comeback by this rookie driver and the 21 Wood Brothers team, Marty. That's a long list, Parker. I thought Kevin Harvick had a long list till I heard all of that. In fact, I just asked Rodney Childers, how would you describe your day? He said, that's a great question. He said, I honestly have no idea we've taken no tires at points we've taken right side tires at points four tires but here we are top five with a chance to win this race so harvick who is shifting earlier has had his hands full this afternoon they've had their hands full on pit road but here they are state three with maybe a chance to win at texas even though they've already been eliminated from the playoffs and this is crazy because the well, we just saw Marty standing on pit road and the sun was shining on him. We see a little bit of rain here, 
but it's raining pretty hard around this racetrack. You see a rainbow off in the background. They're going to bring the cars onto pit road. They yeah. think that right now it's safer to have them on pit road. They might even have to cover them. They had a shot of the cars rolling through one and two, and I couldn't believe how much it was raining from that perspective. And that, that's the, Junior, that's exactly what this new policy is. Like, try, if you got Renee, look at that. You didn't want drivers going down the front straightaway and then all of a sudden driving into this. So if rain's in the area, you see it moving this way, NASCAR has access to tons of radar, tons of weather services. They see it. Instead of waiting for the track to see some moisture first, slow it down, see what happens, take your time, and this is why, to prevent something like this from happening really, really quickly and cars getting damaged, cars being in wrecks. So the red flag has come out, and that gives us an opportunity, Steve, to talk a little bit about. We've heard drivers dealing with adjustments and major adjustments that have taken place. Talk us through what these drivers and crews and teams are able to do. Well, we, we heard from Jeff, who just said, you know, how are we going to keep up with our race car? Well, we, I've always heard about wedge adjustments, track bar. Well, there's no track bar in this car. Just two openings in the rear window for the red wedge wrench to go in. You're going to see it right here on the 22 of Joey Logano. they got to put the wedge wrench through the window, spin it around. So we've seen that for years. But what that is now accomplishing on the next-gen car is totally different than in years past. So let's take a look at our Toyota virtual car. No longer do we have this big spring with a separate shock. This next-gen car has a coilover. What does that mean? That means the spring is actually installed on the shock itself. That is what's being turned by the crew members. We go down into the suspension. We'll get a few items out of the way. You're going to see right there the, the shock and the spring, the blue part being the spring right there. Well, when this item is turned, it actually is a hydraulic adjustment. If you can believe it. it's going to put a little fluid through that blue hose, it's going to expand that area. So why right here? Watch right there again. That thing is going to shrink and contract with adjustments, preloading that spring. Just like in the old car, you put around a wedge in, it makes that area right there expand, loading that spring. You want to take around a wedge up. Maybe you just want to drop the back of the car, get that diffuser lower to the ground. You can take a round out of both rears, but it's a little different component here on the next-gen car than what we've been used to for many years. See the drivers out of the cars, and, and as hot as it is, I. Even if it was only for a minute, I, I would get out. I would. There was no way I would sit inside the car. Some of the worst conditions I ever remember were the red flags we'd have at Talladega. They'd park us on the back straightaway with just a few laps to go in similar conditions to this. So if, if only for just a minute to get out, get that helmet off, kind of catch your breath, get something to drink. This is where I'd be hiding the football score. <laughs> See, I hadn't given it to him yet, but this is where I'd be hiding it from. Yeah, you'd need to hide it today. <laughs> how about the uh, how about the 46-year-old Kevin Harvick saying, all right, yeah. all you young guys, go and hop out. I'm going to sit right here, show you guys. And some of that is exactly what that is. Like, he he, he probably wants to get out of there, but he's yeah. going to sit in there, and he's going to make he's gonna make a point. He's going to say, all right, I got you. I'm going to sit right here. You all, you all you guys get out. I'm going to sit in here and heat soak. And we go green, I'm going to take it to you. And that's... <laughs> There's, there's some games like that that happens. Harvick wants to show everybody he's tough, and he's making a point. My goodness. Piper inspired the red paint scheme, by the way, that we see with Kevin Harvick. Red won at Michigan. So I uh, got to ride with Dad. So they're going to go back with that. And while Kevin is sitting behind the wheel and staying in his car, they haven't put any of the car covers on yet. And some drivers are staying in. Some are out. Let's go down to Marty. He's got Ryan Blaney. Yeah, it is, in essence, uh, quit raining down here, Rick. But on a 95-degree day, Ryan Blaney's going to take this opportunity to hop out of the car. So if I'd have told you, I don't know, lap 50 or so, you'd win stage two, what would you have told me? I told you there's a chance. I mean, <laughs> what am I going to give up? So, uh, yeah, I mean, we worked on our car. It's just so hard to pass. I mean, you can see it out there. It's brutal, brutal to pass anybody, and um, you're just kind of stuck. I, I felt like our car was decent um we, we worked on it early it went very good start of the day but we worked on it i was pretty good and just can't pass nobody so did a good job of kind of getting um up towards the front and, and having everybody off uh on old tires for the stage win now we got to pick our way back through but um proud of the effort uh appreciate menards and ford for doing what they do it's uh mm -hmm. it's been a tough day that's for sure i think a lot of people have been in the same boat but um keep going we got over 100 laps left so it'll be good which is the crazy part. So with the heat the way it is and with the difficulty in passing, 1 to 10, how would you describe the, the challenge of the day behind the wheel? The heat actually hasn't been that bad. Um, 
Not really. Uh, it's actually been a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. Um, the passing side of it is uh, probably the more frustrating part. All right, so let's talk about moving forward here. You mentioned, and Jonathan Hasser told you before you came down pit road, we're going to pay the penalty here. How tough will it be to get back from, uh, I think you restart 21st. How tough will it be to get back to the front? Yeah, it'll be hard, um, you know, for sure. We've uh, you know, really worked really hard today to try to get our way to the front and, and use some pitch strategy to do that. Um, so it'll be tough, but it's all about restarts, you know, trying to take advantage of kind of people's mistakes on restarts and getting some spots here and there. So uh, that's that's the biggest thing. So hopefully we can get a couple of good restarts and keep moving forward. Is there concern having seen other drivers have tire issues today that that might be something you might have to deal with later? I won't think about that before we put it in my head. <laughs> hopefully it's all right. All right, Ryan Blaney winning stage two. He'll restart 21st once we get going back green, Parker. Well, Marty, the highest running playoff driver right now in this race as we sit here on a red flag uh, is Chase Briscoe. Now, that is not really how most of the day has gone. I think at most of the time around 25th, what are you fighting inside this car? Uh, everything. It's, uh, I mean, we've been too loose, then we tighten it up, and then we're way too tight. We're just such a, I mean, we're just teeter-tottering back and forth. So we, we really struggled at the all-star race with the same thing. Uh, you know, we would make a change, and then we were way, way too tight, and we'd make another change, and we'd be sideways. So down to the thread, we might go to the Home Depot over there, come, go get a kitchen <laughs> sink, throw it at this thing. But I will say that last run, that, whatever we had, we, we made a pretty big change, and it did get a lot better. So, yeah, we just have been really, really bad in dirty air, bad by ourselves. So, yeah, we, we definitely need some guys to keep eliminating themselves. But I do think this is the best our car's been. Now, we're nowhere near where we need to be still, but hopefully we'll be able to kind of maintain our track position here and see what we can do. So that's what we're trying to do. Well, guys, there's hope for the 14 yet. Ed Parker, there's also lightning in the area. It was within the eight mile mark with thunderheads and clouds like that. The rain, a little lightning. So we're on a 30 minute hold. We'll be right back to Texas. 90% of the parents out there, I don't think that they will have done what my father did. Tu que opinas para el domingo? Es una cara larga, eh? ¿Iba a cuántos horas son? Cuatro, millas. My father loves racing. He loves cars. Maybe he's not here every single day, but we track every single day. Yo que estamos aprendiendo también, güey. Es que estamos aprendiendo las diferencias entre el uno y yo. Yo tengo que estar dos por ciento más más suelto. Más suelto de atrás, más suelto de atrás. A mí me gusta más así. ¿Te gusta manejar más más la colita? Sí, no. ¿Sabes qué es la diferencia? Que mis manos son más lentas que las de él, güey. Hacen más. Él, él entra en la curva y él hace esto. Yo hago esto. Ah, ok. Entonces, eso él hace que la parte de atrás tenga que tenerla más segura, güey. Es un... Por eso es muy bueno que los, dos, que los dos equipos no solamente trabajen juntos, pero que también los pilotos entiendan y sepan cuál es el estilo de cada quien, güey. Porque una... una Una cosa es traba querer trabajar juntos y otra cosa es saber trabajar juntos. Sí. Es muy diferente, güey. A principio de año queríamos trabajar juntos, pero no sabíamos cómo, güey. Yo creo que este, este fin de semana podemos, podemos darles un susto. A little behind the scenes look there, race for the championship, uh, away from the track and what these drivers are doing. Right now we're on a red flag delay because of lightning in the area and so Steve here's a situation where we have seen about everything here at Texas we've had fires we've had tire failures we've had guys that just couldn't handle the bumps they're right on the edge Ryan Blaney just mentioned you know he wasn't sure what was going to happen on lap 50 but never count him out we can't count anybody out right now well we started the first round with the southern 500 one of the biggest challenges on on the entire series by trying to run 500 miles at Darlington a very historic racetrack that's fast and narrow, and we expect all kinds of trouble. Yeah. Then we start this round with a 500-mile test here at Texas Motor Speedway. And why we did expect, you know, some coming and going, some good adjustments, good pit stops, I don't think anybody could predict quite the variety we have seen here today. And some of the biggest names, right? We saw Chase Elliott now out of yeah. this race, Alex Bowman out of this race. Uh, and Christopher now, Bell, so Christopher much success. Bell, He's right. out. And now we've had this red flag. It's going to be interesting to see how this resets. Because it's one thing to talk with your driver over the radio about what he needs as the race goes. But now that you get out of that hot race car, you get a cold drink of water, you maybe go in the air conditioner in the team's holler and sit face-to-face -face with your crew chief, 
who makes that last adjustment or magic adjustment or magic pit call that could turn their entire day around. Uh, it's been a long day, but these guys are going to have to stay engaged. All right, let's bring the drivers in, Dale Jr. and Jeff. Okay, guys, so now with a little over 100 laps to go, as a driver, you've been out of your car. You haven't been happy with it. How do you get back in there and get back into that mental state of I got to go get every position? Well, you've had the opportunity to actually get in front of your crew chief. And when you're in the car trying to communicate, you're you're only kind of limited to what you can tell him on a straightaway or, or, or while you're racing. And to be able to actually stop a race and get out and, and sit down and say, hey, man, let's talk in depth about this and give me some things that might help me here. Uh, I think it really it kind of if you're if you're not feeling confident about your car or you kind of beat down over how things are going in the race, it really is a reset for that mentally to where you've actually given your crew chief all the information you can. He's got a really great opportunity to try to make that car better, and that's your hope, right? You're going to get back in there, and, man, all this, this breaks gave us a chance to get back in this thing. I mean, that's kind of where you go. I think the other opportunity is kind of the other way around. So now with all the data that the teams have, now a crew chief and a driver and the engineers can sit down and, okay, driver, this is where we're getting beaten. Like, let's really focus on this. Let's look at the data. Here's what other drivers are able to do. Why can't you do that? We're not telling you to do it. We want to know why you can't do it. This is a conversation that we don't get to have as much as we used to. We used to have three hours of practice, three different practices. You would sit down, have conversations. Don't have that anymore. 20 minutes of practice. Now you got this break. So you take the 20 minutes from yesterday, you take the laps from the day, and you just continually build on that using all the equipment, all the data that you have. Your teammates, this is what they're dealing with. This is how they're struggling. This is how they're doing well. And all that information can help move you forward, not only from making the car better, but also becoming a better driver. Want to take a look at the playoff standings as they run. Again, we've mentioned the issues for Bell, for Elliott, for Bowman, and what that has done. Brian Blaney right now uh, just above the cut line, as is Chase Briscoe. Yeah, it's a little bit of a pit cycle at the moment, though. We've had some guys that stayed out to score points in that stage that have now come to pit road. So this is going to continue to move around. Now, for Bowman, unfortunately, and for Bell, not so much, who are in the garage, even Chase Elliott. I hate to say this to the nine car, but plus 12 is actually some of the better position we have seen him since his accident because we have so many cars currently outside the top 10. Actually, no playoff cars currently inside the top right. 10. And uh, when we restart this race, I believe that's going to change. So 114 laps to go. Let's see how we got to where we are now. And again, it started very early for Martin Shrex Jr. around in turn four. That seemed to be a common area here for issues today. Yeah, hard to believe that 19 has continued. It continued successfully in the 18 of Kyle Busch. Not the same fortune. He goes all the way around. Heavy damage to the left rear. That's put the 18 out of the race. Christopher Bell would have a couple problems with tires. This is the first trouble off into turn one. Right rear flat. He's able to get to pit road, repair that car, get back to racing. Alex Bowman through the bumps, tire down. He makes contact. He's eight laps down after this contact, trying to gain as many points as he can. The 20, another tire. Around he goes. This time. Heavy, heavy contact both to the right rear and the right front. And then we saw a major situation on pit road. Luckily, wasn't more serious, but a big fire in the left rear of the 21 of Harrison Burton. Spark off the socket and then a big impact for Cody Ware, guys. Yeah, Cody Ware hard into the outside wall and then hard back into the inside wall. Transport at the Infield Care Center waiting for an update from Cody and his condition. Chase Elliott in the lead has a tire issue on the right rear, sends his car into the wall. Come down to the infield here on fire. Frustrated end of the day for the 19. Most recently, the rain came and that brought them uh, to a slower pace, but then lightning has put them on pit road and under a red flag condition. Right now, the race leaders, Michael McDowell, uh, he had been running up in the top five early in this race. There's been 13 different drivers that have led this field through 23 lead changes, 11 cautions, and by the way, the record here at Texas is 13 with still 114 laps to go. That record is one that might get broken. Might? I'll take the over. <laughs> For sure. There's no way this race is just going to instantly run 114 com laps. I don't well, think. We saw 
Stage one, Larson win. Stage two, Blaney was able to get the win there. Chastain and Suarez gaining the most stage points today. And already in the 2022 season, a record tying season of 19 different winners. Guess what? Look who's in front right now. Michael McDowell. Holy cow. Austin Sindrick screamed those words on the radio after he won the Daytona 500. Holy cow. And started this NASCAR season on a special journey. 19 different winners this year ties the most all time in NASCAR history. Just a year ago, Kyle Larson dominated, winning 10 times and a championship to boot. But with the dawn of the next-gen car, the playing field has been undoubtedly level. Who could have imagined, in a season where the car number was moved forward, that the biggest number was that of winning? Six drivers have ended a winless streak of 40 or more races. Five drivers have won for the first time. Three straight playoff races have been won by non-playoff drivers. Two drivers have even won with the same car number. Let's go! Joey Logano recently said, what a crazy year. Yeah! There's no better way to describe this season, and we still have seven more races to go. Seven more to go, as you mentioned, Steve. Take a look at 19 and the number of winners that have been to victory lane in 2022. That's the magic number. It's happened before in 2001, back in 61. How about the infancy of NASCAR back in 58 and 56? That has happened, but the possibility still exists that a 20th winner could find victory lane, and it might happen right now. It could happen today with Michael McDowell, who's up front uh, under this rain delay. Well, I believe the possibility is there, not just because we have Talladega still to go, uh, but we have some really big names that have yet to win this year. Truex, Blaney, uh, you know, these guys could easily add their name to the list, and that would get us to 20. So, uh, you know, I thought we would never get to 16, and now we're at 19. So why why not? Let's go to 20, 21. Heck, 22 at this rate. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Junior? I agree with you, Steve. I think we might actually see more than 20. So you mentioned Blaney and Truex, and then you have Brad Kozlowski, and uh, that entire organization peaking at the right time. He led a lot of laps today and showed that they're absolutely capable of having the pace to win races. And so, and I, I don't see why Blaney and Trix don't get the win before the season's out. He showed that graphic of 1956. There were 56 races in that year. <laughs> so we're at 27 with the same number of winners. And, you know, this, this new car has completely changed this year. You could not predict what's going to happen. They're still learning it. Things are still catching teams off guard, catching drivers off guard. It has created an unbelievable amount of opportunities. Uh, it's also created an unbelievable amount of challenges, and that's that's when people find a way to rise above it and make stuff happen. And it's just it's been an incredible year. Some really really good racing on track. So far, the rain has stayed away from the racetrack, but we are under a lightning delay right now. So as soon as that passes, we hope to see cars back on track here at Texas. Night race here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Playoff driver issues already. Kyle Busch out of the race car, out of the race. He's going to be out of the playoffs. What a crash! Multiple cars. Chris Busher scores the upset. His second career win. Yeah! Yeah! Oh. That was the last race at Bristol, and we had just talked about 19 different winners. It was Chris Busher that was the 19th different winner. Right now under a red flag condition here for Lightning at Texas Motor Speedway. That gives us an opportunity to talk to Chris Busher. He's with Parker. Right, Rick, most recent winner in the Cup Series until we go through all today. But you, uh, today, it's been, I guess the best way to explain it, chaos. You've even spun out at one point, but now you're in fifth. Please take us through your day. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a roller coaster, no doubt about that. But our fast on Mustang has a lot of speed in it, so proud of everybody. Uh, it's good to have some good momentum after last week as well. And it's been uh, been exciting today. We've gone through uh, through some highs and some lows and um, lost it off the four there. Went through, through the infield. Um, Brought back some of those Charlotte memories. Fortunately, <laughs> here we just got grass. So uh, back in it now. We got a uh, got car, no damage. So 
Uh, we're sitting here in a, well, we feel like it's a good spot when we go back racing, which I'd imagine we got plenty of time in the day to get her fired back up, so we're ready to go. So we're seeing, you know, a lot of drivers talk about it being very edgy and sort of sketchy at times. I mean, take us through that. Like, how on edge are you every lap? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, whatever everybody else said, that that's it. It's, um, it is right on edge all the time from a balance standpoint and then from the, the resin or PJ1 uh, just knowing how high you can go and uh, and how much you can you can get into the grip. Um, it's come in a lot better than the Xfinity race, but I say we're still chasing it and trying to figure out um, if you can get a little higher yet. Um, hard to pass, just dirty air. We're really struggling with that, and once you lose that track position, it's really hard to make it back up any uh, any large amount of it. So, uh, guys are doing a good job from the top of the box, calling some good strategy here, and um, you know, with uh, see how the rest plays out. We got a hundred and 15 to go or so. Something so like that. Plenty of racing left yeah. yet. Uh, right about five hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't say that at this point. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, another you know, couple hours anyway. And we'll, uh, we'll wrap this thing up and figure out if we can't uh, get back to the lead. So we've seen some tire issues amongst the field. I mean, have you been worried at any point? Have you had any vibrations at, that you sort of thought was a tire issue? Yeah, we had uh, a little bit earlier on. We had, um, had, had some vibrations that were getting a lot worse. Uh, we were right behind the 48 when he blew his tire. And um, that was our bad run so I was definitely a little nervous at that point and um, I won't say fortunately there's a caution but a caution kind of let us regroup and come down pit road and look at it I don't think that we can see anything wrong um, you know we've had some uh, some of these races through the year where a lot of rubbers built up in the wheels and caused vibrations that gave you a false sense but it's not really the case here so definitely feel like um, there's a good chance something wasn't going to be with us a whole lot longer but we've been good since then and uh, I think that we're we're uh, to a point now where we feel like we're in good shape. I uh, had that set of tires uh, cut apart and, and looked at to make sure that everything was all right. And sounds like it is. So um, if it's not, they're not telling me. <laughs> so we'll go back out there and uh, give it 100%. And if they uh, they hold up, then they will. And, uh, and if not, then it'd be unfortunate. So is there any rhyme or reason for them, do you think? There's any high speeds through the corners, anything like that, running in the resin at all? Is there anything you think could be affecting them? Man, Parker, you're asking the wrong person These are the, to get these answers. So... I, I don't know. It is really fast. Uh, a lot of throttle time. Uh, the bump in uh, kind of the middle groove of four is definitely putting a lot of load in the car. I think that's where we've seen a couple cars spin that weren't tire issues. Uh, so yeah, there's some high loads and uh, a lot of cornering. There was a lot of heat uh, early on. I, I'd say it's going to cool off a good amount now and with the, the shade coming over the grandstands anyway. So uh, maybe it gets better, but I don't know what's causing it in the first place. So I, I really can't tell you if uh, it's just a lottery, but um, you know, we've been we've been in good shape uh, just like last week, and, and we're fortunate. And uh, you know, we're gonna uh, we'll act like there's not an issue for us, and, and keep on our game plan. Yeah, I want to step out bigger picture, go back to last week, and what that has done for this organization. Then you guys, you with Brad, win the poll this weekend. I mean, what's going on at RFK? It seems like it's firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I say it's been a good summer. It's been a good several months, and been really proud of everybody working really hard and. Um, We've been, been coming along. We've had some really solid runs. We've had some that we've missed just a little bit. And, um, you know, we're taking that and we're learning and uh, we're able to put it together and, and get that win at Bristol, which was amazing. Uh, to put Fast and All in victory lane for the first time on the Cup Series side that was, a, was a big, yeah, they've been in the sport a long time. So that was a long time coming. But, uh, and then Brad with the pole yesterday was, was awesome to see that speed carry right over to a completely different style of racetrack. And, uh, and we both, of course, have speed today. So uh, we're just trying to fight for that track position and get there. But, yeah, it's really neat that we have that um, that speed in, in us. Uh, we're getting the results out of it, and uh, we got some some more races to keep trying to upset these playoff wins and uh, and get after it. And tell me the feeling crossing the start finish line there, seeing the checkered flag. Your first win wasn't quite that way. How different was this one? Yeah, we got to do all the right things here. I uh, got to go under the start finish line. Got to do the uh, victory celebration on the front stretch with the team. We got to uh, go to the real victory lane. We didn't even get to go to the the neat victory lane at Pocono back in the day. So this one was uh, was really special. It meant a lot to uh, to me. Bristol was my favorite racetrack, so I uh, definitely wanted it there. A little bit worse than anywhere else, and. Um, uh, I guess on top of that, we went across the, the line. I'm like, nah, maybe maybe one more lap for safety. I was, I was like, I want to make sure we're good here. But uh, shut her dad out of the back. And um, just a, awesome for, for RFK to uh, to have two cars there that had speed, to pull the win off. Uh, just shows that they we're making great progress. Everybody's working really hard and getting us in the right direction. And uh, like I said, I, I, we've got more wins in us this year. And, and we're going to be, be ready to hit the ground running for 24 as well. So, um, yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I happy with where we're we're getting to and um you know we're ready to ready to keep after it and see what we can get tonight 
Well, guys, I think somebody summed that one up as a huge milestone win for Chris Buescher and RFK last week. And interesting, he mentioned being the spoiler uh, for the playoff drivers. And in that first round, there were really three spoilers for the drivers' championship because you had Eric Jones get a win. Then you had Bubba Wallace get a win, which was uh, good for the owners' championship, which the 45's running for. But then it was Chris Buescher who gets the win uh, last week. And so really kind of surprising, too. I think it surprised all of us how good RFK has come from – the start of the season until what we saw at Bristol and even the pole winning run for Brad Keselowski here yesterday. Yeah, every column in the stats department, they've continued to improve. You can see them right there, whether it's, uh, I mean, the win is great and that's the ultimate goal, but, but you know, it's everything else I think that's really showing what they have. The top fives are improving, the top tens are improving, the laps led, the speed, as Chris alluded to there, you know, Brad coming here and, and winning a pole. Um, and just when you, watch these races you look out the way you know they're a little bit more on the offensive they're not just cycling up there at certain styles of racetracks it's starting to become consistent that's really what we saw track house at the beginning of the year they were fast everywhere we went no matter what kind of style of track it was and and rfk we we heard from brad about just how much of a battle it is to try to turn that ship and and improve and it's been it was a huge commitment to go there and it's great to see him find success here with that pole and how much he's leaned on and believed in Chris Buescher. See the pace car in front of the field here with its lights on, and we're guessing that at some point in time here, that 30-minute clock for lightning will expire, and we'll see the teams coming back to uncover those cars. Stay with us. Under this break that has been very refreshing is we have got the news from NASCAR that Cody where the driver of the 51 has been treated and released from the infield care center. So I think everyone breathing a sigh of relief there as we'll take another look at what happened. Yeah, Cody Ware loose in the middle of the corner and not sure if he overcorrects the car or if the car had a mechanical issue, but it turns directly right at the outside wall and then into the inside wall. Almost, look how close it was to hit the blunt end of pit wall. They added that extra part of pit wall to keep a car from going through that hole and into a pit box. Remember the Mark Martin crash at Michigan years ago? They've since added that little bit of wall there. Fortunately, Cody didn't get into that, but only a few feet away from it. And again, great news. Uh, anytime you hear uh, they have been uh, checked and released from the infield care center, uh, that's a great thing. But obviously, uh, a very big hit there for Cody Ware. Michael McDowell, the driver that is currently out in front of this field, even though the cars are all covered still, uh, has to feel pretty good about the day that he has put together. And let's hear from him. He's with Parker. Right, Rick. He's the leader of the uh, weather's so bad we probably can't go back racing club. But <laughs> I want to talk about the situation you're in with the shifting or shifter. You said you don't have fourth gear right now? No, let's go back to the weather. There, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a 0% chance that we go back racing. I'm 100% confident of it. Uh, You're incredible weather, man. You're, yeah, you probably had the same accuracy. You know, 100% right all the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, we got a few issues on the Love Travel Stop Ford Mustang. Had good speed all day. You know, ran the top 10 both stages. Um, but that last restart going the fourth, I had a little bit of issue. Um, I think I have a plan here. Um, so hopefully we'll get through the gears and everything will be all right. But, um, yeah. We'll see what happens. Do you want to let the car behind you? Is that Tyler Reddick know what your plan would be in that sense? Well, I think we just did, so oh, okay. unfortunately we did. But, no, I think that, like I said, I tried it a few times. I'll be able to, to make it work. It won't be too bad. And But I don't think we're going back racing, Parker. <laughs> Zero percent chance. I can tell you really want that to happen. So let's talk about the racing, though. I mean, it's been described as edgy, sketchy. I mean, what have you been experiencing out there? Yeah, sketchy, edgy, out of control. Um, yeah, just it's fast and slick, and that, that resin's really tricky right now. You can get up in it, but if you just get a little bit too high, the car's out of control. And 
on the restarts it's a bit daunting and you know the cars are so close to the limit and bottoming out and it's a rough ride through there and so it's it's definitely one of the toughest Texas races I've been a part of and uh, traffic is tough to navigate and you know track position is really key and, and that's why we're up front right now you know a little bit off sequence um, hopefully that'll pay off here later on in the day when when we need it uh, be up there at the front when it counts how big a difference is it for some of the viewers out there that can't really understand when we talk about track position where you know running 15th the 20th versus being up there at the front and maybe the top five how different does it feel inside the car oh it's huge i mean it started that race you know we were able to get in the fourth and and stay there that that whole run until the caution came out and you know, unfortunately, we came off pit road 13th, and it was a completely different race car. And I was, you know, swatting flies back there just to stay 13th or 12th when I was able to run in the top five pretty easy early on. So um, track position is really important. And same thing, that's why we're off sequence a little bit, try to get some of that back later on. All right, they want me to go back to the booth. I'm going to let you lobby one more time. What, what's going on with the weather? Yeah, 0% chance we go back racing. Sorry, folks. Yeah. We might as well just take the 34 Lux Travel Stop the victory lane now. Let's do it. There you go, guys. Bart, well, that was pretty. I mean, that was a good delivery right there. <laughs> at least, at least he had a smile on his face when he was uh, saying that. We know that there are still 114 laps to go from here at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, again, the clouds passing through. The reason that the cars are covered up and we are under this red flag condition is because of lightning. Well, I, so I know he was, you know, a little tongue in cheek, saying, "Hey, let's go to Victory Lane." But that would be we talk about 20th winners. That's a car much like the 17 that has improved steadily all year long. Blake Harris gone on top of the pit box for Michael McDowell in that 34 car, and he's having a career year. He's showing up not just in the super speedways, not just in the road courses, but everywhere we go, this 34 car has gone from, you know, top 30s to top 25s, top 20s, top 15s, top 10s, and here they are leading here today. So it would perhaps weather would be his best case at the moment because he's sitting in the lead. But, you know, he has had the speed at times where he can go up and win a race. Let's go back down into the garage area and Marty. How about the pole sitter today? Brad Keselowski led 31 laps early on, had a tire issue. How would you describe the racing today, Brad? It's been a day. <laughs> We've had tire blowouts, wrecks, a uh, little bit of rain and now lightning, but uh, I think we're going to get back going green here a little bit. And uh, our car is really good. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of my team. We, we've made such huge strides here uh, over the last few uh, weeks and uh, really months. And now we're able to show we've got a really fast uh, Roush Performance Parts Ford. Got Kings Hawaiian with me here this weekend, which is great. We really want to get to Victor Lane. I feel like if we can go back green and we can survive, <laughs> we'll have a shot at that. So you mentioned survival. We heard how on the edge Michael McDowell was talking about it a moment ago. How concerning have the tire issues been today for everyone in the entire field? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's on everybody's mind. It, you know, it led 34 laps, but I, I have a feeling you're not going to want to be the one leading this race with 30 to 40 to go because it, it's whoever's running the fast laps is, is going to probably have the tire issues. So it's uh, it's really dicey out there, and you're just trying to be smart, Marty. Is it just a, a speed issue? Like what what's causing the issue, Brad? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's got a different opinion on it. I, I know my opinion, you know, is is that we can the, the team can make really aggressive calls on on how they set up the car, and they can put camber and, and take air out, which makes it really hard on the tire. But you know. Uh, we took all that out of our car. We're still right on the ragged edge. So uh, it, it just seems to be the faster the cars go, the, the, the harder it is. So big, uh, big challenge in front of us, especially with the, the track cooling off and the pace is about to go way up. So uh, this is going to be a, a hairy hundred or so laps when we get back going. I was going to ask you, is it even more concerning because you can feel it cooling down outside? So clearly the speeds will go up. So if it's all speed, does that make it even worse of an issue? Yeah, it, 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 the speed is part of it. The, the tires aren't falling off for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, Goodyear brought a really durable tire in the sense that it doesn't wear. But then uh, on top of that, you have the PJ1 on the racetrack, which, uh, you know, grips up. So when the tires do start to, to slightly fall off, you can just go up there and it, it, it saves the pace of the car. And that sustained load is just really tough. So uh, big challenge in front of all the drivers. Uh, like I said, going to be a hairy 120 laps to go. All right, so let's talk about where things are with Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. How odd was it for you last Saturday night? I mean, number one, you had a terrific car and, and had an issue there, but to to be in victory lane, but it not be your win. That's I know you've had that before with Brad Keselowski Racing. Yeah, it, it's still bizarre world uh, for sure. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to win races for the six car, but you know, I'm really proud of our our, our team and our company as a whole to, that we have enough. Uh, similarities between the two cars that you know when one has an issue another one can, can step right up behind it and, and have the result so 
Uh, really proud of Chris Busher and, and, and his work uh, to, to get us to victory lane with RFK, and uh, hopefully our turn here is later today. As we watch you leading at Bristol, you led earlier today and obviously started on the pole. Where would you say the progression is for RFK? Are you where you want to be? Are you still a little bit away from where you want to be? Well, we're not where we want to be in the sense that we're, we don't have both cars in the playoffs, but we're where we want to be in the sense that we, we're showing good speed and capability of winning races. So uh, that, that hasn't come easily. It's, it's been a lot of grinding. I want to thank all of our, our team and company back in uh, North Carolina that's been working their butts off to make that happen. And, and it's, uh, you know, there's great competition in this series. You know, you, know, you got Hendrick, you got Penske, Gibbs, Stuart Haas. I mean, these are great teams, mm -hmm. and, and they've got a lot of resources. And uh, we're not where we want to be compared to them yet, but we're, we're getting closer. So you know what it's like to be an owner. You owned a truck team for, for a long time and brought up a lot of very talented drivers who are now in the Cup Series. But is it a whole different level to now be in charge of all those people and have all those budgets on the Cup side? Yeah, the, the basics are the same. It's just you add another zero to all the expenses, <laughs> you know. Um, and you, know, you got to have great people. you got to surround them with the right resources and, and, and motivate them every step of the way and, and incentivize them. And so uh, that, that part is fun. The, the trying to find the money to pay for it all. Yeah. That part's really hard and not always as much fun. So, uh, you know, we're still working through all that and trying to find all the sponsors we need for next year. So hopefully these runs will help us get all those uh, resources we need to where we can continue to run up front and, and win races. It's been nice to see RFK up front. Kozlowski on the pole today led some laps, and we just heard from his driver, Chris Busher. So it's good to see these guys up front, isn't it? I'm telling you, it's, uh, I got to be – Honest, I, I did not think that they would get things going in the right direction this quickly. I thought this would be a much tougher task for, for Brad, and I thought he would suffer through more frustration and poor runs. But things are they, – they've got to be thrilled with where they are and so looking forward to this offseason to regroup and start next year with this type of pace. Yeah, building momentum is really important. Had they not been able to build the momentum and really see change – then it would have been a very difficult winter because what we're doing is not working. So what do we got to do different? And then you're guessing, like you're guessing, and then you go to the first race of the year and you're like, uh-oh, we guessed wrong. So that positive momentum for 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 Christopher Busher, I said Christopher Busher, Chris Busher, and as well as Brad is very important. Uh, just just getting them through the winter. All right, Rick, you owe me a hundred bucks. You, <laughs> what did I do? How do we, I owe you $100? Well, we bet that Jeff would never say Christopher Bush. <laughs> well, hey, you made the driver of the 17 change his name on the driver's side of door. He put Christopher on there. He has one win as Chris and one win as Christopher. <laughs> he has to win his second race as Christopher for it to become official. Well, you're seeing the crews and the teams head out to pit road. We have Danny Ramirez. Yes, that's right. Fanboy is here with us. We'll be on the other side of the break. A lot of activity taking place now on pit road. As you see the teams going to uncover the cars, that is a great sign. And you hear the crowd roaring as well under a red flag condition here as the rain came and then the lightning. And that gives us the opportunity to bring in Danny Ramirez. And those of up, you that man? have been able to enjoy Top Gun Maverick, you know him as Fanboy. And as a matter of fact, you got to throw the green flag to start this race. Is this the first NASCAR race you've been to? It's the first time that I've had that responsibility my whole life on anything. <laughs> I was told just all you have to do is wave it. Do not drop it. At that point, I had to do the double hand yep. because you just, you never know, like, as much as it was described, the power being so close to it felt like it was just going to rip my hand off. Yeah, you don't want to make the yeah. highlight reel by dropping oh, it. Oh, no, so at I'm, that point. Oh, my God. I would never hear the end door. of it. We've been yeah. watching you guys totally on board. So the Jets are one thing. What do you think about these race cars? Would you jump in one from what the crazy? Oh, easy. If you, guys, if you guys give me a seat in there, I'll jump in right now. Honestly, <laughs> I'll go in as a sub driver, and I'll be able to, I think I'll be able to do it. I hope. All right. I yeah. see 99 on the, the hat Danny there. Danny Suarez, have you, he's been kicking. He's, oh. Yeah, you're close. <laughs> he's okay. been kicking butt. He's yeah. been kicking butt. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so no. now doing the movie, did you ever feel the urge that you should get a pilot's license after doing Yeah, that? right now I'm in the middle of my pilot's training. So Are you really? Yeah, a couple of us. Glenn's got it. Tarzan's on his way to getting it. I know Jay, who's right there looking. You can't see him. He's just on the other side yeah, of the glass. He wanted to be looking at me like a proud father. <laughs> um, he's getting his license. I know Louis is over there. They crazy. Yeah, 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 we're all we're all on our way to get it. Tom ended up um, he heard us talking about it one day, and the next day we show up, and there is like a beautiful box, which is an iPad, 
and like a bow on it and it just basically was to start us up to getting our pilot's license was it difficult for you guys to wait two years because i know you had filmed this the, you finished the movie and then it didn't come out because yeah. i believe tom wanted it to be shown in theaters not to be delivered streaming or anything else was that difficult for you guys it was um it was tough to know that we were sitting on something that like we all knew how special it was mm -hmm. and we had uh, tom got us together to watch it during um the during the quarantine and we were just like oh my god this is gold and so now seeing the response that everyone's had and even coming back here and just seeing how like how many fanboys and fangirls and there are just are um, and now they're able to watch it from like the comfort of their own homes after having been able to watch it in theater so it is now available in at you could stream it right now yep. but you could also go watch it in the theater and continue to add to the amazing box office success that we just we all knew that it had that potential thrill seeker is that something that uh, you've done all your life oh not yes yes and no yes and no there's these uh <laughs> i always call it like discovery channel kind of threw me off for a bit as a kid you run into bushes not knowing the dangers yeah and then animal planet definitely shook me but then doing top gun <laughs> um i'm back to it you know there's there's like and even waving that flag just it reminded me there's just an addiction to speed and um i try to get as much as, as near to it as i can well we have a car with a couple seats so we'll have to get you back to ride with burton Dude, but now that might know, be like the, let me know that might be like the uh the, the what you learned about what's in the bushes because after you make a corner with jeff burton you might be oh man that roof. corner <laughs> right now you might be going <laughs> now yeah so. <laughs> Uh, I, I won't lie. I've been a little jealous. I mean, we have a great time over here covering yeah. the race, but you guys are over there having a great time watching the race. It's a big crowd. It's fun. Watching I hate we had this little delay, mm -hmm. but the energy next door is pretty uh, infectious. I want to come hang out with you. Dude, come kick it. Cr uh, crack a beer. We've been watching you, like, yeah. every now and then. I know you popped in your head and just gave us a good old pump up, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sounds um, like it's uh, you and the drivers, Rick. I think I'm it's time. Out with these guys. I think it's time for us to go over there. Maybe that would <laughs> Let's be go. The, During, I mean, we're, we're back on in a couple minutes. How long does it, yeah. is, is this next moment? Uh, well, we've got 114 laps mm -hmm. to go in the race, uh, and actually, I think they've already uncovered the cars, so we are ready Dude. to get back underway. So, Danny, <laughs> thank you for joining us over here. Fanboy, Absolutely. we've had a great time with you. Well, thank you, man. Appreciate right, you man. guys. Great time. Enjoy the rest of the race. Go Kane. Still a bunch to go. <laughs> <laughs> a Daniel Suarez fan, and we'll see how Daniel does toward the end of the race. We know that Danny Ramirez did a great job of throwing the green flag we're going to see that again here very shortly in Texas. Red flag about to be lifted as the crews are attending to the drivers. They have got strapped into the cars. And again, we mentioned earlier, uh, checked and released. Here is a release from uh, RWR, Rick Ware Racing. Cody Ware was involved in an accident on track earlier in today's race at Texas Motor Speedway, transported to the infield care center. He's been released from the infield care center and will return home post-race, thankful for the track safety crews, medical personnel, as well as the stringent safety measures NASCAR Institute. So that's a, a great message that has been delivered, Kim. That's right, and team manager Robbie Benton met with members of the media outside the care center to give us an update on Cody. They went through all of the typical protocol when you get into an incident on track. Cody cleared all that. They did keep him in there a little bit extra to do x-rays. He had a little discomfort in his left ankle, but nothing broken, nothing fractured, no concussion. So all good news there. Robbie said he has every reason to believe Cody will race next weekend at Talladega, but the off absolutely have to do a follow-up to see how that ankle pain is not likely get nascar's approval to go racing in talladega but the best news is robbie said cody was his normal self cody was cody wow that is great news we're going to show you once again what happened in turn four to cody yeah he's sideways right here and then over corrects into the wall such a hard impact and then the car comes down the racetrack on the pit road making contact with the pit wall here just missing that opening was probably absolutely the most frightening part for everybody down there but we saw him start to get out of the car and you can tell that he's very uncomfortable and uh now we see the drivers get ready to fire these things back up so see Kyle back Larson. to racing yeah he's got that clear shield on his helmet as late as it is it's quarter to seven here sunset is soon so if you did have a dark shield on your helmet now is the time to get it changed we're going to have a night race here, guys. We'll have to turn the lights on here soon. Man, you thought your car was free in the sun. Oof. That track cools. In, in my experience, the front gains grip. So, man, it's going to be, uh, I think they're going to turn even better. And that's a beautiful sound. As the engines have fired back up again. 
114 laps to go. The red flag will be lifted here shortly. And again, this is the first race of the round of 12. And so you look at as they run where the drivers are. Again, the bottom four in points will be eliminated after the Roval. And so right now it's Hamlin, Cindric, Bell, and Bowman that are below that line. We've already seen uh, as the flag changes to yellow, so the pit road uh, will be cleared, and we're seeing the cars roll off of that. But Briscoe, Blaney, Suarez, Elliott, you know, Chase Elliott is out of the race. This will be a pretty interesting restart right here, guys. You got cars on different tires, laps on tires. Never before in this race has the track been this cool. And on top of that, you have tires that have sat there. Some had laps on them, some didn't. That always changes the way the cars drive. A lot of unknowns going to the rest of this race. Well, add in the Michael McDowell we know doesn't have fourth gear. So when he restarts in second, he's going to have to pull back once into third and then twice, skip right through fourth to fifth. That's got to hurt the acceleration. And what opportunity will the eight of Reddick have to go to the inside of the 34? Will three wide be an option? The way they kind of turn off into one, we've seen all day long, Jeff, you know, how wide that entry is that, you know, where you want to have your race car, there is a lot of real estate to your left where someone could definitely take uh, you three wide if they wanted to just turn left. And so, Reddick would be looking to do that anyway. You know, Tyler Reddick is very aggressive on restarts. He would be looking to jump to the inside. And you just wonder, I'm just concerned that as the 34 Michael McDowell goes from third to fifth, and he's not carrying that speed, what's going to happen? Where is Reddick going to go? Is McDowell going to try to go to the bottom and then Reddick try to go to the bottom and then there'd be contact? They're going to have to work this out. How, how big of a difference is fourth to fifth gear? Uh, go, I mean, when you go from third all the way to fifth, is there a big difference? Will he lose a lot of speed when he goes to fifth? So it won't be quite as substantial if you didn't have second or third because fourth and fifth are reasonably close ratios. That's why you can see sometimes we see fourth gear on the racetrack. Uh, but it's going to be an obvious, you know, uh, disadvantage for the 34. I'm kind of trying to time where it's going to be because I think most guys will carry fourth gear all the way through one and two. Don't you think, Jeff, you could take fourth gear on the restart all the way through one and two and not find fifth gear in, until off from two? So, you know, somewhere in the middle of the corner, I think he's going to have an issue. Yeah, that's what concerns me is that with the lower speeds, because remember, you're not up to speed entering turn one on a restart like you normally are. A lot of guys will run through there in fourth gear. Well, he's not going to have that option. He's going to—he can't stay in third. It'll overrev the engine. He's got to go to fifth. So that will be an issue as they get ready to restart here in Texas, Parker. Well, Rick, as we get these cars rolling again here, I was just listening to some of the teams talk about the weather conditions that we now will have as we talked most of this race about how hot it is. Well, we've lost a couple degrees in the ambient temp, but the big thing that Chase Briscoe's team just told them, the track temp has dropped 20 degrees. This is going to be a massive difference from when these cars were last under green flag conditions. So not only are they having to deal with a track that maybe got cleaned up a little bit or settled, but also it'll be 20 degrees cooler, which means there should be a lot more grip and change the line. So they're going to be experiencing Seen something entirely different than it had all weekend, guys. We saw the 48 had come to pit road. Uh, obviously, a lot of damage on that car. Alex Bowman scored seven laps down to the field as you see him catching up to the back of the field and getting ready for the green flag to get back underway. 11 cautions on the day and back underway from Texas. The 34, how's he going to do? Doesn't look like he misses a beat yet. Wow, however Mike McDowell decided to work through those gears with fourth gear missing, very impressive on the 34. Eric Jones on the outside. Has the momentum now as they come off four. Reddick now looks to the inside to make a three wide. I think Reddick was actually just trying to get left to get a little air on the nose or under the car on the entry of the corner. Oh. Contact! 
Jones into the wall. Jones, Jones is upset with that. He feels like that he got ran into the wall right there. You saw him trying to go after the back end of that car, trying to get back to McDowell. They keep going along, though, but neither one feels like they got enough damage to slow down. Jones driving to the outside here. See now Bird. side by side with the eight car. We see Harrison Burton coming into the picture there in the 21 as well. A very eventful day for the 21. Chris Buescher behind him. Sorry, tight Harrison got behind Eric Jones. Had to come all the way out of the gas. Chris Buescher took advantage of it. Now Harvick trying to take advantage of it. Big run down the front straight away for Reddick. Got a big push from the 43 of Jones down to the inside. He's going to get door to door now for the lead. Tyler Reddick coming off a two. He takes the spot. McDowell really wide off the turn two, had to lift. Now he's almost side by side with the 43 here. Jones to the inside. And now McDowell drops back to third as Jones takes second. Chris Busher right behind McDowell. Here's Burton has been able to move back in front of Kevin Harvick. But Harvick with a good run on the inside now. Talk about the track, how fast the track is. He just ran a 29 flat. That is by far the fastest lap of the day. I wonder if McDowell is also struggling not being able to downshift in turn one and two. We see him lose another spot off of turn two. The car just not able to get the run off of that corner. I don't know if he's getting tight or running fifth gear through there. He's not allowing that car to, to rotate and turn or just flat line accelerating enough right here at this moment. Kind of gets run down by all these guys right off turn two. So the restarts might not be the issue with this car, but having that fourth gear for the acceleration off of two may be something that hurts him on, on the long runs. Looks like this 21 car of Harrison Burton has gotten tight. Doesn't roll the middle of the corner like he needs to. Kevin Harvick taking advantage of it. Harvick will take that spot away, and Harvick up to fifth now. Marty. Rick, how about the rally for Tyler Reddick in this race team? Remember the vibration? They went down a lap somewhere in this race about a couple of hours ago. They got that lap back. No issues with the vibration since. And he asked a moment ago, once he got the lead, do I need to save fuel? Randall Burnett said, no, go as fast as you can go right now. One interesting thing, Junior, you heard the temperature drop that Parker mentioned. Well, the wind also shifted and picked up. Much of the day was blowing from turn four over to turn two. Well, now it's going from turn three to turn one and picked up. How's that going to change it for the drivers behind the wheel? Basically, you're just going to have to deal with a balance issue both ends of the track. And that is now flipped. And so what I would like to hear from my crew chief is if I'm talking about a certain balance issue with that wind pushing me down into turn one or on the nose into turn three, it's going to change the way the car drives. And just let me know that that might be possibly some of what I'm fighting. Parker, what's going on with the 17 of Busher? Well, Rick, right now, he's the fastest car on the racetrack the last three or four laps. And remember, this is a car that spun out off of turn four in the middle of the pack, flipped through the grass, got no damage, is now the currently fastest race car there is right now and running down these leaders of Eric Jones and Tyler Reddick. And we talked to Chris under that red flag, and he told us how happy he is with this race car. But that's just amazing to see the speed they still have in it after literally spinning out off of turn four. What a comeback. And we've seen bursts of speed out of the 24 of William Byron today as well. Maybe seeing that now as he's fighting with Harrison Burton for the sixth spot. Highest running playoff car currently, as you mentioned, fighting for the sixth spot. Plus 10 positions just here since the restart. So the cooler temperatures, the sun setting, whatever adjustments they made, definitely agreeing with this 24 car. Look at the battle, though. This is what they talk about when it's hard to pass. Obviously, faster than the 21. Has got below Harrison a couple times. Just haven't been able to complete the pass. So close. Now, what will Brad Keselowski in the 6 do? He's going to run a little high. I think he's going to try to get a little run on the 24. Maybe push that forward, the fellow forward of the 21 by. 
Kind of you know, you yep. know Williams frustrated right now because he is better. Now he's under assault. Brad's going to try now to pass him on the inside, and he's going to make that happen. Brad moves in front of William Byron, the only playoff driver inside the top 10 right now with 99 laps to go. These guys with a little bit fresher tire than most cars on the racetrack that are ahead of them. That hasn't seemed to be a big difference today, though. Everyone still needs at least the pit stop to finish the race. 99 to go. They can't make it on fuel yet. We expect them to go about 65, 67 laps. Marty, how about Danny Hamlin in the 11? Slowly recovering back to 22nd. Trying his best, Steve, and I have a question for you on that, but remember the bad pit stop that happened before the rain and lightning delay. They were in a position to go into the top 10 as that battle continues for six. Just incredible between, that's the 17 and also the 21 right there, the six of Brad Keselowski and the 21 of Harrison Burton. But for Hamlin trying to make his way through, but with the pace picking up so much, Steve, is that going to make it even harder for Denny Hamlin to make his way up through the field with only 97 to go? Well, I see. I mean, there's passing on the top of the screen, passing on the bottom of the screen. I believe if your car is handling, you can move through the field. That's what Brad Kozlowski's proven right here as he slides up in front of the 21. The real question for the 11 is, you know, will he have opportunity? Are we going to see 97 laps green? Will we see a long run to the finish? Will we see multiple yellows? You just never know what kind of race it's going to be. And every guy who's going to fight you harder, because he knows if he can hold you up, he might have a chance as the 19 I thought was going to slide yeah. up. Uh, Harrison Burton didn't cut him any slack there. He got right back in the gas out of turn four, and Martin Trex Jr. wasn't able to clear him. But Martin definitely another car on the move, and it's so close when they come off of turn two. This guy's are racing hard. You know, as a rookie, that's really what Harrison needs to be doing. He's got to show these guys he's not going to just pull over. we got a car up high in turns three and four. Now, they might get tired of him, but you, you got to show them, Junior. If you, if, you, if you let them push you around, they'll do it the rest of your career. Yeah, I think Eric Almirola got way up the racetrack, almost into the wall, no contact. 24 of William Byron tucks in behind the 21 of Harrison. Burton. So Mark Tricks Jr. has moved up. He is currently running in the seventh spot. Everybody chasing Tyler Reddick here at Texas. This, this is supersonic Wi-Fi from Xfinity. It's fast. So gaming with your niece has never felt more intense. Incoming! Hey, what does this button do? No, 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 don't! <laughs> Welcome to the fastest internet on the largest gig speed network. Are you crying, Uncle Ed? No! A little. Only from Xfinity. Unbeatable internet made to do anything so you can do anything. When safe drivers save up to 30% on their auto insurance for not answering their phone while driving, they feel like a pretty big deal. Did you get the ice? Even if they forgot the ice. Uh, huh. Save up to 30% on auto insurance with USAA Safe Pilot. Get a quote today. Ray Maliazzi here. eBay Motors has 122 million parts. Hey, Dave. Yep. Wait. How are those new wipers? They're small. For parts that fit your vehicle, go to eBay Motors. Let's ride. Pain used to keep me from what I love most. Not anymore. Blue Emu gave me my horsepower back. It's the powerful relief my joints need. Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. More truck owners are switching to Ram, which means more fathers are switching to Ram. Your body's changing. And more sons, more tailgaters, more tail waggers, more men with a lot of confidence. Easy. And more with not so much. Yeah, I'm not going to fit in there. And more guys who check straps with a firm tug and say... That ain't going anywhere. ...are switching to Ram. Right now, during Ram Power Days, get 0% financing for 72 months on our most popular models. It's the wildest ride in racing. Talladega. Too fast since the day it opened. This 200 mile per hour, nose to tail, five wide parade demands absolute perfection. He slides, moving for contact! 
Anything less, you might find yourself right in the middle of the big one. NASCAR playoffs continue at Talladega on NBC. Chris Buescher running in the third spot brings out the caution for the 12th time today. Take a look at what happened in turn four. Looks like another right rear tire goes down. You see the smoke out the back of the car, hard contact with the right rear. Comes back around, swings into the right front. He drives it around, back to pit road here. You see the damage on the right rear. He had 29 laps. Green flag running on his tires, Kim. And we'll watch as cars make stops. Top left, Eric Jones. They're going to take four tires, Sunoco fuel. No real read on that short little run they had on the top right. Michael McDowell told the team he's tighter in the front, freer in the back. We'll need just a little bit help. Air pressure adjustment, Marty, for them. I think everybody a little bit concerned about the tire wear and seeing what happened to Busher. So Tyler Reddick coming down. Pit road is going to need a little bit tighter for fresh Goodyear tires, Parker. And Marty, that's exactly what Brad Kozlowski just said on the radio, that he is very worried about the tire issues that he just saw for his teammate Chris Busher. You see Kyle Larson wins the race off pit road. They are also talking about how many sets they have left. They don't feel like these tires can go more than maybe 25 laps. We'll see. Larson gains seven spots with a two-tire change. It's the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs on USA. The Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500 continues when we return. For the restart, but the caution coming out for the 17 of Chris Busher, a right rear tire going down. And Parker, it seems like that tire issue is becoming very prominent here. Right, Rick, as the speed's picked up. Tremendously here, tire durability is becoming called into question right now. Here's the right rear tire from Chris Busher's car, and you see where it's coming apart, but also that bubble in the middle. And Steve, I'm not an expert in these things, so I'll throw this to you. I don't know if that bubble is more the cause or the effect of what possibly could have made this tire go down like this for Chris Busher. Well, I'm not going to claim to be a good year engineer, but I have seen tires that look like that in the past, and when they become damaged on the inside, it actually allows the air to work its way towards the surface. It, you can see an air pocket between like the inner and the middle or the the, or the actual rubber layer of the tire. Perhaps that's what we're seeing right here. You know, the challenge is, you know, what is causing it? We heard from Brad Kozlowski during the lightning delay, and he was very confident. He thought it was a speed issue. He thought maybe there were some things you could do with your car, but he seemed to be more fearful of it being a speed issue. Now, without a doubt, more air pressure makes a tire more durable. So as a crew chief, that's the first thing I would do is just start digging through the, or with our engineers. What information do we have? Do we have to add air? Because you have to get to the finish of this race. The other thing with 88 laps to go is you want to go fast, Rick, but you can run maybe 80 or 90 percent for a little bit. Try to be smart. Harvick Truex Jr. bring us back to the green flag. William Byron giving the four a little shove as they go into turn number one, but he's not able to clear Martin Truex Jr. Now he does. Harvick's going to slide up, and he has the lead in Texas. Harrison Burton trying to hold on to that third spot. He's under attack now from the 24 of William Byron. Byron now takes the spot away from Burton. Ross Chastain also has entered the picture here in the top ten. Well, it's it's impossible to list all the trouble of all the cars because it's been so many, but the second place runner of Martin Trick Jr. He was the first yellow of the day. Spun out and made contact with the wall. Here he is in second. On board with Chase Briscoe, who's had him a remarkable recovery from earlier in the day. I've spent most of the race outside the top 20. Here he is in eighth. Talk about all the trouble today. On a day where attrition matters and experience may matter, the two leaders, first and second, Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick, two oldest guys in the field. Wonder if that experience is paying off for them. Things heating up back here as well. Kyle Larson on the inside. We've got a rookie in Todd Gilliland in the 38 outside of him. Larson's been trying to work around this 14 car. Been a little bit tough here down the back straightaway. He's going to try to get a little side draft right there. Can't make it happen. Oh, 
heard Briscoe out of the gas. Here's Ross Chastain now getting to the inside of Harrison. Austin Dillon behind him, sneaking into this battle. Oh, Harrison, he's like, oh, I'm going to stay out here, man. It's my line. Oh, Ross oh, ran oh, him oh. way up the racetrack. Harrison Burton has to get out of the gas. Ross dove into the corner. 38's up the track as well. Ross went in the corner, committed to sliding up the track. And so uh, Harrison went in the corner saying, I'm not going to allow that to happen. They're just arguing over position right there. How hard do the two veterans push it here? And they're pushing it hard. Hard as they can out front in this clean air. Kevin Harvick eliminated after the first round of the playoffs. Mark Trex Jr. didn't make it into the playoffs. And up into the wall, the four blew a right rear tire. Hold it, hold the brake, hold the brake. While leading Kevin Harvick into the wall. Stay up there if you can. Stay up there. Coming at Kevin. He slides down the track. Are you okay? He's able to avoid. Talk to us if you can. Yeah, I'm okay. 10-4. I better for the tour also. Take a look at what just happened. It's early into turn three when a tire goes, and that's the worst because that's the fastest part. The entry to the corner. 35 laps on that set of tires. Right on board with Kevin. Let's listen to the tire come apart. Oh, what a scary thought right there. And you can see him like trying to trying to control the car to keep it out of the you know racing line, but the rack. It's so violent, you know, you see the IndyCar guys have to just let go of the wheel with any kind of loss of control. And This thing started down the hill right here, and he's like, oh, no, I got to do everything I can to get it turned back to yep. the right to keep it from going down the track. NASCAR drivers have always hung on to the wheel in crashes, right? Now they're having to learn that that, you know, to let go of the wheel, and that rack is so strong, it'll just spin that wheel. And Break thumbs and hurt you. Marty. Junior Rodney Childers just came on the radio. He said there is no doubt a direct correlation to how fast you're going and how quickly your tire will go. And it just went immediately on Kevin Harvick. Steve, I cannot describe to you the palpable concern you can feel here on pit road. I mean, crew chiefs are like, man, is that what it's going to take tonight? So it's going to be interesting to see how they can finish out this race here at Texas. Well, to your point, the challenge now, Kevin Harvick stayed out under the last yellow, but would have new tires even have helped? And does he have enough tires even if he chose to pit with 80 to go, right? You, if you just can't, you know, I, I, I really honestly don't know what, what their best option is. These crew chiefs have way more information than I do about what they think are doing it. To your point, Marty, if it's speed, what do you do? Tell your driver to slow down. That's very difficult to do in a race. Um, you know, and you reported, Marty, right? We're down to probably two sets of tires for most of the cars. So you also can't be ultra conservative and just keep bolting tires on the race cars. Pit roads open. And once again, we see Truex stay on the racetrack. We do have a few guys come to pit road, but not very many. Yeah, just a handful of drivers making their way onto pit road. Truex stays out. Chastain comes to pit road, though. Parker. And you see Chase Briscoe, who's fought this race car throughout this day. They've made tons of changes on it. Just saw his teammate have those tire issues, so they're going to come down and put four Goodyear tires on the 14 car of Chase Briscoe, Marty. So Phil Surgeon bringing Ross Chastain down has to work his way around the 14 car. So, Steve, here's what I think is going on. I think he looked down, talking about Phil Surgeon, the crew chief for Ross Chastain, and said, we're way above the cut line. I'm not going to chance anything. I'm going to play it conservative. They have three sets of tires left. They just put on their next to last set of sticker tires, one more set of scuffs. I think that's what playoff drivers and playoff crew chiefs are thinking about right now. How conservatively can I play these final 79 laps? Yeah, I mean, the challenge is with Harvick now going a lap down in the 29th position, there's 28 cars in the lead lap. So 
I, I mean, you know, it's so easy to say, oh, well, put some air pressure in, put some new tires on, slow down. Well, to what point? If you say, hey, let's be nice and conservative and no one else blows a tire and you run 27th, you ran 27th. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's always so easy up here in the booth or on Monday morning to have an opinion. It is so, so hard to be down there in the blender on top of one of these pit boxes trying to make sense of all this. And Steve, these playoff drivers also know that a win at Texas gets them to the next round. So you have to put that variable into it as well. We go to the Peacock pit box and Brad and KP. How much more can we throw at these guys today, Brad? Unbelievable. It, it, it is, I mean, we've thrown rain, we've thrown lightning, we've thrown yeah. a slick racetrack, we've thrown high temperatures, and now we throw tire issues out. How, how much more can they take? This is unbelievable. This is this is scary. Yes, if you're a race car driver, if you're a, a crew chief, if you're an owner, I mean, you're looking at this and saying, okay, we can't run 30 laps, you know, without these tires failing, and that is scary. What do you do? You heard Steve talking about it at nausea. You don't know what to do, so... I don't know. I, I, this is yes. this is concerning. Uh, you could you could obviously add a little more air pressure to the tire, slow it down just a little bit, but it's a race. It's a race. What do you do? I don't I don't know what to do in the circumstances. I know I, this is tough calls for all these crew chiefs, but as we run and as we run faster and as we get to, towards that yes. 30 laps, we're seeing these right rear tires go away. That is a scary situation for everybody involved. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's hard on these crew chiefs. It's hard on these drivers. They get paid to run as hard as they can. That's to win right. Race. And it's hard on NASCAR at this point in time. 100%. What kind of call do I make? Where are the tires at? When does safety take the priority today? Absolutely. Do we have to run the whole race? We're past halfway. Parker. Well, uh, Kyle, let's catch up here with Rudy Fugel, who's the crew chief for William Byron. You guys are currently in second place. You were last on pit road at lap 213. How concerned are you seeing all these tire issues? Yeah, we've, we've had some longer runs. We're pretty conservative on our uh, our settings. We kind of know where all our stuff is. So definitely concerned because the, the track's going to pick up pace here with, a, with the sun going down. So, But to see how that goes, we're just trying to get in that next fuel window, you know, so we can make another 15 to 20 laps. I think everybody will pit for their final time, and we'll see what happens. So, Do you, do you think the speed is the issue, that the cars are going so fast? Uh, no, I mean, it's a, it's a ton of issues, air pressure, camber, speed, so it's how much load we're putting in that tire. So the faster we go now, you'll have more issues, yeah. Very interesting, guys. So in this tire topic, there's really two sides to it, and I could argue both sides. If, you know, Rudy Fugel just seemed to have a little more confidence than perhaps I was expecting about the settings in his car. So if there have been decisions by some of these teams to be not near the edge and closer to the center when it comes to choices to allow for perhaps not the maybe the the weaker tire of the bunch or the pack track picking up grip or whatever it may be then i while i am always concerned about safety i am less troubled with what it's doing for people in the playoffs and their finishing situation now the other side is if that's not really the case and it's a little bit more you know just bad luck or bad timing or or something you don't have as much control over that is when it becomes more of a frustrating situation and i don't think we know right i mean still a lot of cars running right. but we have seen a plethora of cars have right rear issue all different makes um i guess the one consistent thing is they all seem to be pretty fast when it happened right rudy used the word conservative for his setup so that might be a positive in this situation correct uh, if that does come into play. Mark Trex Jr. on the inside, William Byron on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Truex getting a nice push here from Austin Dillon. It's gonna help clear that 19 car. Austin has to get, get out of the gas to allow some clean air to get under that car. Look how much distance the 19 car has been able to put on the field. Justin Haley making it three wide back there on the right side of your screen. Pretty good run for William Byron now as he closes the gap between himself and the 19. He's going to look to the inside as they go into turn one. And he ran Trix down quickly. Maybe Trix says, I don't want to leave. A couple times now we have seen race leader wreck out of the lead. Well, I remember Busher, we had a report by Parker that he felt he was the fastest car in the racetrack right before four or five laps before we saw him have a right rear down. Larson once again on the move, trying to get to the front, to the inside of the 12 of Blaney. He's got to slide up just to get some clean air because he's right behind the three cars. So 
Not much he can do about that. I know Blaney didn't appreciate it, taking the air away from him. Reddick back here trying to pass the 34 on the inside as well. Now back up front, battle for second place. Yeah, Denny Hamlin has come into the picture now as he looks to the inside of William Byron. They're side by side for second. I wonder if Truex is managing the gap. You know, maybe he's trying to think, where do I load this right rear tire? And maybe I should try to take oh, oh, a little contact. Yeah, almost into the wall for Byron. And now we see Austin Dillon go to the high side. Three wide into three. Man. I'm not sure if the 24 didn't make contact with the wall. It's hard to tell from that angle. That was contact with something. Yeah, we did get the fence. I'll try to look right side. You'll need pictures. They already say you need pictures. There's photographers all around these racetracks that work for the manufacturers and the teams. They'll provide those pictures quickly to the pit box. See right here. Saw the fire coming out of the 11 exhaust pipe. He was lifting off the gas trying to prevent that. But William Byron's not going to care. He's going to be upset. Got run in the wall. And the car in front of him is the one who put him there. But I'm wondering, watch the lead here. I think that I think that Trix is going to control this gap. Only run as hard as he needs to. Only really lean on that right rear tire as much as possible just to keep the lead. The driver knows when he's loading that tire, how much he's loading it, where that peak load is on the racetrack, and he may dial it back in that specific area, see if that makes a bit of a difference for him. Three of Austin Dillon wanting to get back to victory lane here at Texas. He did it back in 2020. Now, under 70 laps to go. Steve, what's the magic number as far as fuel? Well, what do they we, need to get to? We were thinking 65 or 67 to go with faster speeds. You know, you are using more fuel, so probably more like 63 to go, 65 to go would be a, a better feel. But all these guys can run quite a while. I don't think anybody's going to try to short pit or do anything like that. But at this point, if you had a yellow come out, I think you'd be forced to think you're in your fuel window and try to manage it from there. All righty. Tying a record number of cautions from Texas Motor Speedway at 13. Now the drivers or the teams want to see another caution come out. Martin Trex Jr. out front. Verizon Frontline is built for those we all rely on. Built to prioritize first responders. Built for extreme conditions. Built for America's most reliable 5G network. Because when seconds count and lives are on the line, the people we rely on need technology they can rely on. Verizon is the number one network choice in public safety. Verizon Frontline, the advanced network and technology for first responders. In the future, everything will be powered by renewable energy. But it's not as easy as flipping a switch. It's a long road, requiring decades of time and trillions of dollars. But what if there was a better direction on the path to zero carbon emissions? An energy source that's available right now, that's affordable, plentiful, and environmentally friendly. There is, and it's propane. Get the facts at propane.com slash now. Race leader Martin Truex Jr. has just wrecked. He got into the wall, a right side tire went down. Unbelievable what we're seeing here at Texas. Thirty-five laps of green flag run on this tire as he goes into turn three. You see it. That seems to be a consistent number. Yeah. 34, 35. Right in that lap count. Go I don't ahead. really know what, what. I don't even know what else to do. I mean, how do we, how do we get to the end of this race? That's the big. That's the question. Well, not many, enough teams have tires left. To yeah, but I mean, we, run this whole way. And and what do you do as a crew chief? What do you do as a driver? It. This is. 
This is a very difficult situation for everyone to be in. Then the 11 car on the front straightaway. Looks like there's some contact. Oh, the we 24 of Byron. Remember what happened off of turn two. Byron felt like maybe that the 11 ran him into the fence off of turn two. Byron takes that opportunity to possibly retaliate. And then Denny, I believe, is trying to rejoin in the second position. We'll see what NASCAR thinks about that. The three of Austin Dillon leading the 11 pulled back up to second. I'm yeah, not sure NASCAR is going to think that's okay. We'll have to see what NASCAR has to say. What will NASCAR say about what the 24 did? Back here, oh, under two. caution, spinning him. Well, the 24 he has to admit it first before NASCAR <laughs> will worry about it. I was going to say, you know, that is a good point. I'm pretty confident. I, I think I know NASCAR's answer about the 24. Marty. Well, needless to say, Chris Gabehart is livid down here. They're trying to get their position back. Denny Hamlin, even more mad than Chris Gabehart. Listen. I have no, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen a replay of it, but good grief. If he's mad about what happened off of two, he got tied underneath of him, lifted on. All right, so Denny Hamlin clearly is upset. They've been, this is being on all the way down the back straightaway, banging into each other. Denny is not happy. Well, now he has to be careful because he knows that all eyes are on him. And if he feels like he was wronged by the 24 when the caution came out, where Byron sent him into the infield, you, gonna, all, you always see you always see the second one. They're gonna they're not gonna let Denny Hamlin keep that position. They, that, they're not gonna get into the business of saying, well, he got spun out and on purpose or whatever. So we're gonna give him his spot. The rule is you have to maintain pace. He didn't maintain pace, so they're going to put him back in where he blended back onto the racetrack. This is how it all kind of started right off of turn two. Then he gets a little bit up the racetrack. You can watch the fire out of the pipes. He's off the gas trying to stay off the side of the 24 car, but still Byron hits the fence, and he feels like that was Denny's responsibility. You can see how frustrated he is right here running him shallow into the corner. Laps later, many, many laps later, he spins him out off of turn four. And this is down the back straightaway under caution just now. And I will I will be honest. I think Denny was very, very close to, to spinning the 24 out right here. Really thought about doing it. Possibly wanted to do it or was trying to do it. He'll be glad it didn't happen. Because I don't want I don't even want to think about what NASCAR might have done had he spun. The 24 under caution here in an obvious retaliation, right? So the, 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 the argument is this is out of turn two, how they get together and the 24 hits the wall. And people are going to say, well, you know, the 24 spun him out on purpose. But that's only, until, only when he admits it, right? Byron can claim ignorance and say, hey, I didn't know the caution was out. Kim. And making stops here, Austin Dillon in the top left. He said he needs to be freed up. Right rear air pressure adjustment for him. They said they're right on the fuel number, likely going to have to wait to get that fuel cell full. Kyle Larson up there at the top just needs to be freed up, Marty. Jonathan Hassler calling Ryan Blaney to pit road from the top five, 63 to go here. They do have three sets of tires. Now down to two for the 12. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin at the front of pit road pitting as well. Parker. And really environment. Here's one of his two sets left there, and Joe Logano just put his last set of stickers on, guys. So the race off pit road, Ross Chastain, it looks as though no tires. When tires is an issue, and we saw a lot of two tires as far as this most recent stop. 24 into the wall, a little frustration. Playoff drivers taking it out on track. SpeedyCash.com victory lane tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. Right now, Stenhouse Jr. and Gilliland are running one and two. Both have not been to victory lane here in 2022. Kim. Martin Tucks Jr. out of the infield care center. Rex leading. Walk us through what happened. Blue the tire. Simple as that. I mean, you know, I guess same as everybody else has been having. Uh, man, ready for this year to be over. Uh, Strong Bass Pro Shops Camry, uh, really strong car. Went to the back, passed a lot of cars today. Spun out the first run and it's like, okay, what the heck was that all about? And um, just good car, couldn't couldn't do much with it. Just kept going to the back. And then uh, as soon as we get track position, you know, the unthinkable happens. So it's a shame. It's uh, been a crazy day for sure. A lot of blown tires. 
with the number of tires blown from guys up front, do you think there's a correlation between the speed and the clean air and what we're seeing? I mean, I, I wasn't any faster up front than I had been running. Um, I think, you know, we had throughout the day, our tires all looked really good. We had one right rear that came off. They said one more lap, it was probably going to blow out, and they have no no idea why. It wasn't a lap count thing or anything. It was just the one right rear was just destroyed. Um, and like I said, our, our tires look good all day. So uh, I think it's just a freak deal. If you either you draw the unlucky straw or you don't. There you have it again. Martin Trucks Jr. leading the race. The well, right rear tire goes out. He hits the wall. I mean, this is the challenge of this whole thing is why? I mean, I, you know, I think the answer is there's a lot of opinions on why, but I'm not sure anyone knows absolutely ink on paper factually what is doing it. So what can cause it? Well, you can have settings in your race car that makes your car damage tires easier than someone else. You can have every tire. I don't think the durability of every tire is exactly the same. I think that would be uh, pretty naive to think they're all exactly the same. I also we've heard Roddy Childers tell Marty Snyder that he thought, you know, speed was a factor. Absolutely. I mean, the faster you go, you're asking more of your tires. So all of these things are added up. Now the question is, what do you do to manage? Well, who are you? If I'm Stenhouse or the 38 at Gilliland or maybe even Briscoe, even a playoff guy, though, he might think he has to go win this race. Risk is probably worth the reward. You probably need to push your car. You ask yourself, someone else in the field, though, slow down, as silly as that sounds, in a race, maybe the best option. Either way, we have to run 60 more laps here. Um, and it, it is a, it's a complicated situation because I, I up here, I sound like I know about as much as Martin Truex Jr. And he was in the car all day, right? But he, he only knows what he's feeling and he's being told. And uh, he felt like he had one earlier that was an issue. And now he lost one while leading. Well, if we're worried about the laps on the tires, the top three have 10 green flag laps on their tires. Ross Chastain back there. Also with 10 green flag laps on his tires, everybody else to pit road, changing two or four. So this right. is what has started all this chaos lately is Denny Hamlin up into the side of William Byron. William Byron upset about it. Down the back straightaway, William trying to show his little displeasure and then don't have a great shot of it. But this is when 24 gets into the back of the 11 when the caution comes out. See the 11 spinning it down through the grass. That so, team very upset about that. Yeah, we all probably imagine that it was on purpose, but until the 24 admits it, NASCAR's not going to react to that because he could say he was looking at his gauges or whatever. And then under yellow, they argue a little bit down the back straightaway, and we go down into turn three, and Denny takes a couple chops at the back bumper of this 24 car, and I think he'd be glad that he didn't spin him out because that that would be hard to argue it wasn't retaliatory you know and i think that's when you start to drag nascar into it whether they they probably don't want to be in the middle of it 58 laps remain and denny hamlet we starting back in the 22nd position william byron restarting in the 10th position up front stenhouse jr in the 47th he's on the inside and then it's todd gilliland the rookie and the 38 on the outside. Back up through the gears they go. Fanning out two and three wide as they continue to fight for position. Reddick dives all the way to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get by the 14 of Briscoe for that third spot. Todd Gillen doing a nice job battling on the outside. Led that lap. And now Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fighting back on the inside. He's going to take the lead. Reddick's going to take third away from Briscoe, but now Briscoe fighting back on the outside. Todd still trying to catch the back of this 47 car for the lead. It's not done yet. Using that high line to try to create some momentum. He's going to have his hands full with this eight car, though, here shortly. Reddick down to the inside of the racetrack. Tries to get alongside of the 38. Can't quite do it. Into three they go. And the gap is closing now with the 47. Gilliland has caught him. The eight of Reddick. 
He's only a car length behind Gilliland. Reddick's going to go to the bottom here. Gilliland's going to follow 47. That's going to dirty the air for him. He's going to be able to slide up the track out of the throttle. He's going to take that position away rather easily. Side by side behind them, Logano to the inside of 14 and Briscoe down into turn three. Cedric also using that low line. Reddick on the high side is going to have a pretty good run on the leader down the front straightaway. Looking to the inside again. This will be a battle for the lead down into turn one. I think he's got that. He's been good up there, though. We saw him leading the race earlier. Earlier in the day, he ran that second lane, and nobody could get by him. Reddick stayed very low off turn two. Now, door to door as they go into three, and Bumper Reddick's going to take the spot. One half, one and he just kind of shook that 47 driver there, getting real close to his door. <laughs> house out of the gas and that gives a spot up to the eight it's gonna happen eventually but I think that surprised Stenhouse a little bit how close they got here comes Logano fourth place trying to take third away from Gilliland Steve fuel you think they can get to the end yeah I don't think fuel's gonna be an issue um, I'm feeling pretty confident we're not gonna see 53 green Rick so I'm not that worried about the fuel tires we've seen them make it to 35 laps that's about the magic number right now and we saw reddick come to pit road at 271 so already 11 laps on these tires just the right sides now remember they did a two tire stop party before the green came out denny hamlin and chris gabehart chatting about what happened with William Byron? Until the choose, Gabehart was saying we should get our position back. Here's part of their conversation on the radio. How do they not put the 24 to the tail for that? I mean, at the least. I, I realize what circus we're in. I mean, but good grief. The man wrecks you under, under caution and he gets no penalty? What are we doing? I'll give him the penalty if he comes back to me. Key words from Denny Hamlin. I'll give him the penalty if he comes back to me. Hamlin is still incensed behind the wheel. He restarted 21st up to 18th. Can he get to the 24th? It's going to be good theater if he does. They changed four tires for the 11 team. Joey Logano working that outside, trying to get on the outside of the 38. Todd pulls up in front of him. Joey going to go to the inside of him. If he can't carry enough speed, this bottom lane is starting, as his track temperatures come down, it's starting to be pretty good. You know, when you, the, the track gains more grip, oftentimes you just want the shortest way around the racetrack. And also, Junior, as the track temp comes down, that traction compound doesn't seem to be as effective on a cold racetrack. Yeah, they did not treat the track. They did not treat the track as well over the weekend, so that's kind of wore away a little bit. We saw in the Xfinity race, four cars running down low later in the race as well, thinking that Resin's kind of lost a little bit of his grip. Blaney right there at the 24 battle. Blaney and Byron both come to, came to pit road on lap 271 and both took four tires. They're the furthest front of the drivers that came and cars that came to pit road under that 271 caution for four tires. Listen into the 24 radio. Not gonna take his bullshit. That's all it is. I respect that, but we're we're got a long way to go here. Okay, just just try to calm down. It'll be fine. Talking about and referencing what has happened with Denny Hamlin and the 11. Right now, William Byron running in the 11th spot. Blaney in 10th. Reddick with a 1.1 second lead now over Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Is there a situation where you maybe don't push the tire as hard if you got that big of a lead? Well, I mean, we are slowly seeing who believes that the pace matters, who believes that it doesn't. We heard Rudy Fugel felt like his car was comfortably set up. Reddick obviously is comfortable with it. He continues to pull away from the nose of Ricky Stenhouse, stretching it over one second. Remember Tyler Reddick at Bristol? He had a tire failure, and he made the comment, if we go fast, we blow a tire. He made that comment about the entire year. So if you're Tyler Reddick with a 1.9 second lead, 1.1 second lead, 
I don't think I'm going to be going this fast. Just back this pace off. You only got to lead by a car length. You don't have to lead by a second. Pushing it down the back stretch. 1.2 seconds, the separation between one and two. We're starting to see all the drivers running that second and third line here with the right side tires just in the traction compound. Logano to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to gain some ground on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky's going to be hard to pass. Watching this whole race long, he's fought every position. 14 laps more uh, since he was on pit road. This run right here, this push, Pagano's getting, didn't quite benefit him into an opportunity to make a pass there. That's something we've been seeing a little bit of, getting a big shove down the straightaway. Here he is alongside. He's able to make one and two work better than I thought. Gets way away to avoid the side draft. Now he's going to drive up the racetrack in front of that 47. It's going to assure him the position. Reddick Logano, Stenhouse Jr., Gilliland, Briscoe, the top five. Then it's Cedric Haley, McDowell, Chastain, and Eric Jones, part of the top ten. Field stretching out a bit now as it's five seconds from race leader Tyler Reddick all the way back to Eric Jones in 10th. Another thing I think about the, with the tire issues is I believe there may be more load in that higher groove just because of the you know the improved grip. And I'm mainly speak about it in, as far as in turn three and four where I see the eight car actually run the bottom down there. I feel a lot better about that than him running. Oh, now he's in the middle. That makes me nervous right there. With this kind of a lead, I'd be really want my driver to kind of stay in the traditional line, the cleaner line, the line that's going to probably load the tire a little bit less. I think most of the tire failures we've seen, the guys were running that higher line, as, as has been the case for most of the field all day long. But if that bottom's producing some lap time, maybe a better, safer spot to be running. All right, Junior, let's go through the field brought to you by DoorDash, and we'll start with Marty. Rick, this goes to prove that even if you've been eliminated from the playoffs like Tyler Reddick, who was eliminated by two points from making this round, you still want to win every race. I just asked Randall Burnett the question of, do you back Tyler Reddick now and seeing all the tire problems? He said, I would love to, but Logano was behind me, and I think he's pretty quick. So right now, Tyler Reddick has full reign to go as quick as he wants, Parker. All right, Marty, and the car trying to chase him down is that 22, Joe Logano, who was the fastest car on the racetrack that last lap there. He uh, has no more sticker tires left. You saw him put those two right sides on. That was his last set because he had come on the radio and complained of a vibration coming from the right rear. Paul Wolf didn't really want to pit, but knew his driver was concerned about enough to come down there and put those final set of stickers on the right side of the 22 and so now they can only hope that those can go to the end of the race kim and ricky sales jr running in the third position leave it to brian patty to do a different strategy they came down and put four on at lap 255 were a few laps short on fuel so topped off on 257 just riding it out for ricky he's been a little bit loose on the back end all day long otherwise very smooth running in front of tom gilliland position a great run for this rookie driver and he's described this rookie season as hectic wants to finish strong we saw really good things from him out of the indy road course as well as he up front in the atlanta race that told him he had the confidence to be running with the rest of this cup series field todd gillen just a little bit free right now about 26 green flag laps on the right side tires of the first two cars each stop 271. Clock is ticking. Well, Junior, obviously they're not telling him to slow down. He just turned to 29-24 the last lap. He's the fastest car on the racetrack, so they're not worried about, or I shouldn't say they're not worried, but they're not doing anything to take away that load on the right rear tire. It's how bad you want it. My anxiety's through the roof, and I'm not in the car. So I can't imagine what the drivers must be thinking about or trying not to think about. 
See just moments ago the one of Ross Chastain the 43 of Eric Jones a close call there. Yeah, Eric got, got in the corner got really loose on corner entry and went up the racetrack. I saw him go way. Oh, wreck oh the back anyway. Cendrick has spun around. Cendrick goes around coming off a of two. The left rear or the left front tire is down. Get it back going. Be ready. Yeah, we kind of caught straight it. Straight to us. Come straight to us. As he was spinning. So I'm not sure. Right front tires down as well. It was a heck of a slide with no contact with that inside wall. He's yeah. running in fifth. Damage on the 47 of Stenhouse. Oh, big damage. Big, yeah, a right. lot of right. damage. Kip. And obviously you see the damage there, right rear down on the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Both of these drivers, Ricky and Austin Cedric, had been running in the top five when this incident happened. Let's take a look at what happened. Ricky running along here off of turn two, just gets loose. Oh, wow. Acted around into the wall. And I think the two may have spun right there to avoid. So Cindric does a good job of not crashing into the 47, but also not hitting the wall. Look at that. It just came around on him. Look at Cindric. Wow, man. <laughs> Look at this. What a move. I mean, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. That's a pretty sharp, sharp driver right there. Good wreck avoidance for this two car. That's some Joey Chit with stunt driving yes. on the two car right there. So Austin Cindric spinning. We saw it started with the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Sliding coming out of turn two. And OK, Steve, now you've got a break. You're 33 to go in this race as your crew chief. What do you tell, for example, Tyler Reddick out front? Well, I think, look, if I have a set of tires and I'm, and I'm a playoff guy, I'm probably going to put my last set of tires on here so I feel good about the last 33 laps. But you just said it before this caution. The aid of Tyler Reddick continuing to run some very impressive laps. So it didn't seem that that at least their concern wasn't high enough to give up the lead or to pull him back to a point pace-wise where he would lose the lead. I think that's the toughest thing possible to do. It's no different than saving gas, right? You save your gas to second, and then you make it and wonder if you had enough fuel to win the race, right? So if Reddick slows down enough that he falls to second but then finishes, well, did he have enough tire to win the race? So it's one of the toughest decisions that has to be made from a driver, crew chief, spot, or combination. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. Those guys at 255 and 257 of Gilliland and Briscoe, they may think they have to come just for fuel. Uh, but the sets of tires from our pit reporters, they got to be getting pretty limited down there. So I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure everyone has a set. If they do, they perhaps are their qualifying scuffs. And pit road is open. You see the green light at the entrance to pit road. And quite a few going right by the entrance to pit road. That answers your question, right? They're, they're going to stick with what they have. They feel like they make it to the end on fuel. So they're they're calling the strategy that they believe will give them the best finish and they feel that staying on the racetrack. Marty. I think Ross Chastain and Phil Searcher just felt like the handling of their car was not what they needed. He said, I am so loose, barely hanging on to it. So they decided to come down pit road for sticker Goodyear tires. This will be their last set of sticker tires for the night for Ross Chastain. 32 to go. They're hoping they last to the end. Tried it a lot in my day and hope is never. <laughs> I mean, some, you know, there's been a lot of days. That's the only strategy I had left, but it was, <laughs> I never liked leaning on it. How about Kevin Harvard? Yeah. He really, I mean, he's back on the lead lap. Uh, you know, just kind of grinding out the day. And yeah. wrecking. He's running in the 21st position right now, coming off pit road with some fresh tires. 31 laps to go from Texas. We thought Texas was crazy. What about NASCAR Cup Series playoffs continuing next Sunday from Talladega Super Speedway? And that race coverage on NBC. And it begins at 2 p.m. Eastern. Could it get crazier than what we've seen tonight? I never, ever, ever underestimate Talladega. Ever. <laughs> I have a couple times in my career, oh, this is going to be the year. It's going to be somewhat calm. And like nine cars finished. So there's no telling what can happen down yeah. there. Well, the whole year's been pretty calm, so I think yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, no, no real stories. All right, Goodness. we'll see which 
lanes everyone chooses and watch the 11 and 24 they're pretty close here so the 24 goes to the inside and the 11 is going to go to the outside they're going to restart probably next to each other yeah one row apart looks yeah. like so at some point Hamlin's going to be near the 24 of Byron we'll see what's made of all that so in that process just to update Cendric did lose a lap in that in that process Suarez will be restarting back behind Denny Hamlin. 27 cars still on a lead lap. That is, you know, we have seen a lot of tires and a lot of craziness and 15 yellows. But to your point, Jeff, we have 27 cars running on the lead laps. Stenhouse has a little bit of damage in 27th. Cindric one lap down. Uh, Bowman has worked his way all the way back to five laps yeah. down after being one of the earlier accidents and up to 29th. I mean, saving points. Parker. And Steve, just to add to all this, the 22 Joe Logano, when this caution came out, said the vibration in the right rear is back. That's their last set of right side stickers. We'll see if that right rear can make it in our 30 laps. Man. Hmm. Yeah, such positivity. All right. Reddick Logano. Logano on the outside. Reddick on the inside. 29 to go from Texas. Briscoe up the racetrack, pushing the 22 a little bit higher. Three wide behind him. We got a car spinning in turn two. Up against the wall, Eric Almarola. Caution comes out, the 16th caution of the night. Up. Balance is level. Yeah, the tires are up. So Almarola spins, bringing caution out, meaning another restart. Looks like this started back in the middle of the pack. So the 43, the 23. This already happened. There was some. There was something happened way before this. A lot of contact. The ten spinning because of that. So this was much after the fact that got the ten spun out here. There was some issues with the 43 and the 23. I believe going on a lot of two, three, four wide action back there in the pack in the one. Kim, what were they saying on the radio? Well, you heard that little bit after that Eric added, he groaned and he said, guys, it's just so loose in these restarts. There's nothing I could do. So Almirola, after changing tires, is coming back out on the racetrack. You see the damage to the 47, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And to what Jeff was mentioning, Cindric had lost a lap avoiding Stenhouse coming to pit road. Uh, we'll wait for the official word from NASCAR, but I believe he is going to be the free pass. That'll put the two car back on the lead lap. That'll be 28 cars on the lead lap. I was going to ask if that helped your fantasy team, Rick, but I'll be honest, in all this chaos, I forgot I even who I had on my fantasy team. <laughs> well, I had changed it earlier, but there were a few things that there was nothing I could do. As we oh, see Ross Chastain on pit road, Marty. Yeah, this is sometimes the penalty of pitting, Steve, when really no one else does. Ross Chastain coming down pit road, restarted 17th, but got a little bit of that contact there, mostly on the left front. So what Phil Surgeon is going to do, you see the bear bond going on. They're actually going to put this left front back on. Remember I said it a moment ago, this is their last set of sticker tires, so they really don't have a choice but to put these tires back on. So the nose did pop out, Steve, and Phil Surgeon saying right now the nose did not separate. So good news for Ross Chastain who caught a little bit of that last wreck. Well, they work on the one. Let's take another look at what happened with the 10 of Eric Almirola. Look at that mess back there in the top of the screen. The 10's on the apron. That's how he, I mean, they were five wide, maybe momentarily. And he catches, <laughs> that's where he catches the one. I believe that's, yeah, there he goes. Yeah. And then you see the damage on the left front of the one in front of the tire. Well, and and Eric, Eric's comment was, sorry guys, really loose on restarts. Makes you wonder, if he wasn't on the apron because he was backing into the corner. He got loose getting into the corner and had to chase it and got the left front on the apron. Playoff driver Ross Chastain making his way back out onto the racetrack. Well, he'll be calm coming from the back with 27 to go. 
calm. <laughs> calm. I believe this might be right here, the calm before the storm. Rick, I think we've been in the storm. I think we have been in have we 308 laps of storm have today. We weathered the storm. 26 to go. Kim. And Justin Haley having a great day running in the third position currently. And I talked with the team earlier this morning, Trent Owens, the crew chief, and asked, what's the goal for you guys here? And he said, I always like to finish better than our points position. So for the rest of the season, we're hunting for top 15s and top 20s. It looks like they're going to possibly finish in the top five if everything goes their way. Justin saying he's been free most of this end of the race, but the most competitive he's been all day. He's great run. Well, a great year, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, Justin Haley's not considered a rookie. He has more starts than what you would think because he has driven different equipment. Uh, you know, has won a race, a lightning race down in uh, Daytona. But this being what I would consider his first full-time approach, being in a car week in and week out, he's done a really nice job uh, just quietly having, you know, quiet is a, is a tip of the hat to a young driver. Sure. You can have a quiet year with decent, decent stats. That is a, a good year, especially at the cup level. Marty. Well, a chat with Randall Burnett, uh, not in the playoffs, but certainly showing up uh, how good you guys are. So it's been a while since you pitted. How concerned are you about the tires on the eight car right now? Well, I think uh, anybody out there with tires on are concerned right now. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. It's, the pace is picked up. More load goes through the tires. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, we got a heck of a little wheel man in there, and Derek's doing really good up top. So I like our chances. I think we're pretty good. The 22 will obviously be really tough, but uh, we'll see if we can hold them off here. Neil in your spotter there. So any thought to asking him to move down to maybe save the tires a little bit? I mean, with Joey right there, they're about equal pace, and he's going to force our hand right there, right? So uh, we're just going to have to do everything we can to stay in front of him and, and try to win this deal, and hopefully everything works out. Steve, I asked Randall a moment ago, I said, can you make it to the end? He said, on fuel, yes. I mean, clearly meaning he's still a little bit worried about the tires. Fuel-wise, they're good. Well, Marty, and you're down in that pit. They have another set of tires to put on if they need to, or are they out of tires? They do. They do have another set of tires here. They have their sticker set, and they have a scuff set. So they have two sets, actually, to work with. It's been a while since the eight pitted. Well, so there's one more school of thought is the reason I was wondering that, Rick, right? So now you just heard Randy's like, Yes, I'm concerned, but I'm not sure I could fix. You know, if he thought a new set of tires was like a guarantee they weren't going to have an issue, I'm sure he would have put them on. Uh, so, you know, they have tires left, yet he's keeping this track position. Logano, same situation. He did a two-tire stop at lap 271 also. And look who's nose to tail. William Byron, Denny Hamlin. We get ready to go back to green. 24 remaining here at Texas. Got to get defensive here. Three wide is definitely going to be where guys want to go. Look at that. 38 up the racetrack. Trouble for Gillen. Joe Logano is still hanging on that right rear corner panel. Look how aggressive we are down the back straightaway. The blocking. Trying to stop guys from creating opportunities to make runs. Back for third. Yeah, Reddick's out front. Logano running in that second spot. Third, Haley has it. He's been all over the racetrack trying to block to keep it. Here comes Briscoe on the outside. Here comes, look at Blaney trying to go three wide. Can't quite do it. Man, these restarts are so tough. You've got to take advantage of opportunities, and you can't be put in a bad situation where you got to lift, especially as much throttle as we have now late in the race. The 24, see him, he can't quite get going. Getting, getting held off on the outside here. He can't really, oh! oh. No aggression up the track. Up track. He saves it, had a little moment there, got loose. Blends back down into the field. Noah's running 10th. And now all the way behind Harvick, so he's back into the 22nd position. Blaney to the inside of the 14. Briscoe fighting back on the outside. About three hours ago, I don't think Chase Briscoe thought he had any chance in the world of running top five. They were struggling big time. Here he is battling Blaney for fourth. 
Reddick's driving away out front. This is a great battle right here. The 24, the five side by side. It's hard to make passes on the bottom of the racetrack right now. We're going three wide around McDowell. McDowell gets a little bit loose as he was in the middle of the sandwich. And now Larson on the outside. He's surging back ahead. But William Byron seems to have one of the faster cars on the track right now. He does, Rick, but on that bottom, it's going to be tough to pass his teammate. Daniel Suarez working to the inside of Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, Brad was just trying to pass McDowell, and now they're side by side. The 99 has to lift on the bottom of the racetrack. Denny's going to get around him on the front straightaway. Here comes Eric Jones looking to the inside of Hamlin. Suarez was trying to get on the outside of Hamlin, but Hamlin came up the racetrack, took it away from him. Eric Jones side drafting the 11 as they go into turn three. Eric Jones has the best tires on the racetrack right now as far as track position. There's some guys behind him that have the same number of laps on tires, but he's running the highest. And although out there by yourself, new tires may not mean anything in traffic when you have to lean on it, you got to oh, ask your car to do the track. something then that's when new tires help. And he's up the track. Todd Dillon behind him up the track. He's going to lose a lot of spots there. Still see this battle right here. Byron trying to get around his teammate. Kozlowski sitting back there waiting for an opportunity to pass one of them, if not both. They're all kind of hung up right here behind Briscoe. Briscoe's sitting in that top groove. Making it difficult for Larson to do anything about it. Coming up on 16 laps to go. Blaney closing in on the 31 here for third place. Ran the bottom of three and four the last time by. He's going to offset just a little bit to the left right here. Try to keep this distance. Loses a little bit right there, has to get out of the gas. That cost him a lot of speed down this back straightaway. Have to regroup. Try to close back in. He's a little bit faster than Haley. I see Logano just in front of these two. Blaney running in that fourth spot. Haley has third. Blaney to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to take the shorter distance around. At the playoff picture, Logano, 30 points above the cut line. Parker. And guys, I think this is an incredible job by Johnny Klossmeyer and Chase Frisco, this 14 car. Jeff, you said it. They were terrible earlier today. They could barely run in the top 30 or even top 25. They made so many adjustments on that car. I think it's the most adjustments I have seen in the next-gen era on a race car and found themselves now up at the front and holding on to possibly a top five. This is an incredible job by this 14 team, Kim. We know what a cheerleader Cliff Daniels is for Kyle Larson. About 30 laps ago, he came on the radio and apologized to Larson for not giving Kyle what he needs on pit road. They just didn't execute as well as they wanted to. They made a mistake earlier, had to come back down, tighten a right front tire early in the race, and Cliff took all the blame for it, as well as telling him, we'll give you better. Pepping up, telling him, you can finish this race. Just keep your eyes forward. Larson now runs in the sixth position. See Ty Dillon in the 42, Kevin Harvick in that four, amazing. Still out there after leading the race, and a right rear tire goes down. He gets into the wall, but he's still out there competitive. Getting into the wall is almost downplaying it. I mean, that four car flat wrecked. They had to tape the deck lid back on it. Great Brad, runs. Oh, man, a big wiggle from Kyle Larson. Larson. He's got to stay out of the wall. He does. Brad Keselowski will take the spot, but that was a huge save by Kyle Larson in the five. The lap before, his teammate, the 24 Byron, had a similar issue in turn three and four, give up the spot to Brad Keselowski. Another spot given up there to the six car as well. Larson trying to regroup here, trying to salvage what he can, not lose any more positions. 
Remember Larson and Hamlin also had issues in this race. Now they're nose to tail. Take another look at what happened with Kyle Larson here. He's back of the car, just got loose, just could not lean on the rear of the car, just had to come out of the throttle. Kozlowski, the fastest car on the racetrack right now. Him and Eric Jones both running incredible laps. There's Eric right now trying to get around the 24 car. Kozlowski up to six. This will put Eric Jones in seventh. It's a great run as we're under 10 laps now from the checkered flag. McDowell is running 11th. Corey LaJoy right now running in the 14th position. Ty Dillon is 16th. Harrison Burton recovered to 18th. Kozlowski up the racetrack. Big moment for him down in the middle of one and two. These guys are full commitment. I mean, they are right on the ragged edge of control. Every lap, somebody is wiggling and chasing it up the track. Under eight to go. Redick, Logano, Haley, top three. Redick with a 1.3 second lead over Joey Logano. We heard Randall Burnett say, we've got Logano pushing us. We can't go slower. Well, right now he's got a 1.3 second lead and he has seven laps to go here at Texas. And Logano has company from that 31 and the 12 of Blaney. The winner from the All-Star race here at Texas earlier in the year. A lot of hopes coming back here at track. He runs so well at He won stage two. Looking to have a great day in the points. Backing that up with the top five run. But he's thinking more as he tracks down the 31. Now six to go. Trying to go as hard as I need to. Everyone now is deciding, am I going to get another spot or am I checking up trying to get back to the guy behind me, right? It's only six laps, but is there something you could do to try to make sure your car finishes the last three or three and a half miles of this race? You know that's what it's going to come down to. The last couple laps, the last three laps of the race, you start hearing things, feeling things. What could you do now with a little bit farther left? Well, especially with all the tire issues, Steve, you're on pins and needles. As a driver, you're out there and you've seen everything that's going on. You know people have been having tire problems. You know you've pushed these tires further than other people could go. You're terrified that something's going to happen. Tyler Reddick running up front. He's won twice already this year, but not on an oval, Marty. Rick, let's talk about the resolve of the eight team. Randall Burnett, the leader of this team, Tyler Reddick behind the wheel. They could have quit several times this year when Tyler Reddick announced that he was leaving. They could have quit. When they announced Kyle Busch was going to be in the eight car next year, the team could have quit. And Randall Burnett and these guys all could have quit when they didn't make the playoffs last week, Steve, or advance in the playoffs to the round of eight. Yet here they are, first race in the round of eight. They might win here with four to go. Tyler Reddick out front. That's incredible leadership, Steve, to keep all of that together and point it in the right direction and win races on this level. Great leadership, and I'm going to tell you, this combination of crew chief and driver, a lot of things come to mind, but I've never thought of quit. I mean, when they were winning Xfinity races on the fence in Miami, every race they've run in Cup, it is, it is hammered down, attack, and continue to fight. Two laps coming up to go in this race, and one of the things that I always enjoy is when we're able to hear the communication between driver and crew chief, and it's some of the best between these two, between Tyler Reddick and Randall Burnett. They, they know each other. They know their personalities well enough that they can joke with each other. They can say things, you know, like if, if for example, Tyler Reddick says, well, the car's just not that great, he'll say it in a way that Randall Burnett will appreciate it. It's like, okay, I get it. We're in this together. But right now, it looks like Tyler Reddick has got the car to beat here at Texas as he comes up on one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Needs one and a half more miles out of that set of Goodyear tires. The engine under the hood of this eight car, 500 mile challenge, and it's been an absolute challenge today into the night, Rick. And until he gets all the way out of turn four, nothing is guaranteed, even with a 1.1 second lead. He goes to the bottom of the racetrack. 
through three and four for the final time and looking for career win number three. It's going to come at Texas. Tyler Reddick wins in the Lone Star State. That was Richard Childress coming on the radio. It was well publicized that the announcement that Tyler Reddick made, he's going to 2311 in 2023. Richard Childress wasn't happy with the timing of it when that announcement was made. But Reddick has proven that his commitment to this team and this organization is as passionate about his commitment to racing. Flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Reddick's two wins, Road America and Indy Road Course. Everybody knows how good Tyler Reddick is on road courses. And now his first win on an oval. Party, join in on that celebration. All this group has been through, and yet here they are, still winning races and still a team, as Randall Burnett told me earlier today. And how about the Texas race fans who stayed here through this long night of racing? And Tyler Reddick brings it home to victory lane. What an incredible night. I got to know, with all the tire issues, as you kind of say, yeah, you're right, an incredible night. How worried were you on that final run because you went so long on this set of good years? I was extremely worried, I'm not going to lie. Uh, unfortunately, just about every time we've had fast cars, we've had some tire problems. And uh, yeah, that last run, uh, the right sides were vibrating really, really uh, hard there. So I was just trying to maximize and, and just use the advantage that I, uh, the gap that I built over Joey, just in case. I mean, every time we've had a, had a strong car, we've been bit by something, man. So. Really, just really proud to be able to get this Lenovo Chevy to victory lane. I mean, we were at uh, Auto Club earlier this year. We were so fast with this car, and uh, they deserve to get to victory lane. We got them there. How did this team stay together through all the adversity you faced this year, you leaving Kyle coming in and not making it to this round, Tyler? Well, that was, yeah, it was tough. I mean, two points. Uh, you know, the, every, every spot matters in this deal, and, you know, we just had two tough races. We brought a really fast car to Darlington, and, we were leading in Kansas when we broke and, and fell out early, and so it's just it's tough. But this will uh, this will make that uh, the pain of not making it through a little bit easier. Even though yes, it uh, it would have locked us in around eight, but hey, we're winning races. That's what we'll keep trying to do. What a long night! How about these Texas race fans who hung out for all of it? Yeah, I mean it was a hot one. Thank you to the fans that came out. I really appreciate it. This is uh, this is a tough race. 500 miles here is not an easy feat. I know it wasn't easy on you guys as well. So it's just so great to be able to win here in a Cup car. Been close a few times, and uh, yeah, look at Lombardi. Yeah, let's go! There you go. The guys are out here. What a veteran crew. Tyler Reddick brings it to victory lane at Texas. Yeah, Marty, he's going to be taking the eight car and the team. They'll be heading to speedycash.com victory lane, where they'll be able to celebrate once again. And one driver probably not happy at the way this one ended. William Byron finishes in seventh. He's with Parker. Right, Rick, and he had that incident with Denny Hamlin there. So let's start with the first one, and then we'll get to the second one. What happened off of turn two there between you and Denny? Do you feel like that was something in his control to not have happen? Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he ran me out of room and bent the toe link, and it's we're lucky we finished. So uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was really hard contact. It wasn't like just a light. It wasn't like, you know, just a light contact or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I didn't mean to yeah, obviously spin him out over there, but I'm obviously, you know, pissed off and um, just not going to get run like that. We've always run so well um, or raced so well together. So I don't I don't know what it was all about. I mean, the 19 took his air away and he ran out of racetrack. So he chose to run me out of out of racetrack completely. And again, like, look, it's not like it was just light contact. Like, I mean, I thought we were going to be done. So, um, yeah, So you ran into him off purpose off turn four. I don't know. I I mean, obviously, yeah, I went to go show my displeasure. I didn't mean to, you know, hit him and uh, spin him out. I, there's a ton of guys that do this and um, and go do something like that. I see it all the time. So um, but yeah, I'm just not going to get run like that. And um, yeah, there's really no reason. I mean, we're running second and third, I think, and, um, you know, had a shot to to win and killed our car for sure. So um, that was a bummer. Will you talk to him about it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. We'll, we'll probably talk. I mean, look, like, we've never had issues, so I don't, I didn't really get it, but I'm not just going to be like, oh, don't normally have issues with the, this guy. I'm not going to be mad about it. So it was, uh, yeah, it was uncalled for, and I um, feel like we handled it. Kim, he's not going to lay over. Let's hear the other side of the story. Denny Hamlin. Williams said he wanted to show his displeasure, but didn't mean to spin you out. You wanted to see a penalty for that contact under caution. Were you surprised it didn't come out by NASCAR? Well, I think the crew chief was wanting something because you can't, I mean, I guess we can just wreck each other under caution. I, I tried to wreck him back, but um, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't think we touched. I, I got to look, but I, I don't think we touched, but obviously uh, he sent us through the infield on under caution. He said he likely needs to talk to you, but you guys haven't had any prior incidents. What's that conversation going to be like? I mean, you know, I, I keep hearing these guys, but, I, you know, I've just, I'll just add it to the list of, of guys when I get a chance, they're going to get it. Going to get it later in the playoffs, or is this something that carries over to well, next it year? All, it all just works itself out. We'll be racing each other at some point, and he'll lose a lot of spots because he's, you know, racing me. So it's just, uh, it's this is hard racing, obviously. Um, I'm fine with hard racing. But wrecking me under caution is obviously uh, not what we were uh, uh, bargained for. And so thanks to my FedEx Toyota team for bouncing back. Obviously, it cost us all of our track position. I thought we were in a great position to win until uh, we, we got sent back to 20-something there. So. All right, take a look what happened between the two. Just some contact there. This is on board the 24 with the costumes out. And he hits it pretty hard. I mean, I know he says he didn't mean to spin him out, but he didn't give him much chance to, to save that one. Gosh, I don't want to see him if he means to spin him out. <laughs> and then Denny tried to spin him out, and I think Denny would probably be glad that that didn't happen. I mean, you know, it might have felt great in the moment, but who knows what NASCAR could have or would have done if that continued to carry on. It's a, you know, got a chance for a championship here. And don't want uh, NASCAR to have to step in there and, and, and make a call. Tyler Reddick eliminated from the playoffs after the round of 16, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to get to victory lane again. And that's exactly what he did. And once again, a non playoff driver winning in the playoffs continues. Well, Joey Logano now 30 points above the cut line, but again, nobody locked in to that round of eight because a playoff driver has not won yet in these playoffs. Parker. Right, reckon for Joey Logano on the way to that second place finish in that last run. You had a vibration in the right rear after seeing all the tire issues. How concerned were you through that run? <laughs> very, very, very concerned. It's pretty concerning anytime you're going 200 mile an hour and you can't see, <laughs> um, but uh, it's kind of a bittersweet moment. I'm, I'm one side, I'm kind of frustrated that it was like that and maybe we would have shot to, to beat the eight. On the other hand, I'm just happy to finish the race and, and get a bunch of points with the AAA Mustang and um, 
you know, have something uh, for him going into the next few races. We did what we had to do. We had to score a bunch of points, um, and we did that, put ourselves in the point lead, and um, still not comforting, but it's better than being uh, further back. So uh, let's figure out how we want to run Talladega now. Yeah, and you have 30 points to the good now, so how do you run Talladega? What are you going to look at? What do you want to figure out that sort of sets, okay, this way we're going to do it? Yeah, we got to see the checkered flag. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing, and that's a lot easier said than done. Um, shoot, it's hard to say at, at Talladega now, or I'm sorry, at Texas here. Um, just just crazy race for everybody, and um, you know, you just cross your fingers and say a few prayers and hope it's not your turn when, <laughs> when the tire blows out. So, um, you know, proud of, uh, like I said, I'm very proud of my team today. Um, Paul called a great race, uh, but put four tires on when we needed to, and then being able to put two on there at the end and cycle ourselves up there and, and have a shot to win. So, um, proud of that. Wish I was a, wasn't shaking and, and it was a little tighter, but overall, uh, you got to be happy with that. Successful day for Joe Logano, Kim. And Kyle Larson didn't have the day he wanted. You and I were talking. He lost a lot of spots on pit road, and crew chief Cliff Daniels even apologized for the team not giving you what you needed as a driver. When that's out of your control, how do you handle situations like that? Uh, I mean, you just try and shake it off the best that you can and go out there and you know, put together some good runs so you were able to overcome all the spots that we would lose on pit road. And I, mean, I feel like I drove from the back to the top, you know, five or six almost every run. So. Uh, really, really good car. So proud of, proud of uh, the effort there at the shop and, and you know, the piece that we brought here to Texas. So um, it's good we're above the cut, but yeah, I mean, we're plus 16. I feel like we could have been plus 34 or something at least. So um, bummer there. And I mean, potentially could have you know, won the race. I, I think we had the best car. So um, you know, the, the weather delay really hurt too. I think we were by far the best when the track was hot. Um, when it got you know, cooler out, I got loose, and uh, everybody seemed to get faster, so it was just harder to pass. So, um, yeah, bummer there, but uh, proud, of the, proud of the effort um, back at the shop. Looking at the next week, Talladega, I know super speedways are not your favorite thing. How do you approach that race based on the race you had here? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, hopefully <laughs> I would love to get some stage points and um, pat ourselves a little bit and then, um, you know, cross our fingers and pray to God that we see a checkered flag. Kyle Larson with a top 10 finish here this evening. Chase Briscoe finishes fifth, and Chase, that is incredible. You guys at one point today looked like you maybe struggled to run the top 25. How did you pull this off? Uh, just Johnny was, was really aggressive there on pit road, you know, to uh, give us an opportunity. I think with 80 to go, we kind of made our bed that we were going to hope and pray that we got more cautions. And, yeah, I think I told you right at that red flag, I felt like our car was getting a little bit better. We still weren't where we needed to be. But, yeah, I mean, to still fifth, that, that kept us in the ball game. I mean, we were... I, I, I would say 25th place car debatably like it was it was close so yeah for us to be able to get some track position at the end you know honestly the rain delay and the night coming and cooling off I think helped our car quite a bit so yeah we uh, salvaged with our rush truck center sport and yeah we're in the ball game just got to go to Talladega and hopefully get a little luck and see what happens after that You're now four points below the cut line what's that do for you does it allow you to race any differently I mean we were four points out coming into this one I mean that was everything we had there at the beginning we just kind of had it fall our way there at the end so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Talladega, it's nice to not be 20 points, 30 points back going into Talladega because there, obviously, anything can happen. So, yeah, for us, we just need to, uh, you know, same as going into Bristol last round. If we can be in contention, you know, within 10 points going into the Roval, I feel confident we can go there and get 10 points. So, yeah, just hopefully we can get to Talladega clean and see what happens. Great recovery for Chase Briscoe and the 14 team. Everyone is looking forward to next weekend, which will be Talladega. The smiles. It'll be hard to get off the face of Tyler Reddick, though, as he grabs his third career win in the Cup Series. Saturday, Xfinity Series countdown to green at 340 on USA, and then Xfinity Series playoff racing from Talladega. Again, USA on NBC on Sunday. Countdown to green at 1 o'clock, and Cup Series playoff racing at 2 o'clock. All right, Jeff Jr., what about Texas and the statement that it made here tonight? Well, I thought Talladega worried these drivers the most in this round, but it looks like Texas to me is the scariest race. I don't see how that Talladega and Roval can, can top this, but like everything else this year, it's been unexpected. And I expect more fireworks next week. Oh, I have so much pressure on everybody. Everybody's pushing hard. Got guys that need to make up points and doing it at Talladega. I can only imagine what's going to happen there. I'm already nervous thinking about it. Rick, I'll give you all week to come up with every storyline you can dream up, and you still won't cover what we're going to see next Sunday. I would have fell short this Sunday. 
I did have an idea. Redica's gun run very well. Logano didn't surprise in second. There was some surprises, but uh, it's always great to come to Texas. What a cool victory lane. What a cool trophy. Yes, it is. And old Tyler looks pretty good in the Cowboy. He does. A incredible day for Tyler Reddick. Uh, we had the guys from Top Gun here. There's more NASCAR coverage always available on NBCSports.com. Coming up next on USA, it's Law & Order SVU Marathon, except on the West Coast. After all the attrition, the tire issues, the fires, the wrecks, it was Tyler Reddick who outdistanced the field and got his third career win. His first on an oval, Tyler Reddick wins in Texas.